Theatres and welcome to the first ever WoW Esports Solo Shuffle event, the Solo Shuffle Showdown. Just like in the Brawl, participants here will compete as individuals, with 36 players invited from Europe and a further 36 from North America. These players are split into damage dealers and healers and will duke it out for three days to win a share of the combined $100,000 in prizing and the bragging rights of becoming the first ever Solo Shuffle champions. The tournament is divided into two stages. During the knockout stage, each of the 36 players will play in three series. In each series, players will be randomly seeded into six matches before moving into the next round of matches to play against different opponents. Each player will play three total matches. Each individual round one in a match will grant them one point and after the three series, the eight damage dealers and four healers with the highest scores from each region will advance to the finals. The finals take place on September 25th, Championship Sunday, and will start with all points from the knockout stage being reset. Here, the 12 players will battle it out in two matches each. After these matches, the best four DPS and two healers will join the arena for one last definitive match. The damage dealer and the healer with the highest culminative score at the end of the finals will be crowned the first ever Solo Shuffle Showdown champions. This is all happening live September 23rd to 25th. Be sure to not miss the first ever Solo Shuffle Showdown. For more updates, follow the WoW Esports Twitter and we'll see you live on YouTube and Twitch. Thank you for watching. Good luck, gladiators. We'll see you in the morning welcome to the solo shuffle showdown my name is aya i'm going to be your host and we are joined with ben Ruki, Supertees, and of course zico i am so excited for today we've got a new format we're going to see some interesting combinations of players that we've never seen before also ben and i am also just really excited to be back on the desk with you guys yeah i mean there's no doubt about it it's going to be a really fun event like you said this is kind of a brand new format uh, I think the thing that excites me the most about this tournament in particular is it's going to allow kind of individual players to really shine, you know. Um, wow, esports for a long time is a team game, right? But this is an opportunity for these players to kind of rise to the occasion by themselves and prove that individually they're the best player. Yeah, absolutely. We've got 36 players per region. We're going to be, uh, you know, sort of separating them. We're starting off with EU and then tomorrow we're going to be going into the North American region. But uh, six matches, 24 DPS and 12 healers. And I feel like I've already been looking at just some of these matches that we're going to be seeing today, Zico. Um, and I, I can't even really predict how these are going to turn out. I wonder how the players are feeling. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be very exciting. We got, uh, you know, all random kind of comps that people are going to be kind of thrown into playing, you know, th things that you typically wouldn't play on the ladder. And also uh, the players themselves, you're going to have uh, certain players maybe playing with their teammates or against their teammates. And uh, also we have some very stacked matches as well. Uh, when we get to the schedule a little bit later, we can uh, talk about that as well. I'm um, very, very excited to see exactly how these uh, people are going to perform and uh, who's going to come out on top and qualify for that championship Sunday. Yeah, we're going to narrow it down to the top eight DPS and the top four healers in the semifinals on Sunday. There's going to be four matches of that, and then we're going to narrow that down to even less players, four DPS, two healers. We're going to have that final match and see who is the champion of the solo shuffle showdown super tees. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. This is going to be a glimpse of the next expansion to see what this type of play style in this bracket can really provide. We've invited so many players uh, across both regions. We're going to have such a diverse range of compositions and options and matchups. We invited players from the top of the ladder, not just from tournament play as well. So kind of trying to credit players for putting in effort to being like the currently highest rated players and getting in some differences and variety really big names and heavy hitters right like we got multiple blizzcon champions i know specifically <laughs> on one of the matches after watching joe fernandez stream that he seemed to be a little bit upset this is obviously all <laughs> randomly generated groups but he got the group with swapsy was like alec chaz <laughs> oh, like like that that is the toughest group it, like of all the groups in this first round for europe th like that you, that is the hardest one if joe makes it out of that group like it is very impressive i believe oh, in yeah. joe yeah i believe in joe too i, 
I think, you know, obviously a very well experienced player. There's that one that Sid was just talking about match five there on your screen. Just a lot of well experienced <laughs> players, lots of BlizzCon champions. So that's going to certainly be a, a really difficult one to get out of. There's also some new fees, uh, new faces as Supti's kind of already touched on. We're sort of pulling players from the ladder. Uh, that are at the top of their game so there's going to be some you know returning veteran players some new players and some uh you know like we've already touched on so much Zico, some interesting combinations are you besides match five i feel like that's gonna be a big one what combinations of these players are you looking forward to here Zico? i mean it's gonna be nice to see uh you know who can prove themselves of course uh, in, in match five you got five blizzcon champions out of six players and you know the six player is also absolutely insane so mm -hmm. that one is going to be very interesting but also uh, when you look at you know some of these other uh, groups there is some uh, names that we haven't really seen that much like i'm thinking shadow death uh, judo dump um habibi uh, some of these uh, players and they're up in a you know pretty competitive group we saw oscar uh, perform phenomenally last season in the awc mercy has been around for a long time now and tony as well you know uh, former champion as well so there's a lot of uh, you know new blood getting mixed in with some of these veterans and uh, maybe they can learn a thing or two from them or uh, maybe they can just uh, you know show up and beat them as well so it's gonna be interesting to see uh, who pulls ahead and uh, who uh, kind of falls behind here I don't think we can really expect things to go one way or the other. No, I don't think so either. There's not really going to be a lot of predicting that I think we're going to be able to do. However, I know that, uh, you know, everyone on the desk here, we did sort of do our pickums. Shout out to Echo for setting that up. Um, and then you guys also from home were able to sort of pick who you were, uh, were you know, sort of predicting for each match who was going to come out on top. It kind of feels like a, a nerdy version of, of Final Fantasy or Final Fantasy Fantasy Football. <laughs> I don't I've never played it, so I don't even know how similar they are, but we'll see how close those predictions are. What do you think, Ben? Yeah, I mean we'll definitely have to see. <clears throat> I know some of the predictions were a little far out there, but um <laughs> uh, yeah, it's really it's tough to say, right? Because you are you're you're thinking about the player, but you're also thinking about the class. How good is the yeah. class in a solo shuffle environment? Like, what is your impact going to be on the game? Because that's going to be really important. You're the one that has to set up, you know, the kill opportunities, or if you're the healer, you're going to have to try to assist your team to get aggressive. That could be the thing that helps you earn more points in advance. So what classes are going to be the best at that? I think a lot of people kind of think uh, rogues, like outlaw rogues are going to be really strong. I mean, you're super durable, lots of consistent damage, lots of control, but there's lots of other specs as well. I mean, things like Demonology Warlock and the Fury Warrior, um, I think have a fair shot. Elemental Shaman um, can really help play defense for their team and try to take someone down. So it'd be really interesting how that kind of plays out as this tournament goes on. Yeah, I also feel like there's kind of some players that aren't really picking what we originally, what you know, what we might expect them to normally be on. You know, we've got Gelu Baba, he's playing Warlock. You know, obviously that guy's been playing Mage for quite some time. Super strong on the Warlock too, so we'll see how he does there. But um, maybe just a couple of unexpected picks here. Um, and also, I think they only actually got to see what these, you know, the, the match reveals actually yesterday, Zico. So these players really haven't had a lot of time to prepare on top of that. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, yesterday uh, in the evening, actually, these players got to finally see the groups. And uh, it's been interesting to see also uh, some of the reactions to uh, their groups. There's been some uh, funny moments on Twitter uh, from some people uh, like Dilly uh, wrote something about uh, that he's going to have to play Hunter uh, Double Shaman or Hunter uh, Shadow Priest yeah. uh, with Wiz K. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of crazy groups for sure. And it's been fun to kind of follow along and see how uh, people feel about it. And also, uh, in terms of comps, uh, Blizzard did set up uh, kind of a Discord server so people can jump in and uh, talk to each other, but it's not a requirement. Some people are going to be going for that authentic uh, solo shuffle experience. Some people might, uh, you know, get matched a game or two with uh, people that they're really familiar with, and they might, uh, you know, uh, hop on, uh, on voice with each other. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how well people can communicate, how well people can set up, how well people can play defense. All of these things are going to matter um, in addition to, you know, what class you're playing and uh, uh, et cetera really a lot of variables going into this there's not one true win condition but um you know i feel like a lot of times when we see these sort of one-off competitions that wow esports has been putting on the the inference may be like oh you know this is just like kind of for fun but it's definitely not there's still a prize pool for this uh you know first place you do get eighty five hundred dollars so these players are playing 
you know, not only for the glory, but for a prize pool as well. But I can imagine at the end of the day, Super Tease, you know, having, having sort of formats like this enables these players to be creative, be a little bit bold um, in the decision-making process. And I, I hope that they have a good time because I know we will watching this. This prediction is really surprising that like only 13% on Blizzo, like Fury Warrior, I would say on like Solo Shuffle on, on Live is a really popular spec. Like it dominates Solo Shuffle and it's Blizzo. Like... <laughs> <laughs> People aren't betting yeah. for Blake. I mean, Zpi, I kind of makes sense, you know, with the notoriety, he's the big name. I'm kind of expecting him to play Enhance with this group that he's got, and I believe that the players can select any spec of their class. Yeah. I'm thinking Ooh. that Enhancement makes more sense for him here. Um, kind of hard to tell by his transmog what spec he is. Like, he's only got one one-hander and no shield, so I'm guessing he's Enhancement uh, here. So we've got Fury Warrior, Outlaw Rogue, Mistweaver against Holy Paladin, Outlaw, Enhancement. This is wow. a matchup you would never see probably at any point in the game throughout this expansion, let alone in a tournament. And how are the best players in the game going to make it work? That's what I love about this tournament, though. Just lots of kind of oddball compositions. You're going to see different cleave compositions, different melees and casters you don't normally see go together. Um, and it's going to be all about finding those wind conditions when you can. Gate's going to open in round number one. And remember, as soon as someone falls, the round is over. There's no opportunity for a cross kill in solo shuffle. It is very fast paced. All right, let's see how they want to start it off here. Sap on Zpi. It looks like Brune Hitty is going to be the initial target um, for the side of Zpi's team as we see a hex out of the stun. A swap over to Blizzo with a kidney shot. Dismantle into Trimass. Slowing down his assault. Both teams diffusing the op opening stage quite effectively. And actually, it does look like Zpi is playing Elemental. He decided to stick to his main specialization. There's a lot of melee DPS in this group. This is a risk for him to play Elemental. I'd say like the number one weakness for a Shaman is these cleaves running them down. Is he going to be able to deal with Blizzo and Brunhitti on his back? Just pressure onto both sides. Interrupt over onto Bank. Blizzo down at half trying to keep the pressure going onto zpi zpi forced to trade astral shift in this position and with solo shuffle with having not played with your partners before the the likelihood of making a mistake is so much more high uh, than it would be otherwise like in a standard awc match yeah both healers kind of struggling at this point but it is zpi on the back foot and there's not many cooldowns left to work with bank moving in trying to get crowd control Secure a win for his team, but poor Zipa is just such a struggle. Busting of Protection does come in. That's a little bit of help, and they actually don't have a purge for it. So that is a really good kind of emergency lifeline here. You can see dampening kind of ramping up already at minute one. Bozo and Broomhitty also going to be taking a little bit of damage. So finally, uh, Zipa and Trim are able to get a little bit of counter pressure here, but Bank just has so many cooldowns he can still work with. You can see Reese is going to be moving in for crowd control, but he gets caught in a kidney shot. Great defense there by Broomhitty. They continue their assault here on the Zipai, but Zipai is surprisingly staying alive. There's been good peels coming in from Trim, but I don't know how much longer you can keep this up. You know what's interesting is the chat. You guys all betted on Reese and Zipai. They're both on the same team, and it's not looking good for them right now. However, Zipai has got a full hex onto the Mistweaver, stopping his healing. A blessing of protection, getting Zipai both defensively and offensively into a better position here at the pillar, trying to lob out and get pressure. But that Mistweaver is doing so much better on mana than the Holy Paladin. Brunhitti's falling behind. Look at the cleave damage. Can they execute for the kill? As we see judgments coming in from Reese off to the side, it is not enough to finish off Brunhitti. Now he's leading the charge towards Zpi with no medallion. Zpi is vulnerable. He's trying to escape while Reese is caught and paralyzed. He gets Ring of Peace back to center field, gets caught into a fear, trying to stall him and hold him in place. Pressure on both sides. And the thing about Solo Shuffle is dampening starts so much more soon here. At two and a half minutes, it's already 36%. This is going to get volatile fast. I love it. High intensity right now. Blizzo, he's going to trade out his Trinket, so that next stun is going to be big, but I don't know if Zipai can survive much longer. Reese almost completely tapped on mana. 41% dampening, and Zipai's health is going nowhere but down. He gets dropped. Round number one, that's going to be a point for Bank, Blizzo, and Brunhitti in this round number one, and you can see uh, on the UI as well, next to the frames, uh, oh, that's the very cool. that players are earning. So that's actually new to the UI that. just for the solo shuffle tournament, which is really cool. So we're going to be able to easily follow how many points these teams have earned but yeah Sid you mentioned it dampening and solo shuffle it goes really quick so all of a sudden at two and a half minutes you're at 43 percent dampening and that's when things yep. unravel real quick I was thinking like a paladin was going to do well in dampening I got the immunity cooldowns I thought maybe they wouldn't run out of mana in like a two minute game but Reese was out of mana out of cooldowns and bank was chilling like Mistweaver actually looking very strong unlike what we've seen in tournament play for that class sap onto bank Immediate crowd control and a double outlaw rogue on an Ellie Shaman. I, I can't believe Zpi locked in Elemental for this first match 
uh, I would have imagined enhancement, especially with the physical immunity wall that you can take as an honor talent, would have been a lot better for him. If he manages to win a round here, it's going to be tough. They're blasting down the Holy Paladin, going straight for the healer here. Blizzo's Bladestorming, cleaving both of the rogues, managing to pull evasion from Trimaz, but not from Brunhitti. Now Zipai on the back foot. Bank's going to need to make sure that he's maximum distance as he sees one of the rogues grapple over. He fakes his interrupt. Well done from Bank in the back line here. Lightning Lasso gets disrupted. Zipai's in a kidney shot. Trimaz goes for a blind. This is going to be a lot of crowd control from two outlaw rogues. Look at Reese in position, ready to get a hammer of justice if Bank trinkets any of this crowd control. Zipai not looking too stable here down at half health. Trades his astral shift. Blizzo is getting cleaved. He's getting annihilated. Bank has to trinket. And that is devastating for Zipai right now if he's looking to earn a point in this series. Yeah, I mean, what a nightmare situation. Two outlaw rogues just cleaving you down. z might get dropped again. He gets the life cocoon. Beautifully done there by a bank, keeping him alive. But luckily, there hasn't been too much of an overlap. I think that's going to be one of the main struggles of these teams is overlapping their defensive cooldowns. If, if they can avoid that, it really puts their team further ahead. allows them to last a lot longer in the match. Lozo now at a full kidney shot. Trim as is going to be going over for a gouge into a hammer of justice. Good crowd control, actually. Good setup here. Oh, from this team number two. Blizzo getting incredibly low. Can he stay alive? Bank doing his best to keep him up. Blizzo kiting around in defiance. Zeke as well, maybe throwing in a hex if he can. But this kind of rot damage outlaw rogue is just so oh. potent in this match. I that don't intervene. think Bank is going to be able to keep him alive. It's a full blind. Do we have a full sap? The sap has to be the game, right? Nope. A cheap shot into a gouge. He gets out of it. It might actually have an opportunity to survive here. And now uh, we need to see Blizzo and Zipai get aggressive. Blizzo had just a hero intervene there. He intervened Zipai, so Zipai couldn't be interrupted on his fleshcraft. So he was able to sit the full blind on the Mistweaver. That was really well coordinated. But Zipai's just falling behind. Trimez and Brunhitti are just laying in devastation. Another full blind. There's no way. He gets a double cap totem. He's at 10%. He intervenes, <laughs> but it's too late. Zipai goes down. Now two rounds in, still at zero wins. He's going to need to win these outlaw matches when he's got a rogue on his side. If he even wants to have a chance still, Brunhitti with a massive lead. And it's looking like this tournament is not easy to predict. Oh, definitely not. I mean, Brun Brunhitti playing the outlaw rogue. And I think Brunhitti is one of those players that really impressed us during the AWC. So no surprise uh, here. That double outlaw composition just seems so devastating. In solo shuffle, having double blind, uh, double vanish sap, like you just have so much control and consistent damage, uh, it can be hard to make those trades. But once again, Blizz is going to be teaming out with an outlaw rogue, and Zipai is going to be on the receiving end of kind of this cleave pressure. You definitely feel for him here on this elemental shaman. I think for Zipai, if he can, this is a really difficult group for Zipai, like with the way this played out. I, I feel like for him, if he could pick up just a few wins in this group, that would be kind of like the victory he's looking for. So we'll have to see if he can actually do it. Oh, Trimaz getting bursted down, Blizzle getting bursted. This is good potential, but at the same time, now in a reversal with Zipai down below half, dying through Astral Shift at the moment. Bank is full blind. He doesn't want to trink. He trinkets into the life cocoon. Everybody has used every cooldown on Zipai's side, and it's looking like he might go down three points already in the first solo shuffle. Is he going to make it out of the first round? Because there's no loser's bracket. There's no second chances. If you're not the top two DPS in any of these matches with overall points, you're just gone from the tournament. Trimaz down below third. 30%. Can Zipai manage to pull it off and have a comeback throughout the remainder of this series? He's caught in a kidney shot. Hammer onto Bank. Fear onto Brunhitti. Triple crowd control. Beautiful setup once again on the side between Blizzo, Trimaz, and Reese. Can they keep up their pressure? Bank has managed to somewhat restabilize Zipai. He's going to need to start getting hexes. I feel like this is the only advantage he's got here. There's no ability to remove hex. Uh, but he's just cleaving damage, trying to just play for the damage meter at this point. A minute in, Dampany already started. Trimaz evasioning again. Grapples over for a kidney shot onto Bank. Reese is into the full hex. Those are the hexes I was talking about. Reese cannot heal in that. And that's their window to try and net a kill. But the hex is faded. They're swapping to Reese. Big swap to the Paladin. Blizzo intervenes over. That Fury Warrior utility definitely paying its weight. But Reese has to Divine Shield despite it. So Zipai is still in it. I thought the intervene would be enough him to hold divine shield it wasn't another clean swap to reese they might be able to close it and get zipai a point in the series well let's see if they can do it brunhitti right now getting cleaved down a kitty shot on the blizzo just to slow him down the peels coming in from brunhitti and it's actually going to be trimaz on the run this is a beautiful push here zipai can he get his first point brunhitti's going to be hopefully helping him out here nice life cocoon on the blind beautifully done there by bank that should allow Zipai to survive and allow him to kind of sit through this crowd control. There's going to be no follow-up sap, and oh. essentially Reese right now taking a huge amount of pressure 
He's able to kite and get behind the pillar, trying to stabilize. Brinhiti still just going after the pallet and beautiful lightning lasso coming in from Deep Five. Reese trying to escape. He trinkets, and it looks like that blessing of protection will get purged. Deep Five picks up his first point. And a great push there by Brunhidi, who is now in the lead for this yep. group. Uh, Brunhidi on Outlaw Rogue is looking really dangerous. We've got a three-way tie right now between Blizzo, Zipai, and Trimaz. And we've only got, what, what are we at now? we got two more rounds left. So are they going to be able to manage to break the tie here? Reese still has a shot uh, with three only rounds. one point down to bank at this point. Is it, oh, it's three more on round four. This is going to be a nice a little day of calculating <laughs> what round we're on here. So we're ha at the halfway point now. Brunhidi establishing a significant lead, looking like he might just go 6-0 and oh, uh, at this point. He's got the double outlaw rogue training down in Ellie. I think this is going to be the hardest <laughs> matchup uh, with a Mistweaver in the back line, just removing all of those flame shocks, getting trained down, double kidneys, double blinds. They're not even going after the Ellie. It looks like they're going after Blizzo with a double sap. Are they going to burst him down right at the beginning of the match? Reese in a, in a blind, Trinkets out, manages to save Blizzo, but... There's basically t there's two blinds and they're both on such a short cooldown. Like look at Brunhitti's blind. Like I think that might be tracked incorrectly uh, at this point, but I think that th this is going to be really tough uh, for them to make it through this. They're going to have to win before Reese runs out of Bops, Trinket, and Divine Shield. Uh, we can't see the cooldowns resetting, but Reese definitely has Divine Shield and Bop in this round. Now caught into another sap. They're swapping back to Zpi. Blizzo's trying to get over to assist at this point. Is he going to be able to get there in time? He's just tunneling the Mistweaver. I don't think you want to be a Fury Warrior attacking a Mistweaver. This might be one of the hardest classes to chase around the map. If they can manage to pull this off, it would be insane. But it's looking grim for Zpi if they can't. Ooh, Bank, though, taking a lot of pressure. He gets caught into a Storm Bolt. They're closing oh. in. Zpi and Reese are there. The follow up stun. Can they take Bank down? Doesn't have too many cooldowns. Life cocoon. He has a Life Cocoon as well as his Trinket. So. And I will say he's been doing a good job kiting, but at the same time, you cannot leave Zipai alone. That's the problem with Blizzo just going after the Mistweaver, uh, is you have two Outlaw Rogues just tearing into your Elemental Shaman, which is not the position you want to find yourself in, but it is so difficult to take down these Outlaw Rogues. Both of them have a Cloak, both of them have Evasion, lots of cooldowns available. Beautiful Lightning Lasso, potential here to actually take down Brunhitti, but looks like he will survive. Bank's been doing a great job on this Mistweaver so far, just playing really far away. Uh, making it really difficult for the team to land crowd control. A big swap here onto Reese. Can they take him down? He's got no divine shield, but a blessing of protection, and there's no purge. So Reese has that as kind of a lifeline. That blessing of protection is going to be massive for his team to survive. Oh, look at the damage right now. Three players on bank side below 50% health. How is he going to recover everyone? Try him as evasions. He gets wind sheared by Zpi. Zpi is going for the game winning shear. Bank fleshcrafts after, cancels it, tries to get in line of sight, gets cap totem by Zpi. Zpi just soloing crowd control on bank, but Blizzo just can't connect. They swap back to Brunhitti with the lightning lasso. Try him as gets over, disrupts it. Now Zpi on the back foot, nine seconds away. Reese is in a full blind. Is Zpi going to go down? He fleshcrafts, he gets intervened, and it needs to be enough. Blessing and protection comes out as well from Reese. Just to guarantee their safety. He doesn't want to sit in extended crowd control chain. Another wind shear onto the Mistweaver. Trying to blast down the rogue, and they've managed to do it. Zipai has managed to keep himself alive in the runnings here against this double outlaw threat. Very impressive. Yeah, and that was Brunhitti's first loss as well. So he's not going to walk away with kind of <laughs> six points in this one. Uh, they are able to shut it down, Blizzo and Zipai together. So really excellently done. Um, and at this point, uh, Zipai, he's he's actually doing pretty well. He was down, uh, I believe, 0 and 2. And now he's actually managed to pick up two wins, or 0 and 3. He's managed to pick up two wins. So at this point, there's no real winner. The healers as well, we haven't talked too much about them. Both of them have secured two wins. So these last couple rounds are really going to matter to see uh, who can kind of pull ahead. I think Brunhitti in general, if he, he gets this win, he's going to put himself in a really good situation. Oh, let's see if they can get it done here. Reese and a sap. Where are they going to go for their attack? It seems like the healers have been a primary target here, especially with dampening starting so fast. You just put the healers so far behind. Zpi looks to be the target, knocking Blizzo and Brunhitti away, trying to escape out into the out corner of the map here. Ring of Peace. Blizzo just doesn't care. He's on DR from that thunderstorm, so a bit of a, an error on Zpi and Banks' part there. Now dropping a t lightning totem to try and escape here with a dismantle onto Brunhitti. Zpi's trying to wrap around the pillar with Bank, maybe bait them into a bad position or drag Reese in. I'm not sure what Zipai's plan here unless it's just to run laps away from Blizzo. And he has actually managed to get distance dropping that Slaughterhouse Mortal Strike from the Fury Warrior. If you can reduce the Fury Warrior's uptime, that's going to be key to Zipai's survival in this match and potentially qualifying to the next round. Yep, right now Tremaz taking quite a bit of damage though in the midfield. Uh Blizzo is just ripping in. It looks like he will have to vanish off. Bank kind of struggling to actually keep him alive. 
Cheap shot over onto Reese. They're trying to set up a potential kill here onto Blizzo. At the same time, a kidney shot on Zipai. So both these outlaw rogues just trying to get control of the match with their stuns. Blessing and protections get a trade onto Blizzo, allowing him to get aggressive and stay alive. Hold on to some of those really precious cooldowns. Dampening is already ramping up right now. Trimaz going to be kiting away, taking a little bit too much pressure. You can see Bank positioned very far away. But Reese, I like his positioning as well. He's just always there. This kind of a threat with that hammer of justice on a Bank. Full blind does land here from Brunhitti. But Bank has to make the trade. He doesn't want to fall behind on healing on that Mystery Ramon. It's a fair trade for the blind. His team will remain stable as a result. All right, let's see if they can keep it going and pull off a win. Hex on the Blizzo, swap onto Reese. Lava Burst incoming as he manages to line a sight at the pillar and avoid the attack for now. Now Paralyzer, swap back to Brunhitti. Trimass catches him. Brunhitti trinkets and evasions, trying to turn it around and escape to safety. Life Cocoon comes out from Bank on a Zipai, just constantly back and forth at the two-minute mark here. Both teams getting cleaved down. Look at the pressure right now. How is Reese going to deal with it? He needs an Avenging Wrath proc like ASAP. Is he going to get it? He gets the Avenging Wrath proc off his word of glory. Big heals coming out. Now a hammer down. Not is it z is going to be ko'd massive push for blizzo and brunhitti now securing themselves to four points on brunhitti three points on blizzo it's starting to look like brunhitti is solidifying his position it's kind of between blizzo and z -Pi. who's is he going to be able to tie it up or is z -Pi going to be out a really good question z -Pi so far i believe has only managed to get wins with blizzo so that's kind of interesting with blizzo <laughs> on his team that warrior uh they've been able to actually pull off the wins against the double outlaw rogue so um, we'll, we'll see. I mean, Zipai right now is going to be grouping up with Brunhitti. Uh, let's see if they can actually pull off a win. Uh, but I, I mean, for this Elemental Shaman, you, it's a very, it's very scary. I mean, Elemental Shaman is very susceptible to being cleaved down, especially when you don't have like the peels of a caster. That's normally why Elemental Shaman plays, uh, with a ranged DPS. So you get a lot of different peels. So Zipai has been doing an incredible job so far. And if he can pick up a win here, I mean, picking up three wins, like I said, in a group like this uh, would be massive. But Blizzo taking a lot of pressure early on. Interrupt on the bank. Big explosion of damage. Zipai really popping off here on that Elemental Shaman. Can he take down Blizzo? That's going to be the question. Bank, though, very far away. Caught into a hammer of justice. He has no way out. Life Cocoon could trade here on the Blizzo. Lightning Lasso. Well done there by Zipai. But immediate interrupt by Trimaz. Trying to keep Blizzo alive. Oh. But Blizzo is just so unstable here, Sid. Oh my god, I can't believe Bank didn't use his life cocoon there. He was, he was patient, he holds on to that defense for a time later on and doesn't overlap. Um, but this is so tight right now. Is Bank going to tie up with Reese 3-3? Three to three? Is Zipai going to tie up with Blizzo 3-3? Three to three? Brunhitti is already pretty much guaranteed to get through at this point. I think he is guaranteed. Trimas is just playing spoiler at this point. Um, trying to get Blizzo a guaranteed spot in. Is he going to manage to be able to do it is the question. z -Pi has Astral Shift, but Reese is in a full blind. Reese is going to use Trinket and Blessing and Protection. And z -Pi needs to take advantage of this so that he can free cast and get a Hex onto somebody. He's going for a Hex right now. Gets a Hex onto Banks. Ooh. Trinket, game-winning play! z -Pi sets it up and ties nice. it up 3-3. Three to three. All right. So, I mean, the clear winner in this one... I mean, the two winners, Brunhitti... Uh, with his five wins and of course Reese with the four wins so uh, great performances from all these players and we're just going to be hopping right into the <laughs> next game uh, this is amazing so this is actually round three uh, of, of six so you can see right now let's do a quick little analysis uh, we do have Jamie with two wins so Jamie so far has been the winner of this group uh, and we are going into round number three well, let's see if they can manage to... Let's see what the situation is. Jamie, two points up as the Ellie Shaman. We've got an Affliction Warlock, a Fury Warrior, and a Havoc Demon Hunter. So these are really strange combinations. Like, you'd never see Ellie Demon Hunter. Uh, can Jamie manage to pull off a win with his composition? Asgarath was my pick to win this all, uh, and he's currently tied one-to-one -one with Next on that Holy Priest. Let's see if he can manage to do that. Trying to stay ahead of the dots by dispelling those unstable afflictions. It's going to be a completely different style of play with these compositions than those cleaves that we just saw. Dak is already the target. And with the Demon Hunter on his back, it can be really difficult. But Jamie's also falling behind. Tay is going for the kill. Jamie pops Astral Shift with Iron Bark to restabilize. Asgrath used so much defense to survive that initial assault. We're not even a minute into the game. Like, Tampany hasn't even kicked in. Dak's almost dead. Next is trying to pick him up at the pillar. Next has a really good position here. To avoid crowd control and interrupts. Dak can port away. Next is trying to catch up to him, though. Maybe this is a mistake to port as Tren gets a demon proc. He's going to have massive damage. Dak tries to gate away. Tren is going to kill off the demon, and he's chasing in hot pursuit after Dak. Both teams are vulnerable. Who will fall first? That's a good question. Tren right now putting out a massive amount of pressure, but at the same time, Jamie is just so unstable with a warrior on top of him. But uh, I would say so far, Asgoth has done a really good job keeping him alive. This composition that uh, Asgoth, Jamie, and Tren have is, is actually quite strong. 
Um, I mean, both of these compositions, kind of like standard compositions you would actually see, not as crazy as the last group, but uh, we'll, we'll see who can actually pull out ahead. Trend right now does connect on a deck, a beautiful double Chaos Nova. Jamie moving in for a potential interrupt. Can he get any crowd control? Asgard was playing this so defensively, very far away, not wanting to take any risks in terms of crowd control, just staying away from Dak the best he can. He gets interrupted, a beautiful interrupt, but at the same time, Dak might just get dropped. The damage is overwhelming. A beautiful Howl of Terror there by Dakaroff is going to keep him alive for the time being. Next, able to top him off, but that imprisonment coming in, this crowd control and pressure from Trend has been immense. He wants to get a point on the board. Oh, but look at that dampening pressure from the Warlock. Three players below half health for Asgarath. Who's going to get raced down first? Asgarath is struggling. He gets stunned up. He trinkets, he barkskins. Is it going to be enough? Jamie's down below half. Trend drops the darkness. All cooldowns, all hands on deck right now to keep Asgarath's side alive through the pressure. But Dark Soul is coming up for Dak in one second. That Dark Soul could win the game if he's stable enough to do it. He's popping it, but he oh! gets dropped right before he can ramp <laughs> it up. And Jamie with a massive lead in this second shuffle round. Three points already. Looking to try and get that clean sweep. Are we going to see the first six win solo shuffle of the day? I mean, it definitely could happen. Elemental Shaman in this group. I mean, this is a group where uh, it seems like, yeah, the Elemental Shaman can kind of thrive. You're not de dealing with all those different cleave compositions like we saw Zipai. Uh, let's see if he can pull ahead. If you could get six wins, I mean, that is a big statement. That shows a lot of kind of flexibility in your play style. Uh, and it's just really impressive because there's so many good players in these groups. I'll have to see if Jamie can actually do it. Asgrath, that last game, I think he played really defensive on that Resto Druid, and it's a good strategy, right? You sit back, make sure everyone's topped off, like really play your role, don't take too many risks, um, and don't play too dangerous and reckless in the match. So we'll see if that works out for Asgrath again in this one. Okay, so far, sitting through the Imprison, Jamie down below half HP at this point. And Trent's popping Metamorphosis. He gets Lightning Lassoed on it into a Cyclone. Good crowd control on that Demon Hunter cooldown, but Trent actually just breaks out with the Medallion to get aggressive. Scenarian Ward gonna come out here onto Jamie. It's gonna be a massive heal over time effect. I'm not seeing him go down through that. They need to swap targets. Trent knows that he's swapping targets, but in the meantime, Dak is struggling with Tay on his back. They're trying to pressure him away. Next is laying in as well. Dak's gonna gate to the opposite side of the map, get some distance. I feel like Dak's main win condition is just survive as that Affliction Ward. Oh my God! Goodness, look at this damage. Jamie is not getting a clean 6-0 as Dak and Tren and Next all put a point on the board. This is just so close. This is what I love about this is, I mean, you can see how evenly matched all these players are. It's just going to be about that one little help. I mean, you just need one extra point over other people. How can you set yourself apart? Uh, how are you going to be able to pick up that win is really going to be the question. Um, but yeah, you can see dampening ramps up so fast. We've got two rounds left and these healers are tied. So these next couple games, uh, at least for the healers, are going to be really important. Okay. Is, are we going to see ties between the healers every game? I'm wondering like who's who's the game breaker in these series uh, that's, that's causing this to happen so much. Uh, at the moment, we're seeing Demon Hunter Warrior into a caster, a spell caster cleave. So I would oh, imagine wow. the Demon Hunter Warrior might struggle. Um, but we'll have to wait and see who they're going to go after. It looks like the Warlock. That ends up kind of being a bait sometimes as they can avoid melee DPS quite effectively, drain life, and heal themselves. And if you leave a free casting elemental shaman, it's going to be really dangerous. And that's the thing about the solo shuffle is you need to just adapt mid-series. Like, now you're playing a cleave. Now you're playing with a caster. Now you're playing two spell casters. And <laughs> you need to know how to play every single strategy in the game basically 20 seconds after the next and flip gears based on your positioning, who you need to target. Like, having that many different strategies in your data bank to pull out at any time is going to be a key factor for each of these teams' victories. And right now, Jamie is just being left open in the back line. Dak getting punished. Manages to get a big heal. Trades out his unending resolve, though. Big cooldown out of the way. He's popping Dark Soul, trying to tear out some pressure here, getting the unstable afflictions free casted. But we're not seeing that damage penetrate through uh, just yet onto the health bars. Yeah, I mean, Dakaroth is really trying to create some space, but the reverse magic is such a potent ability. So uh, I feel like every time Dakaroth has to play against uh, Tren in these matchups, it's probably a bit of a nightmare. Uh, anytime he goes for kind of a soul rot, he can just reverse that, and it really limits the damage. Oh. Akroth on the back foot. I, I think he could go down here. Next, how is he going to keep him alive? This has some cooldowns, actually. Seems like he might be able to. He's positioned very far away, but, I mean, the consistent damage coming in from Tren, Tren and Tay in this match is immense. Asgrath not allowing basically any crowd control to go out into him. Dakroth going for a drain life as he does manage to portal away, but dampening is getting higher and higher. It is going to be increasingly difficult for Next to actually keep this Warlock alive, but at the same time, Jamie is being left alone. I mean, uh, we really want to see Dak in the open so Jamie can get a lot of damage off. Um, and, and as the thing gets higher and higher, it's going to be 
really difficult for Azgrath to heal through kind of all that raw damage, but I don't know if we're getting to that point. Looks like Dakrath will end He's up going seed. down. It gets potted and deleted. We've got one round left. See the updated scores here. Azgrath has a little bit of a lead. I think it's Azgrath, Azgrath picks up this next win. Um, it's going to be massive for him, and it seems like he might be able to. Uh, the Restoration Druid with the Wait. Affliction Warlock and the Warrior. This could be a three. This could everyone could tie. If Dak, Tay, and Asgrath, oh, Asgrath would qualify in, but Dak and Tay would tie with Jamie and Trend. I feel like it might be likely. Like Holy Priest, Ellie, Demon Hunter. That's not really like a high synergy composition. Uh, whereas like Warrior, actually, Warlock, got pressure with Mortal Strike. Like, I think that that's possible. I actually see Jamie. I, I feel like I see. I want to say I see Jamie and Trend play together, but I know Jamie does play Elemental Shaman, uh, Demon Hunter. So. Um, or maybe he plays with MVQ. Um, so this is a composition that he actually plays, which might give him a little bit of edge going to this solo shuffle round. Um, I, I think more than likely Dax is going to be the target, and it's, it's been rough for him in these games, just getting trained down by a Demon Hunter, getting trained down by a Fury Warrior, but I think he's up for the task. Let's see if we can actually kite uh, and get away and buy some time for Tay to actually uh, secure a win. Already got an Ascendance proc on Jamie's side. That's looking good. But now Tay turning it around with the Conqueror's banner, holding him at half health. Next is trying to power through and keep him stable, keep him aggressive on the Warlock, trying to stay right on top of Dak and close out this series and qualify to the next round. Will he be able to? Next is moving forward, popping that boon of Ascended, trying to add some damage into the mix. Tay getting blasted down, but Trend's now falling behind, just back and forth, not even a minute into the game. Next into the full Cyclone. Tay is trying to stay on Jamie, pummels his hex, stops his crowd control, forces his astral shift. Really good offense here between Asgrath and Tay, between controlling next and punishing Jamie. Trent is starting to rot down from the dots of Dak, and it's looking like they may be able to tie this up in the near future. Well, let's see. Dak right now is going to portal away, and that portal is just so precious that allows Asgrath a little bit of time to actually top him off. But this rot pressure coming in from Dakrath is really high. You can see, though, Tay getting swapped to right now needs to be a little bit careful. I mean, Dakroth has just run kind of a bandit. He wants to be out of the fight, but and maybe Tay didn't get the memo. And that's the thing. If you don't have the best communication uh, in these games, oh! you can leave someone behind. And this is a beautiful swap by Jamie and Trend, getting massive amounts of pressure here on this warrior. But at the same time, they are turning it around onto Jamie. He gets interrupted as he is in the middle of the map. But I don't know if Tay's going to be able to stabilize. And he does get dropped. Beautiful performance here by Jamie. And it's actually a 3-3 for both of these healers as well. So very evenly mashed in this one. I'm very excited to see what, what is the result of uh, these tiebreakers for the matches moving forward. We've just had game after game after game. It seems like non-stop action. The next match is Gelubaba, Acrolols, Epic Shot, Kasu, Trilly Bartom, and Zank. So some really big names, tournament champions, ladder grinders moving into this next one. New classes with the Hunter coming in as well. Um, and the Priest and the Druid matching up, just like we saw in this last one. Really unexpected games here. Trend definitely showcasing off a lot of damage here uh, in this first series on that Demon Hunter, coming back in a competitive play and making a really good first showing. Um, well, I'm surprised now I'm already forgetting the score because we've seen so many games in between these series. The healers, the healers tie, they did, right? I'm pretty sure they yes. did. So well, the first uh, one, Bank we, won 4-2. So we need a tiebreaker situation because if Asgarath didn't win the tiebreaker situation, my, my bet is completely out the window. So like that's, there's a lot riding for me on that. Um, as far as expectations, I think it was pretty anticipated for Outlaw to be strong just with how durable they are, the blind on such a low cooldown with how fast dampening ramps. You just get spiraled into the situation where it's really tough to turn the situation around. Um, other than that, the healers seem to be really competitive with each other. You know, unlike maybe in yeah. the previous seasons where Holy Priest was so dominant, it seems like a lot of the healers are coming next to each other. And it looks like uh, we've got Reese at four points um, with second place finishes at one. So he's moving through. Asgrath in second, next in third, Bank in fourth uh, moving forward. So it looks like Asgrath and Reese are the ones, the, the solo paladin in Europe right now. He's trying to hold it down uh, on the Paladin. Yeah, did you? I'm assuming you talked about you're talking about Reese's bio. That he submitted. <laughs> Wait, what? What was his bio? Did I accidentally I'm allude sure to that? It, I, I'm pretty sure it literally said something along the lines of like, "I am Europe's last hope," or 
for Holy Paladin. Yeah, I am EU's last hope for Holy Paladin. I have been kept up all night thinking of how to keep Paladin on top. Yeah. And then in in uh in front of semi serious. So I thought you were reading from that, but you just you came up with that on your own, Sid. Yeah, I mean. Wow. That's, that's actually <laughs> we we crazy. got we only got two Holy Paladins in the whole thing between NA and EU. We got Brain <laughs> on NA, and then we got Reese over here in EU trying to lock it down. And we got one Mistweaver on both regions, I think, too. But now Bank is out um, with Reese moving through on that tiebreaker. So unfortunate for the Mistweavers. You're going to need to hope in North America that. Uh, your class is able to make it through further than just mm -hmm. the first round, but it, it is so cutthroat. We've got predictions coming in now uh, for this, and a lot of people betting on Acro over Chili Bar Tom. Not sure if they're questioning Chili Bar Tom's rogue as an alt. Like Chili Bar Tom, he plays every class of Gladiator every season. That's like what his stream is about. And I think the players are also live streaming along with us. I don't know if he is 100%, I would imagine, but he's got a lot of experience on multi classing. So. He's tactically selected Rogue for this. Like, he knows that this is the highest yeah. odds chance of it. He plays all the classes. He knows all the comps. Like, he is grinding 24-7. So I wouldn't necessarily 100% bet against him. And also, Kasu is, like, champion on Hunter. And Hunter could put out a lot of pressure here. Looks like he's decided to go with Survival. Um, I don't think this is as easy to predict. Uh, I'd be a bit curious to see what the chat's opinions are. Like, why is it so heavily locked into Acro right now um, over any of the other players? We've got a Demonology Warlock, so not deciding to go with the Affliction. And a Holy Priest, no discipline. Uh, Zank sticking with the Resto Druid. I also do wonder, though, just like, you know, in terms of chat opinion on the actual voting, how much of that is based on, like, popularity versus actual, like, oh, yeah, this class is logically going to be the one that wins. I mean, I know I was just picking the DKs because I, I I'm a fan of DKs, but... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious as well. I mean, it seems like just Rogue in general seems to be doing pretty well if we can take those first two matches into consideration. So we'll have to see how they do in this round. I mean, they're with a, a Warlock and a Hunter. So like bets on bets on this first one, Super Tease, what do you think? Yeah, we never see this. <laughs> well, I guess Warlock, no. <laughs> can Warlock I even Rogue ask you a little that bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in NA, we see the Hunter Rogue with Jelly Beans. He's like the only one that does it. So it's going to be nice to get like a little bit of the, the Hunter Rogue action here in this first round. We see decent damage onto Gallo and Trilly right off the gates. Get that crowd control onto JJ. Cassie's trying to get back to the pillar and avoid some damage. Just trying to play kind of more of a conservative game on the Survival Hunter. While he is like a melee DPS, he can operate from ranged during that aspect of the Eagle. So he's playing kind of mid-ranged at the moment. Grappling hooking over to get a freezing trap. I think JJ, did he mute it there with the Holy Ward? I think he did. Acro's falling behind. Zank gets a big heal. Now Gelu is falling behind. It's just crazy to me the damage we're seeing. Like, this is not even a minute into the game. Both teams have used, like, almost their entire defensive lineup. Usually we're seeing matches in AWC sometimes take, like, you know, maybe two, three minutes before this situation happens. So it is quite crazy to see these players of this caliber kind of just falling apart, not even minute a minute into their matches. Yeah, especially when you know that, like, they're going to be a little bit unfamiliar with the meta as well, just with how these... These DPS are, these compositions are kind of switching up as we move from match to match. So I love to see them just bringing out all that of offensive pressure really early on in the match. You're not really seeing them sort of pick through, uh, you know, their their major Ooh. cooldowns are kind of going in really aggressively right away. Acro almost going down there. He vanishes from the fight. Now they're swapping back to Cassidy. He's got to be careful. Big heal comes out from Zanked. They're trusting him. And I think that's the biggest thing in this is trusting your healer. I know when I play with new healers I've never played with before, I have trust issues. I'm like, are you going to yeah. use the cooldown on me? I'm getting kind of low. Yeah. I don't really trust you. And then you use both cooldowns at the same time when you when you shouldn't have, and it costs you the game. So there's going to be a lot mm -hmm. of trust-building exercises like this. I remember going to camp, and you'd like fall backwards, and someone has to catch you, and you have to trust that they're going to catch you. A lot of those situations in these series. Freezing Trap on JJ. Gallo trying to run away. Is he going to escape? He portals back to the room. Is Kasu going to chase him down into that starting area? Just trying to reconnect. Acro gets over, but Gelu gates away next to JJ. Beautiful positioning from Gelu on that Warlock during that crowd control chain on his healer. That hiding maneuver right there may just win him the game as Kasu's caught in a kidney shot. And it's so close. 10% aspect of the turtle gets forced finally. And that is the last line of defense for Cassio. Like, look at dampening. We're already 36%, two and a half minutes in. He's not going to see another aspect of the turtle. He's not going to be able to play that style like an AWC where you kind of play defensive, but he's just going for the kill instead. That's exactly what you need to do. Damage onto both players getting cleaved down. JJ's mana is devastated. He's caught in a full blind. That could be it for Gelu. He's interrupted. He's silenced. He's flailing to stay alive. Acro gets gouged. Truly Bar Tom hard carrying, but Gelu's pet is down. He doesn't 
doesn't have a fell guard at the moment, it would seem. He's trying to fear Acro away. He's doing whatever he can to stay alive, trying to buy time for Trilly to get the kill. Is it going to be enough time? Zank gets the iron bark out at the last second. Trilly's caught in a root. He can't reconnect. Kasu is dying to dodge. Kasu goes down to JJ. JJ snipes him. Yellow oh. and Trilly Bartom, man. That was insane. The interesting thing about the, this format as well is like it doesn't allow for a cross kill. I wonder if we had gotten like a couple more seconds on that, we would have seen Gelo go down. Gelo go down as well because the team on the right side just so quickly lost all their defensives, and yet in the end it was Cassie that went down. Did that surprise you at all? The result of that super tease? I thought it was lights out for Gelo. Like as a demo lock when your pet's dead and you're just in the middle of the map with a rogue on you, it's like. You're pretty much like tapping like someone help like i need help <laughs> i can't do anything please help me and i mean truly jj delivered jj went for the kill with that boon of ascended and truly bartom got all the crowd control and they actually managed to finish casu and what what's so nice about with the dampening starting so much sooner is that defensive play styles are punished because if you're running away and the other team is building momentum you just can't recover from it with dampening as high as it is mm -hmm. so you need to be focusing on offense uh, more than defense with this style of play. So players are going to have to readapt to this. JJ takes a one-point lead, and it's six rounds in. That was only one round of these series. Quite evenly matched for it to last as long as it did. Uh, we see Zank stunned at, at the moment. Kasu looks like he's the target once again, using that Roar of Sacrifice, trying to get on the Demonology Warlock. Yalu making a fair response as they're looking very evenly matched. Zank caught in a full blind, though, with Relentless. Can they get the damage out during it? Doesn't look like it. The crowd control chain's over. JJ now into a full blind. Pressure onto Trillair. They're actually swapping to the rogue. We don't often see the rogues as the main targets. They're just probably the hardest class in the game to kill. So I can't imagine they're going to stay focused there for much longer. Also, something really interesting to note, Gelu Baba here. So a lot of these players actually submitted a bio for us. We've got some fun facts behind the scenes here. Uh, and then something that Gelu Baba says is, this is his first time playing Warlock in a tournament, which I feel like this format allows um maybe a little bit less comfortability like just a little bit more flexibility and sort of playing classes that you're not often going to be seeing them play on the ladder or in tournaments so it's cool to see Gelu players like Gelu kind of experiment a little bit why do you think he opted to go with that warlock super tease well I mean he's blasted me a few times on the NA ladder like I feel like he's been <laughs> blasting the ladder on demonology warlock for a bit now he's, it's not like his first day uh on <laughs> no, demonology no, warlock in the not, tournament yeah. <laughs> um and he's a, he's a veteran player right like he's made it to blizzcon yeah. he's 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 ran the ropes of what is available for arena and competitive play so if anyone could do it I would say it would be him um and he's got a good showing here this is a really tough matchup to deal with a rogue as a warlock you're just constantly stunned interrupted or gouged so to be able to get your pressure out and execute on a kill while staying alive is going to be really difficult considering i think he fights a rogue every single game with this right with two yeah. rogues i'm pretty sure every yeah. game he has to fight a rogue so he's running through the gauntlet right now um <laughs> in this solo shuffle competition and dampening is at 32 percent now this is where things start to spiral out and gelu doesn't have much defense left this might be his first defeat but Casu is getting punished look at this damage on the castle i cannot believe it Ooh. he's down below half health gelu trying to blink to safety as zank is full blind he ports back into the room but he might just get dropped zank to sap for one more second can gelu stay alive jj moves oh. in for the kill somehow some way staying alive but not long enough no. yellow will be going down and we just hyped him up a lot for his unfortunate oh. demise in round two he's not I out we yet <laughs> we, a little caster curse like yeah he's been doing really good he's he's yeah. been destroying the ladder oh both times though it's kind of come down between gelu and cassiu uh in sort of a 1v1 just whose health runs out first now we are seeing them on the same team and we're going to be seeing double rogue against gelu and Casu. how do you think that's going to go i mean it just seems like the uptime on <laughs> you know on gelu just at all from anyone is just there's never there's never a time when gelu isn't just running for his life um and i feel like it's going to be double that for this matchup said I said he, this is not a single round he has to fight one rogue. He has to fight two. There's two rounds he has to fight two rogues. And he's got a hunter on his team. <laughs> this is this is the fun part about the solo shovel tournament is like you're going to sometimes get forced to play comps that are just suboptimal. Like you almost never see hunter warlock um, ever. So can Kasu and Gelu manage to pull off a win against double outlaw, right? This has been a terrorizing composition for the entire mm. last season, and they have to beat it as Hunter Warlock. It would be absolutely insane. We can already see Kasu just getting rolled at the moment. JJ's trying to recover, manages to do it with the Guardian Spirit, and then we can see Acro Trillate. They're just retreating back to the pillar. 
They got their cooldowns forced on the opposite side. We're going to wait, do a little bit of a run point here, and then push in with another blind to try and go for the kill. So much more standard strategy from the double rogues, playing really safe, and that makes it so difficult. Another full blind. That gets Gelu's trinket. Can they get a sap out of this blind? Truly gets flared on his vanish and actually has to go for a kidney shot. That was a really well-placed flare, definitely using the utility of this composition to its full effect to break up the crowd control chain because Gelu could be dead right now. If that oh, no, they gated the wrong way. They both gated in opposite directions. <laughs> oh no, JJ's interrupted, trying to heal up Gelu on the opposite side of the map. And usually the gateway, you want to use that as a team to all get to one area. But I think they had a bit of a moment of panic. Maybe they're not in voice, right? Like some players can choose not to get in voice. Some can if they want to. It's all up to them if they want the solo shuffle experience. But here comes Boon of Ascended. No, JJ just gets kidney shot on it. And that's, that's the feels bad man moment against Double Outlaw Rogue. You pop your damage and you just... Kidney shot into a blind. Now Gelu falling behind. Another flare on the sap. Really love these flares from Kasu. If they win this game, it's 100% on, on the hands of that flare. Yeah, really loving the utility we're seeing come out from Kasu. Keeping alive, you know, pretty pretty long time here in the game, especially considering where they were last time and about the fact that they're, he's against two rogues. If you actually look at what Kasu submitted as a bio, he says that he, he was really hoping not to see an outlaw rogue, and he submitted a pretty <laughs> funny comment. I'm only one hunter in a game versus 50 outlaw rogues and 50 warriors. Please support me with all broadcasts and chat uh, for the first, for one time, for once in my life, I think it's what he meant. So... Uh, yeah, shout out Casu. Definitely not not an easy composition to be up against, especially when you're shuffling teams like we are here. Uh, and I do wonder how much they're utilizing that voice chat because you are really seeing that lack of synergy between these teams kind of come out, like that example with the gate Sid. But um, it seems like as soon as they get comfortable oh. with the matchup, it just switches once again. There's no cooldowns for Gelu. Dampening is at 41%, and that's a full blind. There should be no way. Gelu needs a miracle to stay alive. He ports at 1% into the room. He coils, but it's not enough. Gelu will be going down, and the Hunter Warlock is not going to pull off the upset. But there is that we will see that matchup again with the healers flipped around. So they'll get a second chance, but it's looking quite grim. And, and look at Trilly Bartom. I told you guys, like I said it before we got in here, like this guy is tactical. He grinds this game like nine hours a day on his stream playing every class. Just because he's known for playing a warrior, he's got the wheelbarrow and he runs through like he he can play Wait, everything. What? So yeah, his his wheelbarrow meme I, that's that's old. That's from like Mop. I don't even know if he actively oh, uses yeah. that anymore. It's like get come get in the wheelbarrow and it's like I think that's it's like carrying really his teammates in the wheelbarrow. Oh. I think uh, I someone will one. correct me. Yeah, Twitch chat, let us know on that one. But yeah, I mean, being a multi are definitely paying off here. I also feel like it's it's just it's just one massive pug. I, I love to see it. It definitely. Um, it's exciting to see these players play together with people they obviously haven't played with much. And uh, these compositions that we're seeing, really exciting. Uh, we're getting Gelu and Akru on a team now versus Kasu and Trille. So a uh, bit of a crit having two rogues in one one match. What do you say? You gotta I, uh, persevere. I you, you do, and there's six rounds of this and you have like 10 seconds between each matchup. So you barely have time to be like switching into voice if you want to. Uh, and it's just, I know that it's it's got to be chaotic if you're a player. I mean, I hope that they're having fun. Do you think they're having fun or they're stressed, Sid? I think it depends on your perspective. I think the rogues are having <laughs> a lot of fun right now. Gelu might have been some fun. Cassie, based on his bio, might be starting <laughs> to get a little tilted. He's only one point in. It's a three-way tie and only two DPS make it out. So Trilly Bar yeah. Tom is, if he wins this, he's like locking his spot in. It's a battle between Cassie and Acro. Gelu, 10%, they proc him, he's down. And now Kasu is starting to establish a lead with two points. Trilly Bar Tom, like, I think he's pretty much... Is it possible to... Tie? I mean, he could have a two-way tie with Kasu, and they'd both go through. So Trilly, I think, is through now. It's up to Acro, Gelo, and Kasu. And this is why I'm trying to figure out and calculate. Is like, can we determine when someone's guaranteed through, like, halfway through? I think we I can, uh, with this being the first time we've done it. So can Gelu or Acro... This is the chat's bet. Chat, what's going on? What, what are these bets, chat? Let us know, chat. Uh, you know, also let us know who you think, what if there's a healer that's going to come out on top. I mean, they're tied at the moment. This is the fifth round, so there's two more to go if you include this one. So we could see a tie between these two healers, or we see one of them come out on top, on top four to two. So definitely a lot on the line here. This really is extremely cutthroat. If you look at this competition, there's not a lot of chances that these players have to stay in. I feel like a lot of it is also just, like, a lot of it is luck. A lot of it is laid down to, like, who your teammates are, if you're having synergy in that game, how comfortable with like the random composition you are that you're getting. And uh, um, 
I, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun watching this so far. I love how quickly these games are going as well. I love, you know, you've kind of mentioned it a lot, Sipthies, how quickly dampening starts in these rounds. I'd love to see that implemented in, in AWC because it's making this this a really fast-paced game, and I think it's it's really fun to watch, and it's probably really fun to play. Ooh. Are they going to open on JJ? No, I don't, I, there's no way, right? They're just poking him. Look, maybe they are. Soul Rod, the pets are on the Priest. Uh, I mean, you don't really want to attack the Outlaw Rogue, so Hunter or Priest are probably going to be the main targets for Gelu. This is a tiebreaker opportunity between Gelu and Acro. If they both want to stay in the running, whoever loses this round, I'd say, is pretty much out, uh, or pretty close to guaranteed to be out. If not, so a really important game right now in this solo shuffle. Casu's caught in a mortal coil. Can Gelo do it? He's pushing through. Casu down 30%. Fear on JJ. Aspect of the turtle. But now Gelo on the back foot. They're turning it around. He's trying to go for the tyrant. He doesn't care. He's turning it around in defiance, popping off his powerful defense offensive cooldown. And Casu sees it and just runs away. He knows he needs to avoid that tyrant at all costs, having just used his aspect of the turtle. Something interesting to note as well, Acro, we've always known him as an, you know, a rogue. He's been playing it as his main class, competing with it in AWC for quite some time. And like you've been mentioning, Super T's Trill, uh, this isn't Trill A, this isn't really something we ever see him on. And he's the one that's actually winning. He's ahead in points right now by quite a huge margin. Acro only having won one of his games in this matchup so far. So uh, interesting, the, the dichotomy between these two players. I mean, they both, both picked the same Covenant. They're both playing that same spec. They're actually not allowed to switch their specs. I don't know if you've mentioned that too much between each game. Once you pick your spec, you're kind of stuck with it throughout the entire match. Looks like Gelu's going down, trying to get the fear out. Got interrupted and he's down. Oh no. All right. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunate for Gelu. One Gello. more chance. And I actually think I am mistaken on the format. I think they play, is it, is it... I swear it's only they... one. You know what? Chat's confused, we're confused, admins are confused. There's a, this is a new format, we're working it out. They've got three matches, and but the, oh hey Ven, yeah let us know. Yeah. Of the, the three total that they get. I feel like it's good that they do it that way because like a lot of this is is like up on sort of the classes that you're combined with so it's yeah. good that they kind of have multiple chances like this and this first round is an all or nothing well now the intensity is so much lower now, now it's like i was thinking like <laughs> oh the blood is spilling like this is it like listen this it's is still cutthroat. intense it. <laughs> you gotta it's make it through cutthroat. i mean gelu the, the odds that on the, line. <laughs> the odds that you get an outlaw row group are pretty high so if gelu wants to figure something out he's gonna have to and here we go this is the hardest matchup that they could get Warlock Hunter, and look at what they're doing. They're staying in the room with the flare so that the rogues can't come in, and they're trying to stall for dampening, I think, so that they can just pop all their cooldowns and one-shot somebody. So if they, because mm -hmm. you can delay for dampening, it starts, I think, at a minute uh, in the game, if not two minutes. <gasps> So oh, like yeah. you can get to full dampening in no time flat. And oh, if the rogues don't gosh. do anything, they might lose. So do they run into the flare? I feel like you just run into the flare. You're outlaw. Like who cares if you get a re-stealth opener? Like just go right in there and press a kidney shot. Like why? I swear they're gonna lose if they wait out here like this. Hunter, Hunter, Warlock. He's also playing demonic uh, fell lord as well. So Gelu is playing like complete anti double melee, and now he's positioned at that little window at the top in the room. He wants to stack them up, drop a fell lord AOE, cleave them, and kill them in dampening. They're trying to pull out all the stops, all the tactics, special tactics. Here comes the fell lord, massive cleave damage onto Acro and Trilly Bartom. Can they break the perfect record for Trille in this first solo shuffle? Uh, I'm not 100%. Actually, did he lose a game? He might have already lost a game with the score the way that it's looking. Um, but I'm really excited to see yeah, if this works out one. for them. JJ is down at half. Mortal Cold in the room. Into a silence. They're just going after the healer. JJ manages to stay alive, and Gelu's trying to get back into the room, but he's just dying at the same time. Can they pull it off? He's playing Gateway Mastery, too. He's knocking them up in the air when he gates. He's playing all of the memeiest lockdowns you could possibly play <laughs> to try and win this. I mean, he's a, he's a, bit, of a, he's a bit of a memer, but... No, I, I love the uh, I love the implementation here. We got just just a little bit. All right, Acro pressing it into Galu a little bit there. We're seeing <laughs> this is uh, last time we saw these comp these two these two rogues together. It was the Druid, right? That was yep. with them and not the Priest. Yeah, so we're seeing a little bit of a different matchup here. Going to change the pace of it just a little bit. Galu going down. Did he lose his Fell Lord? Oh, he's so close. Did he make go No way. He did it. Dude. There's no wait, way that wait, he just did that. that. so fast, I didn't even see who died. Was it Akko? I think it was Trille. 
Surely like, that Gelu won. They won as oh Hunter. God. Hunter. They no won as Hunter way. Warlock. There's no shot. No they just way. won as Hunter Warlock. I said that was the hardest matchup you could probably get in the whole tournament, and they oh actually found a way. The, wait in the room. Wait for dampening to start cooking up a little bit. Get that healing down, and then go for a tyrant and get the kill. And the stall tactic actually worked for them. It went down right to the last segment. Here we go. We're back into another game. Already three rounds into this grouping, uh, with Clyde Twinkle Infernion running a Warlock Feral Resto Druid versus RMP. Oh my God. Zenlin, Zenlin, Nixie, and Raikou. If they can win against RMP. This is harder than the last one. I said no the last way. one was the hardest oh, yeah. matchup you could get. This is harder than the last one. Yeah, but luckily, I think we're only going to see this one one time. So, you know, if team if the team on the right side can actually manage to beat this RMP, it's going to be set set them up really well for the rest of this match. But I don't know. It's it's uh, looking like Nixie's already got two points on the board. Um, Clyde also at two. So no wins, unfortunately, just yet for the Priest. We're actually three matches into this one. We're kind of overlapping these games just a little bit so it's gonna be non-stop gameplay for you guys looking watching a back from home all day long and we're seeing some immense pressure coming from both sides in this matchup already once again these teams are just like you know feet on the ground as soon as the gates open pretty much we're already three percent into it into dampening infernian just getting chipped away at his health there uh no trinket or anything either way he's getting backed up into that room twinkle maybe going oh. down a little bit there and actually oh he goes into bear form just at the last minute said Oh, but they procked his Necro Lord, so he's dead. He's just a couple. He's got a couple of seconds of staying alive, but as Necro, when that procs, you get resurrected for a moment, a few seconds, yeah, and then you go down. He was so close, man. But that, that, like, what you got? Nixie, Raikou, and Zenlin. Like, there's no, there is no way <laughs> you're beating that as double druid. Like, that's just a rough game. And now, oh my God, now you got Feral Mage. This is also very uh, unorthodox comp. I feel like Nixie is definitely happy about this group. Like, Outlaw and Warlock's pretty good. Outlaw Mage is the <laughs> best comp in the game, right? And then even Outlaw Feral, I, I think, is pretty good. So, like, Nixie's he's chilling pretty hard right now um, in this grouping overall. Um, but what would be impressive for me is if Clyde can make it through. I feel like the Priest, like, double Druid, that doesn't seem really, like, high synergy. Having a Priest no. being able to flip between that, I feel like Clyde's the one that's really going to have to step up. He's already in the lead, though, with two points. We can yeah, see them almost... starting. Go ahead. Look at the Tyrant cast immediately from Inferno. It's like his first global cooldown. He wants to get a Tyrant onto the field and start doing damage. Full fear. Are they really going to proc Raikou's Cauterize? They got his block. Not even 30 seconds into the game. He gets Mass Dispelled. Is he just going to die here? He manages to pull away from the engagement. And like this is BlizzCon champion Raikou. Like, he's been at the top of his game for some time. Is he not going to be able to win this grouping on the Fire Mage? I don't know. We'll have to see. Time will soon tell us uh, just some interesting facts that we know about Clyde, which I always find this funny when we're seeing like their bios of who they're most afraid to play. His biggest threat, according to Clyde, is any outlaw rogue. And here he is up against um, Nixie. So we'll have to see how he can defend himself against this rogue in this matchup. Uh, and then he also says that, oh, this is kind of mean. His smallest threat is Alec. Wow. <laughs> do they have he a says, group together we need, we need to know if they have a group maybe, together. maybe i'll take a look at it but he says smallest threat alec and then in parentheses ha 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 oh he's just kidding of course <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, of course. it's only a jest raikou is still below half hp clyde has been crowd controlled for so long at the moment and demo outlaw is just so much more synergy than feral fire mage twinkle now is trying to find a way on his toes uh, to navigate through this situation, managing to bash up Zenlin. Now he's feared, though. He wanted to go for a Cyclone, not able to get any crowd control. And I feel like the synergy here is just so anti. I'm not sure how they're going to manage to pull this off. Raikou's, he's popping combust. He's going for the kill. Can he get it onto Infernion? But he's the one going down. His Cauterize gets procced. I think that's it for Raikou. He's burning down, trying to blink to safety, but that's a full fear. They proc the Wild Seed, and now they just need to kill it. Brom comes in with the Smackdown, and Raikou wow. now still only with one win. Nixie, he's through. He's at four wins at this point. Infernion's yeah. looking to try and take that second position. So I'd say it's a battle between Raikou, Infernion, and Twinkle, and the healers are still even at this point. You know what I really like about this format as well is these matches are going so quickly, and it's like you can have a couple of first bad games, but it's kind of, I don't want to say easy, but it's not like you can get really, you know, just out of control points. You can catch up. There's not going to, like, snowball out of control. Obviously, we're seeing Nixie quite a bit ahead of the other players and with four points, but these players still have a lot of opportunities to make that up. Uh, we're only on round five, so there's two more opportunities for these teams to try and get uh, just a little bit more points. We've got a tie between the two healers, which I feel like we've seen quite often. It seems like the healers 
um, kind of end the matches, Sid, with really close points. Yeah, I mean, the healers have been pretty much close to dead even. Uh, mm -hmm. Combustion immediately on the Nixie gets his Cloak of Shadows. And playing that Mage Warlock, Rike is going to be a lot more comfortable, I think, in this situation. But maybe not. He's actually just getting cut down uh, despite the composition. Double Fear onto his partners. Twinkle's tearing in with that Berserk. Riker's going to try and navigate away from it with the mirror images. Still has Alter Time. Bit surprised to not see him just pop that. I guess he's, he's comfortable with the Iron Bark. Uh, it's really cool to see these players like... We, don't, we never see Clyde playing with Raikou, getting to see these guys kind of team up and I see if they it. can build their synergy just on the spot. Now we got Feral Rogue, like never see Feral Rogue in competitive play. Maybe this is a counter to Mage Lock that we just never knew existed in the game. Like it's high mobility, really tanky. Maybe it can run down uh, this double casting comp. If it did, it's going to put Raikou in a really bad position. It would tie up Infernion and Twinkle 2-2 two to two, and Raikou would still only be at one win. And I don't know what other comps they have left in this round because we didn't see the first few to see what the comps are. But with Raikou having a Feral Mage matchup, that doesn't seem too good for him to make it through this first round of matches in a good position. He's caught in a Cyclone, Clyde's in a Sap, Infernia on the run, gaining away really good mobility from the Warlock so far, despite like maybe not being in voice or voice for the first time with their healers. They're coordinating really effectively. I'd say this is one of the most difficult things to do with a new healer is using your mobility as a Warlock and not being like, oh no, I poured it out of your line of sight, now you can't kill me and I'm dead. Uh, or I gated away and you didn't know and now I'm over here and you can't catch up. Uh, so it's really tough to do that. They're doing a great job. Uh, Zen is feared away at the moment, comes out, goes for a Divine Hymn, buffing up his healing, gets disrupted on it though, with that disorienting roar. They're trying to stay on target, Infernion ports back into the room, Zen into another poly, but they're struggling to find their footing. I'm almost thinking that they're going to need to make a swap to Zen Lin, because they're not finding really any significant pressure on Nixie or Twinkle, and the Feral Rogue actually looking pretty strong here in this match. Yeah, not a lot of uptime they're being able to find on the side of the left team here. Uh, just kind of a lot of, you know, mobility in general between all of these classes, especially when you've got that Night Fae Covenant utilization at your hands. Uh, so not really seeing anybody go down too much. A lot of defensive still on the board across uh, everyone here. We're seeing Raikou, uh, no, no Ice Block, no Trinket as well. So he's kind of seeing a little bit of pressure, about half of his health left. Uh, but not really being able to get anything done on either side. So yeah, I do wonder if we're going to see a hard swap too anyone anytime soon see that pressure twinkle going down just a little bit there oh see they're close oh they're so good like proc Raikou is cauterized no <laughs> i think that's oh. it for Raikou. he doesn't he needs this round man he, this is a mage lock round he needs this but it's a double fear he frost novus nixie no he way. tries to get back into center field he pops the battle master he's dragon's breathing he's doing whatever he can but it's not enough he will <laughs> die mid gateway and that is a tough Dude. position for Raikou, man this is a tough I'm position shocked. Okay, so wait, Where's maybe it's not maybe it's not that bad. He's got Rogue Mage. He's got Rogue Mage here against right, Feral Warlock. Right. With Clyde. And That's good. So it's maybe not out yet. He could tie it up two to two and then we come down to the final round. Nixie is hundred percent through. Nixie now is fighting for that first six and zero of the solo shuffle competition. I'm putting like a mini achievement, you know? Like achievement unlock, go undefeated in the solo shuffle tournament or something. Six rounds in a <laughs> row. Um he he's just one round away and he's got a good shot, right? Um so yeah. Raikou could tie this up and he's got Rogue Mage. Will oh, Feral it feels so cheesy, like to, to, <laughs> to make it out of here because of Rogue Mage, like the solo like that almost well, defeats the purpose of solo uh solo shuffle. Like, yeah, Raikou only made it out because he played with the rogue. <laughs> like, I don't know. I feel like that in a way defeats the purpose. Um why is well, Whoa, that's a sorry, go ahead. We we saw the Hunter Warlock win against double rogue, which was impossible. Yeah. This like feral Warlock might be able to win. Look at it. Look at it right now, Raku. I think he's got Believe. block. I think the UI has just not reset it between the rounds for us. I'm pretty sure he's got There's no way he pressed it in the room or something. Um, Clyde he is passed out. pretty I, early last time. I, I, he's been using well, it really early, I feel like. We have to wait and see 100%, but I'm leaning more on the side that he's still got it. Demo Warlock does a lot of damage, right? Like 100%. Like mm. you pop Tyrant, it's a lot of damage. Feral Druid does a lot of damage with Berserk. So there's some opportunities here for Demo Feral to beat Rogue Mage. I would say that it's an upset, but it's not impossible. Uh, if they did, it would be absolutely devastating for Raikou. Like Raikou cannot afford this. Like this is, this is his series to tie it up. Still have a good shot of making it through this initial first round uh, into his next two set of matches to qualify. So he really can't afford to have this thrown away. And he's got Nixie on his team, right? He's a BlizzCon champion. You got Clyde, who's been healing at a high level in tournaments as well. So is Raikou going to manage to hold this together with his team? His teammates are actually double feared. Great setup by Zenlin in this position. And Zenlin is trying to secure his spot uh, with a four-point lead 
in this series if they can manage to do it. And he's going to have to do it with a Feral and a Demonology Warlock. Mana looking relatively even. I think that two-minute mark is where things are going to get really spicy between these teams. Like, you're going to have to get some work done. So if Raikou maybe wants to sit on his Combust, not just pop it on cooldown, wait for a higher timing on Dampening. But Tyrant has been called in. This is where Infernion's going to start ramping up some damage. Can Twinkle get in a position to back him up? They're going to end up in a tie 3-3 if they manage to win here. Collides in a full fear. Great push by Infernion here. With crowd control on the healer and damage on Raikou timed perfectly. Look at the pressure. They've got him down below half. There's no way. Are they going to manage to pull off the upset here? Iron Bark trades for Clyde. Stabilize him. Now Twinkle on the back foot. Raikou tearing in with Combustion. Can Zen stabilize him. Pops the fade. Immunes it. Goes for his symbols to get some mana. But now Infernion falling behind. He's got to keep two players alive at the same time. Can he manage to secure his spot in this first match? Now caught into a blind. They traded every defensive cooldown to survive that assault. Infernion's going to have his Tyrant coming up in 10 seconds. Twinkle's going to have Berserk coming up in 10 seconds. They need to time those cooldowns together and basically overwhelm a target. Nixie with no Trinket could be a really good swap. They actually just got his evasion, but it might be too little too late. They're going for the Berserk. They're going for the kill on Raikou. Can they take him out? He ice blocks it. Twinkle's now defensive in bear form, trying to stay alive. This could be the final moments of the game. Almost 50% dampening. Can they finish Raikou? Pull off the upset against the Rogue Mage as Twinkle recovers in the room, but he left Infernion behind. They swap back to Infernion. Zen is interrupted. He's got almost no mana left, but they've got a Demonic Tyrant. They have to win with this. Infernion ports in the room. He's line of sighting Raikou. He needs to get a casted Tyrant off. Is he going to get the cast off? They're swapping to Nixie, trying to find that opportunity. Soul Rock casted. He needs the Tyrant. Where is it? Tyrant's coming up for Infernion. They have to connect with this. They can win the game in this next 20-second window. Clyde is ooming really fast. Dampening is critically high. Someone's going to fall over at any moment. Who is it going to be? It looks like it's between Nixie and Twinkle. Bladestorm on the Felguard. Infernion's tearing in. Raikou's going for the kill. Raikou's got Combust, he gets in-capped on it. Twinkle goes for a Cyclone, he Cyclones his Combust! And now, is he gonna be able to kill Nixie? Evasion, Infernion's down at 30%. Zen has zero mana at this point. The momentum is in favor of Nixie and Raikou, and it looks like Raikou is gonna be tying things up onto Infernion. He's at 10%, Line of Sight's in the room. Nixie's getting taken down at the same time. Iron Bark comes through, and Twinkle will be the first to fall. Twinkle, Twinkle, little star. <laughs> it is not going to be enough to go so far. And Raikou does it, tying it up. It was a very important game for him in this first match. Oh my gosh, that I mean, Zen really did hold on for a really long time on the side of uh, the the right team there. Inferno on Twinkle, just no defensives, no health for so long. Zen absolutely zero mana, but we can see uh, that it was uh, it, the team on the left side that actually did manage to pull off that win. So quite a few familiar faces in this matchup. Uh, just some interesting information about Twinkle since um, this might be new to a lot of people. He says that his own worst enemy is himself which is an interesting comment to send to us and he uh a little bio about himself he says he's the 23 year old daddy gamer from croatia so thank you for that information twinkle fairy uh <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're glad to have you here so yeah he almost took out raikou i almost? mean that was really close considering the matchup right like i feel like that was like an impressive showing even if they didn't win it um, like the, as close as you could really come, and it's going to be interesting to see like how they play in the future. We're seeing like different compositions coming really close, getting in really cool positions. We got our leaderboard update. Nixie has got my mini achievement, the first player achievement unlocked of undefeated in a solo shuffle match with six points ahead of Brunhitti. Uh, <laughs> and we've got uh, Brunhitti in second at the moment. Jamie Trille Tren up here on the Demon Hunter, the only Demon Hunter in the tournament, uh, trying to make a showing. Moving into the next set of matches as well. Is it going to just be four rogues coming through, like into the top? What, what's going to be going on moving in the future? We still got three more matches just in this first round. Did which uh, which class did you DPS class did you vote for Super T's overall? I, I I sold out and bet with my brain and sold out to Outlaw. You know, you you bet mm. with your heart on your death knight, I like did. you you wanted to believe, but I just. I, I couldn't, I couldn't in good conscience uh, make a bet that I didn't think was going to happen. And um, overall, best DPS is seventy six percent to Rogue. So everybody else is also this agreeing. is this is Chad. I think this is everybody. All all of your bets right yeah. now. So seventy six percent on Rogue, only seven percent on Warlock as the second bet. Uh, five percent on Mage, five percent on Warrior. Some Death Knights, two percent on Death Knight, not zero. Ooh. Oh, you guys are betting against Trent on Demon Hunter. That's a mistake. You guys got him down yeah. there at point nine percent. 
I not would, even going to give I him a one percent. I think that should be a little bit higher. I mean, look what Trend was able to do with you know with Creed and the previous teams he played with AWC. Like that dude is playing Demon Hunter when no one else is, and he manages to make it work. And I, I feel like especially in a tournament format such as this, uh, I I feel like I would give I would put Demon Hunter just a little bit higher up on that board. But we can see the match prediction here: zero percent for Chaz. Excuse me. <laughs> what? And for Joe Fernandez? This, I mean, this is the hardest group to put a bet on. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but I would... Go ahead. I, I would have bet on Waz. That's a safe bet. But the second bet, like, I guess because you're only allowed to pick one, so you can't make a second bet. First time, we're going to see Mugambala as well. Very exciting. You got Ellie Mage versus Warrior Rogue. All right, Sid, uh, I'm going to have to cut you off here and kick you out because now we're bringing the big brains here for the five wow. champions here. I'm sorry, Sid, <laughs> but it's going to be me and Aya now uh, bringing in the big brains here. And uh, we're already in game here, Aya. What do you what do you think about this? We got, uh, what is Swapsy actually playing here? Is he enhanced? I think he actually might. No, he's Ellie. Okay, we got Ellie Fire Mage and Restitute. This is a real comp versus Rogue Warrior with Waz. Waz was actually my uh, top prediction here for DPS player. He said mm -hmm. he's been feeling a little bit sick and uh, we'll see if he's uh, he's been skipping a beat here uh, as this game just started. Oh yeah, I like this bio from Waz. I'm just going to read it. A lot of people, he, he's hoping to see a lot of people increase their arsenal of players they play with and build friendships. How Aww. sweet is that? Aww. <laughs> Wholesome Waz. But yeah, what, what's your take on the, the class representation so far, Zico? I mean, it's been a lot of rogues, as a lot of people expected, you know. Uh, it was definitely my top pick, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see as well. Like, we've been seeing a lot of uh, crazy stuff, you know, hunters doing well. We've been seeing Demon Hunter as well doing well. And uh, honestly, it's anybody's game. We don't really know what's going to happen. Everybody gets matched kind of randomly uh, into random comps here. So it's very, very exciting to see. And uh, there's so much action. We're already at 15% dampening. You can see Swapsy already doing some damage here to Joe. But Joe himself here uh, trying to respond with a decent amount of chunk of pressure here. And now Waz kidney shotting his healer that he usually plays with on his own team into the gouge. Waz actually getting polymorphed here by Alec. Alec trying to take control over the situation. And honestly, Alec and Swapsy so far doing surprisingly well. Here comes the combustion as well. Onto Joe. What is Joe going to do? He just gets aggressive. Look at that faith he has in his healer here. Fnobers has a lot of work ahead of him. Now caught up in the lightning lasso, but does break out. And that Kyrian Spear doing work for Joe right now. So much damage coming in for Swapsy. How is he going to stay alive? He pops the Astral Shift. Is it going to be enough? Chas is in a full blind right now. He has no way out. Do they have a sap as well? Waz goes for the vantage, gets the full sap. I think that's going to be it. Alec tries to peel with the Ring of Frost, but no. Swapsy will go down in round number one here. Oh my god. I mean, Chaz just stuck in an insane CC chain. There's nothing you could have done there, but I'm surprised that happened. I mean, like you said in the beginning, that's an actual real comp. You know, we see um, Kawhi play it quite a bit, so I'm um, a little bit surprised there at that last one, but this is the solo shuffle. You kind of don't know what's going to happen, so we're going to head into round two, um, and we've got just another set, Zico, of comps that we uh, we don't really see. <laughs> don't really see too much. Or yeah, ever. So, we, so we got the Outlaw Ellie Resto Druid. Uh, it's not too bad, and we got the Mage Warrior Rest of the So I feel like this is actually pretty even uh, setups here. What strategies are they going to do? I, I really like that stall strategy that we saw earlier from the Hunter Warlock. Why well, is actually getting pulled out of stealth here immediately? Joe going in and going big here with the Kyrian Spear, with the Fear. He gets bashed into a Cyclone here, potentially. Actually gets Cyclone kind of low there. Nicely done there by Fnobers. And now we can see some more pressure coming out. Alex going to trade the Alter Time. Full blind here onto Chas. Uh, Joe still taking a lot of damage. Was doesn't have a sap for this one, though. And it looks like Alec actually will be the target right now for this uh, Ellie Rogue. And it's just chaos everywhere. Everybody's trading cooldowns. Everybody's doing damage. And uh, I mean, it's got to be so stressful uh, if you're a healer in this match. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like any role would is probably a little bit stressed out. I know at least I would be. I mean, the chaos between switching your teams every single round. You're not allowed to switch your DPI, uh, your your spec, but I'm sure that there's still a lot going on behind the scenes. You know, you only have like 10 seconds between each match to know what your comp is, know what you're up against. A lot of these players are kind of up against their biggest counter sometimes. Seeing Alex go down, Alec go down just a little bit, quite a bit of defensive left. You know, nobody really in trouble yet. We've got full mana on both sides of the healers here. I think this is the first match we've had also today where the healers are the same spec. Am I correct? 
in that? Uh, yeah, no, that's correct. Uh, we got Arrested Druid versus Arrested Druid. And uh, Swapsy right now in a lot of trouble here. Alec looking to try to follow up maybe with some crowd control, but not able to find it. Chaz actually getting Cyclone right now. Alec could be in trouble. He still has the Ice Block. Joe actually going to be the target of choice. Chaz is in a bash. Alec's running. <laughs> And Alec is taking, everybody's taking so much damage right now. And Waz has that blind coming up in about 10 seconds. That could be the game winning play, but Alec actually might just go down before that chest, trying to immune crowd control there with that tranquility bubble. And now here comes the gouge. He has a blind as well to follow it up. Swapsy though, dropping dangerously low here to Joe. Defensive blind coming out from Waz here. And uh, that's the interesting thing here with dampening being so high. Maybe you don't go for the crowd control on the healer. You just go for uh, kind of the peels here. And Waz, definitely one of those players with a lot of awareness uh, when to make the right choice uh, in situations like that. And uh, maybe just slowing down the game is what's going to be uh, getting them the win. Look at the damage Ooh. coming in from Swapsy. Alec trying to respond now with the combustion. Actually not ice blocking there. Wow. That was great. Intervene there as well from Joe. And a lot of uh, trust there in his healer. Alec still dude, just going to... Okay. Hey, there it is the ice block coming out he still has the car to work with but jesus the damage is <laughs> never ending i mean we've talked quite a bit about you know putting the trust in your healer and i feel like that was definitely one of those situations there you know alec not using that ice block until just the very last second uh, unfortunately though that was a ended up being a loss but i mean the synergy between your healers and your team is really important here and really everyone i mean these are teams that you don't have practice with beforehand they didn't even know the matches until yesterday uh, so there's definitely a lot going on here between, you know, not only the specs that we're seeing being put together game to game, but situations like that where you can really see the unfamiliarity uh, kind of be, be either your loss or your win in those kinds of situations. I mean, look at this matchup. You got Joe and Swapsy. Uh, they won BlizzCon together. And then you got Chaz, who won BlizzCon with Waz uh, together. And... Uh, <laughs> you got Waz and Alec. Alec played RMD a lot of the time when he won Blisco. So it's a lot of history here. Uh, it's uh, very interesting to see that I actually really like this group because the the comps actually have been quite balanced, I would say. And yeah. there hasn't been like, you know, a really like one off, like super strange comp so far. Yeah, definitely. not in this one, at least. It kind of seems like, uh, I mean, I don't know how they decided to pick these matchups, but it seems like there's a good balance as well between range DPS and melee. Uh, if you guys are watching from home, you don't not really sure what's going on. Basically, we've got these matches. There's six of them, and with uh, you know each, there's with each round it gets just completely swapped. So the teams are random between each game, um, but obviously every match is going to have one healer, two DPS, um, and there's no no tank specs either, which I think is a good. Thing. Yeah, there's no tanks, and uh, people are allowed to swap spec, but not roll. So if you're a healer, uh, you can't swap. But if you're yeah. a DPS, like a rogue, for example, you could go to a sub rogue uh, if Waz wants to. Um, I thought you could swap, swap specs between games. Uh, between swap, games, no, between but the between, matches. yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. Is Alec making food right now? Is he hungry? Alec, no uh, this is the wrong, he, he's making food right now. This is not the, <laughs> Alec, my boy, you, you got to eat before the tournament. Uh, he's making a table here for his, uh, for his uh, uh, druid, potentially. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, uh, but they're going to go for the crowd control right now. The chest, they get the sh sap and the sheep. And that's, you know, the danger when you're playing rogue mage and you don't have those comps. You're going to overlap a lot of those crowd controls. You're going to be making some uh, food and water for your teammates in the middle of the match here and we'll see if they can still pull out a win right now swaps is building up a lot of momentum here yeah respawn saw the um hoping not to see oh wait, wait never mind i was reading the the wrong player bio but i was just going to give you guys some more information but i mean we don't really need one we already said we already know all these players they're all veterans most of them winning blizzcon fanobras obviously probably will eventually or should have at one point uh, but, you know, like you kind of already said, Zico, very evenly matched comps. We're seeing Fnabra is the only one with two points, however, and the only one without a BlizzCon win. So look, that just shows you that he definitely deserves to be in this matchup. Chaz trying to get a Cyclone out, can't get out any really crowd, crowd control. Love the aggression that we're seeing come out from both ones, um, uh, from both sides here. And it looks like we're going to, oh, oh my God, Fnabra's just getting knocked down out of nowhere, Zico. That was an insane amount. I, I literally, I just blinked and I, I pretty much missed it. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, but uh, finally, Chas uh, gets to pick up his win. And the way it works is that the healers are competing against each other uh, is the best way to look at it. One healer uh, kind of advances uh, from these six matches. 
And uh, of course, they're going to still play another six matches and then another six matches again. And then whoever has the mo most points. And then there's a few tiebreakers as well that we'll get into later. Uh, but the way that you can look at it in the head to head right now in this uh, solo shuffle, it, uh, Shaz is competing against Fnobbers. And basically, that's what he wants to He wants to win mm -hmm. as many matches as possible. And then the two DPS with the highest amount of wins will also qualify. And right now, we got a three way tie for the DPS. And uh, this is uh, Chaz's chance to tie it up between the healers. Will he be able to do it? though is the question i have are you are your cooldowns your major cooldowns not resetting between games uh they should um i think there or might be that, a ui may, bug may, that might be like a bug like a ui bug yeah yeah um they, they should reset and um we can see already here joe uh, chilling in a disarm right now um not his favorite. Uh, there's a famous <laughs> clip with Joe where he's basically raging. Disarm. He dodged five disarms. Uh, but uh, right now, Joe wasn't lucky. And uh, we'll see if uh, Joe can bring some pressure here. A lot of people counted them out, you know, in this group when we watched those pickems earlier on. And uh, if you guys uh, missed it, guys, don't forget to cast your votes uh, on the pickems.gg. You can see Alec. Actually, maybe forced into the ice block here, catches a big heal, and uh, showing a lot of trust there between Alec and Fnobers. But look at Chas, has to use his Trank Bubble already down, a massive cooldown. It's not looking good. Fnobers, if he can win this match here, he's going to at least secure a tie between the healers or potentially just uh, you know winning the group here against Chas. So this is a very important match here between the healers. Yeah, certainly a lot on the line here. On the fourth round, so we're about halfway through this. Looks like Alec... Oh! oh! my god alec <laughs> dude is scaring us here and he manages to live yet another day using that ice block at the very last minute was able to keep his cauterized however still has his trinket as well uh you know lots of mana too on the side of Fnobbers with so very healthy team but i mean he's just getting knocked down i'm really surprised at how mage has been doing so far in this solo shuffle competition it just seems like maybe zico that wasn't whoa it's not the best spec for this composition or this competition <laughs> Yeah, uh, Mage definitely. I mean, we saw Raikou do pretty well when he had a rogue by his side, but right now Alec has a warrior by his side, but they're going for a big swap here onto Chas. Can they take him down? Chas is so low, he gets feared at 1% into the oh. war stomp, the game winning war stomp right there. That was okay. insane. And they actually, do, Joe coming in big right now. Look at that. Joe Fernandez taking the lead in the group against Waz, against Alec, against Swapsy. That fear out of the stun. Uh, and then that war storm from Fnobers, that was beautiful stuff coming in here. And now we're going to see it again. Uh, we got the Warrior Rogue going up against the Ellie Mage once again. And uh, Fnobers uh, definitely looking like he's picking up some wins here on Chaz. Absolutely. If he's already got three points, it's going to be hard for Chaz to catch up. There are two more. If he wins these next two, he can tie it up with, with Fnobers. But, I mean, it's looking really good so far, especially with this Ellie um, a mage composition. This might be pretty good against this melee cleave that the left team is playing. What do you think, Zico? Uh, I think, I mean, the thing is dampening can, uh, it ramps up so quickly here, so it all depends on uptime. If the, if the melee cleave gets good uptime on the mage or on the alley, uh, that's their kind of weak. Ooh, that was beautiful there by Fnobbers. Nicely read there with that Ursul's Vortex. He's going to deny Waz uh, that kidney shot that he wanted to go for, and now instead he's going to go for the kidney shot on Swapsy. Full blind as well gets thrown out, and uh, looks like Waz actually gets stopped here in his assault. The polymorph's coming out from Alec onto Waz, onto Joe Fernandez and now here comes Swapsy. Swapsy's been doing great damage here on that Ellie Shaman. Fnobbers tried to get a low Cyclone right there, but wasn't able to find it there in time, but still able to slow down the game and build that distance uh, between Swapsy and those melees. Yeah, you're really seeing that veteran skill come into play here. I'm loving the representation of players that we're seeing, not only within this matchup, but just in general for the entire solo shuffle competition. You, we've got players like Joe Fernandez that are just absolute veterans and staples in the AWC sort of community. And then we've got some new players sort of picked, just plucked from the ladder that we're seeing thrown into the competition as well. Um, I feel like this might be just like the hardest matchup so far, just in terms of absolute skill um, and veteran time that these players have spent in a competition environment like this. And uh, 
it's all kind of coming to a head right here. Only two matches left up, left in this round. Um, Alec definitely needs a point. Chaz definitely needs a point as well. But Fnobbers and Joe kind of have a, a comfy position right now in terms of pointage. So uh, we're seeing a lot of aggression with Wes going on to Fnobbers. Lots of pressure there, uh, but not really in trouble so far. Um, he's going to be going back to his healer. And we're we'll seeing what we can do here. I'm worried for Alec just a little bit, but he's got quite a few defensive stuff. Alex, uh, yeah, he's not in the worst spot right now. Joe, though, trying to get, trying to go for the kill here. Joe, can he do it? They got a full blind here onto Fnobbers, and that will be the ice block right there. And we could see his ice block was on cooldown from the previous game, so that is a UI bug. Uh, he did yeah. have that available, and uh, we can see here Alex still trying to kite it out. Still have a lot of pressure to deal with. Full kidney shot now onto Fnobbers here. Do they have anything to follow it up with? No blind just yet. Waz actually getting swapped to Lightning Lasso coming in. Big damage coming in here as well from Alec. Fnobbers actually getting kicked here. Chaz looking for the Cyclone. Gets wind shear there. Nicely done by Swapsy. And Joe finally will get slowed down here as well. Dampening at 44%. These rest of the roots, they don't have much to work with here. Who is going to fall somebody's about to get crushed right now here's the carry on spear this could just be it for swapsy but was once again taking a lot of damage there activates the faint trades out the banish opens up onto swapsy and he goes for the kick out of stealth right there onto fnobbers nicely done there and i think that is going to be it joe is hungry and joe no. will eat there it is yo Oh my god, BlizzCon champion Joe is back. I mean, this, this play after play, this guy's absolutely dominating. He's got four points the most in this matchup as well. Uh, and this is the last one, and he's going to be on this alongside Swapsy on his Ellie and Fnobbers playing that Druid. And this is, a, I mean, this is a solid team, so I feel like things aren't looking good, Zico, on the side of this right team. Right team? I don't know. I've been preferring, referring to them as left anyway, so <laughs> team right? <laughs> I mean, the team, right? They, they're RMD, and that's triple BlizzCon winner RMD you got right there. But on the left side, Joe and Swapsy won BlizzCon together, and they are backed by one of the best healers in the game. And this game is very interesting, because if Chas wins, he ties up with Fnobbers. If uh, Chas side wins, Waz also ties with Joe. So a lot on the line here. Who is going to be able to come out ahead? Joe opening up strong here with the fear and immediately going after the mage here. The mages haven't had a great time so far in the solo <laughs> shuffle. Uh, I feel like almost every mage has been struggling very hard. We saw Raikou uh, have a tough time earlier on, and now we're seeing Alec here as well, uh, kind of getting trained down in a lot of these matches here. But he has a rogue on his side, and uh, we all know the strength of that rogue mage uh, is very, very high. You can see Alex still taking a lot of damage here, trying to kite away. Uh, Swap's actually getting defensively blinded right there by Waz, uh, because right now there's no dampening. Dampening is about to start in a couple of seconds here, and uh, Waz might be able to get another blind for that. They're going after uh, Joe Fernandez here once again, taking a lot of damage. Alex pushing in, trying to go for CC. That might be uh, very painful for him. He's going for the Ring of Frost. Joe goes for the interrupt. And Joe will be able to shut it down. Yeah. And look at Alec now. He has no blink. He blinked in offensively. This could cost him big time. Alec needs to play the defense here. I feel like playing that dampening strategy is a lot better. But now he's pinned down. No blinks. No altered time for a few seconds. He polymorphs Joe behind the pillar. Nice uh, CC chain here from Alec. He does catch a big heal there. But still a very scary situation there for Alec. Yeah, no longer has that ice block. Few defensives left, though. He's still got that cauterize, still has a trinket. But, I mean, the pressure's certainly on for every single mage we've seen so far. And Alec is no different. We're seeing just so much pressure come up on him. Um, and it just seems like, you know, you kind of mentioned it, just mages not doing very well in general. But it seems like caster classes, uh, just for whatever reason, this competition isn't isn't well suited for them. Or maybe, it, maybe that's just my perspective in the limited matches that we've seen so far. Uh, Joe going down just a little bit. But, I mean, he's absolutely dominating so far within this match. So, gets his health up quite quickly again. Alec trying to get some, trying to get away from Joe. Just chomping down on his health. Got the polymorph out. Uh, got interrupted again. We'll see what he can do here in these next couple moments. But Alec certainly, uh, certainly feeling a little bit scared, Zico. Yeah, that was a nice altered time there by Alec Waz going for the kidney shot. They're swapping over onto Joe Fernandez. Can he take him down? Go dropping to about half HP here. Chas looking for the low cyclone. Gets it as well. Can they set something up out of this though? Doesn't look like they have any crowd control available. Alec right now with no combustion as well. Finally, Joe will reconnect. Joe will have full HP. Alec in a lot of trouble here. He has the ice block to work with. He's got the cauterize. Chas though, definitely feeling the pressure of that 46% dampening. But 
right, so it's Knobbers and Joe again in the kidney shot. Beautiful uh, damage coming in here. Waz just trying to play defense, trying to kite right now as he's getting blasted by Swapsy. Swapsy is just being left unchecked. Look at that, but 52%, 53% right now. So much damage right now. You cannot out heal this damage. It's going to be all about pressure and momentum. Who can find it? Alec has that combustion. They need to go for that one hit wonder. Who will they decide to go for? They have that combustion in their back pocket. Chaz getting swapped to pre-trank bubbles. He knows that he can't. He can't uh, tank that damage. He just trades out early. Joe actually trinketing here as well. Now swapping over to Waz. Waz dropping solo as well. Kiting with Alec. That was the combustion, but they left Chaz in the back line. But Chaz is just going to get dropped there. And Joe Fernandez in oh, the group God. of death as a warrior. Coming out with five wins. Knobber is going to be taking the win here uh, between the healers. And it's going to be a tie between Swapsy and Waz right there for that second place. Yeah, we've got a couple tiebreaker situations that we can talk about when we get to there. But, I mean, really the MVP of this match, super impressive, is Joe. We're going to be hopping into this next matchup. We're already on uh, the fifth round as oh. well. You can see here already, we got DK and Warlock, uh, Shadow Cleave, uh, a blast from the past right now, something we don't see too often. And uh, we, we got a Feral Mage Priest on the other side, Oscar already into the Ice Block. Every time we're looking at these mages, they're just dying here. And uh, Oscar, let's see how he's been doing so far. He's got one uh, point on the board. Judo Dump though, taking a lot of damage here. He gets gripped out from that... Uh, big barrier that he has he gets kicked he tries to blink away trinkets as well the uh, judo dump uh, is going to be able to survive i think behind this pillar 46 percent dampening right now to work with and uh, he should recover but oscar has got nothing he's been left alone here and uh, surprisingly the dk and the warlock I, I, they look like they're in the driver's seat here i am I don't know. I'm not surprised at all. Listen, I voted for Shadow in this matchup, okay? I, I'm a big fan of the DK. That's been my main forever. And I'm so happy to see Shadow with three points on the board here, loving the DK representation. Uh, but yeah, DK lined up with a Warlock. Definitely not a, gla a, a bad combo, especially with a BB oh. uh, backing you up with the Druid heals. But uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> the cast got knocked curse. down as I was making that. I, I just cursed him so bad, Zico. You oh, zoomed so, so well before you I came know. in there. I, uh, Wait, why did you, observers, why we did need you have to curse it? <laughs> we need to swap off this one. <laughs> can't watch this one anymore. I'm going to make them lose. But, um, now he's going to be pa uh, paired up with a, a mage. So with Habibi again. And then we've got the warlock and the druid on this on the right side here. And it's it's good to see good to see a DK. Good to see. We've seen a lot of warlock today. We've seen a lot of mage and uh, a lot of druids so there's not it's not like we're getting every single class it's kind of interesting how we've seen uh what what the pool is i wonder i wish uh next time it would be interesting if we could get just like a little bit more diversity i guess a little bit more even classes i know it's like hard to say but we'll see these compositions come out in the combinations that we're seeing today yeah we definitely have uh, more stuff that we haven't seen as well but uh, yep. right now judo dump definitely feeling that dk pressure and we got a mage dk cop i, I feel like there's no way I'm, well on the other hand you have a feral warlock so i really can't say who should win this but shadow no. right now <laughs> is taking some damage here from mercy and uh, tony as well doing a lot of work right now with that berserk active trying to get some momentum going but do you really want to pop the berserk this early is the question because you know dampening hasn't even started yet this is actually the point in the game where the healers are the strongest maybe uh holding on to your uh, biggest offense it could actually be a you know a play to make it kind of wait for a little bit of dampening to help uh, you know increase the, the damage of that blow but uh, he's gonna use it early on trying to get some momentum trying to trade out some uh, early defensives and we'll see if it pays off for him right now shadow though looking good so far here on that dk he's, he's the best he's looking like the best person in this whole <laughs> out of all six of these players so, uh but i do want to give a shout out to habibi as well on the side on the left team here uh you know they were allowed to say whatever they wanted for a comment to submit to us and all he said was outlaw is broken and i'm sure that he's gonna win over some fans with that comment uh, luckily, this is, I think, one of the first ones we've seen today with no outlaws in the matchup at all. Um, you know, obviously, we're still seeing those melee comp uh, melee class in with Pony backing it up here, but and Shadow as well. So we're going to be seeing, you know, a melee and a range, I think, for every matchup. It seems like that was done on purpose, I'm assuming, Zico. Do you know anything about that, if they made it even in terms of melee and, and range GPS on purpose? Or is, have we just been insanely lucky? 
No, I think they did hand select uh, and try to make the classes themselves that's represented even, yeah. but the group seating is completely random. Uh, so it's uh, it, it all depends what you get. You could have two outlaw rogues in one series. You could have no outlaw rogue in the next one. And uh, we uh, seeing Shadow right now. What is he gonna do here? Shadow no! gets war stomped. And uh, since we joined here, it's not been going too well here for Shadow. I, I feel like I, I was gonna say. I feel like I'm gonna blame you for that. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> oh my God! Did he die without using his AMS as well? Uh, no, I think he. I think he came back up after. It's hard to see because it, uh, the cooldown tracking with mm -hmm. the game resetting is. Uh, it's a little bit new tech here, um, but uh, yeah, Shadow. He's still looking okay though in terms of DPS. He's tied right now with him. Tony. Stop, stop, stop. All we're right. gonna stop talking about him so that we can, you know, we're not gonna curse him anymore, Zico. <laughs> but but Shadow just instantly running, charging straight towards the other team here, getting up some pressure, some early pressure in on Mercy and just feeling bad once again for all the caster classes in here. These melee are just absolutely relentless in that uptime. And you know, this should be their map here with it you know the, the kiting that they're allowed to do in terms of caster classes on this map and uh we're just seeing that aggression come in very very early on here so uh not a lot of chances left for these teams to get points this is the sixth matchup of this and it just seems like there's quite a few like you know judel dump he's already got four points a bb only has one so we could have some tiebreaker situations here uh but there's some clear winners already i would say zico in this round Absolutely. So far, we've been seeing a lot of, uh, you know, players kind of rise to the occasion and we got plenty of more matches to come here. This is only our sixth series uh, of the day. We got 18 of them. So we still got plenty of more to work through here. Every one of these players will be fighting through three different groups. So nobody's out yet, uh, but there's no loser bracket or anything like that. So once, uh, you know, you are in that bottom portion of the players and you played your matches, that is it. There's no more chances. And then tomorrow we'll be looking over at uh, North America. But right now, can uh, take uh, pay some attention to this match here? Because if Shadow and Tony, I know you didn't want me to talk about him, but if Shadow and Tony can pull through here, they will both actually guarantee themselves to at least be the top of this group. And they will be tied for it as well. So this is a very, very big one if they win this one. Because if they don't, then we have our first four-way tie between all the DPS will be tied in this group uh, for first place. So that's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out later. And right now, Mercy doing a lot of work here on the Tony. If Mercy can take him down, that is going to be the four-way tie here between the DPS guaranteed. Mercy has a lot to work with here. Still a decent amount of cooldowns to work with. He's got his port. He's got his unending resolve. He's got plenty to work with, and he's counterspelling Tony. He's playing Mage Warlock on Tolvir. I mean, this is the best shot he's going to get at tying things up. Yeah, most definitely. Time is uh, ticking very quickly as well. As we've mentioned so many times, dampening kicks in at a minute in this round, and we're already at 34%. So these these plays are happening so quickly. We're seeing Slappy Hands come out on Shadow. Lots of damage from that side. Mercy getting chipped down just a little bit. BB still still solid on mana as well, but he's still continuing to lose health. Mercy able to get that fear out as well onto the other team. And we're seeing just a little bit of defensive pressure come out. on out, come out. But we're just seeing health kind of just, you know, being lost on the side of Tony there. Maybe goes down. He's okay, though. Oh. Maybe not. I'm worried. I don't like this. I don't like this, Zico. I feel like I'm ca cur caster cursing people. I like being the host, <laughs> man. I don't like this. I don't like this role, man. It makes me feel bad. <laughs> Ooh, Oscar. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. This is this is how we feel. Now you know I, how, how it feels for us. <laughs> We're just constantly uh, cursing people and, uh, you know, replaying their worst moments when they mess up. No. Uh, but uh, right now, Mercy summoning the Tyrant here. This is his last Tyrant. We have 60% dampening. If that Tyrant connects, it is going to be lights out here. Can they do it? Judo Dump is kind of stranded there on the opposite side. Tony right now will be crossing the midfield back to his healer but that means they leave shadow uh, left in the shadows there of that pillar and i'm not sure if he's gonna like it over there tony still just trying to take down the fell guard here actually behind the pillar it does oh, get yeah. called back there with the eye of kill rog and uh, both teams actually taking a breather right now 71 percent damage i think this is a record for us i have 
Yeah, pretty close to it. I, I know this is definitely usually as high as we see it in the AWC, but that is what is so cool about this solo shuffle competition. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, this really is a new meta that we're kind of seeing unfold in front of us. So, you know, huge shout out to the WoW Esports team for coming up with this this competition format. I know it's a you know a lot of new stuff we're kind of working through on the casting desk as well as on the, oh. you know, the side of WoW Esports. So shout out to them, hearts in the chat, and Joodle Dump may just go down here the biggest points on the board and we may see him die oh. first in the sixth match absolutely no mana left here but he stays safe for just a little bit longer let's go to dip a little bit too though zico oh my goodness who's gonna fall there's no heals anymore 90 percent dampening anybody just breathes on judo dump he's gonna go down shadow is dangerously low oscar has got nothing i think oscar is gonna be the one who falls tony's all over him looking for the bite can he find it it's a race whoever dies first will get the point or will lose the point rather nice ray of hope coming out there on the uh, seed right now trying to keep it alive can he take somebody down but no it will be Tony and Shadow advancing in the group. That entire left side advancing wow. here from this group. Judo Dump with five wins as the healer. I believe that is the highest number, actually, of wins we've seen out of any healer uh, so far in the I competition. Think so uh, so Judo Dump only... almost. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 you go. I was going to say, I think Judo Dump is going to be uh, the first one to be, or the closest one to Super Teaser's, uh six wins achievement that he has uh, crowned for us. I think we actually saw Nixie get six six earlier on, but I think he's he's this, definitely the the highest healer in, in terms of points right now. So very yeah. intense game. It's, what's interesting about this format also is I feel like sometimes we may have seen a cross kill if it had continued to play out, but it's just like the first that dies is the team that loses. So, you know, it's kind of all or nothing with a lot of these games, especially with how quickly they've been moving. I mean, this is really, really interesting pace to see these players play at because I feel like a lot of them are kind of out of their element. Nobody really knows how a lot of these games play out, Zico. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> there, I mean, just look at the comp we saw now, Feral DK, who plays that, like, <laughs> uh, you know? <laughs> That's just not this something that fun. you see. Yeah, that's that's your combo on your DK. No. <laughs> Apparently, also that was a ninety-nine percent dampening um, mm. when they finally went down there. So yeah, very tough one. But we can take a look here, Zico, at some of the matches that we're going to be seeing coming up here. And this is the knockout stage series one. So we've got what that was. What the the I feel like they're going by so quickly. I'm not even keeping track well of what yep. number that was. These are the matches we've seen. Yeah, that, that was, was match all the six. matches that we've seen. That was match six. Okay, we're going through them so quickly. Uh, looks yep. like we've got Ven back as well. Yes, I'm going to be tagged in, and we're now going to be going to series two. So I think I was muted when I was trying to explain it, but the way this works is all of these players get three different groupings. So we just went through the first set of groupings, and now we're going into the second. So all new groups here. Now all these players will have uh, 18 rounds total that they're going to have a chance to play, as you can see here. We're going to go through Series 1, which we just did, now Series 2, and then, of course, Series 3. And the DPS and healers that earn the most points, those are going to be the ones that move forward. So, you know, if any of these players, Zico, had kind of a bad showing in that Series number 1, this is their opportunity to kind of regroup and uh, and also their opportunity to switch their spec. Like, if their spec didn't work out, like, even for these mages, I was thinking, like, maybe you want to go a build that's a little bit more consistent damage, like bringing, like, a Frost Mage or something like that that could actually be decent uh, with how fast dampening comes in. Yeah, absolutely. Or Arcane. <laughs> it could Maybe, be good, yeah. actually. If, if you see that you got put into a group with just a bunch of, like, cleaves, it, it would actually not be that bad because we've seen all, all. a lot of these fire mages just get trained down. So this could really be, you know, the tournament where you can see, like, some of these off-meta specs uh, get played more. It's all up to, up to the players here uh, to see what they want to do. And uh, what, what do you think about the first six matches we've seen so far, Ben? Um, now that we're also uh, shuffling the desk here, if you guys haven't uh, noticed. Yeah, everything's being shuffled up. We can see here a little bit of uh, replay or recap of what has happened so far. But yeah, I think Outlaw Rogues, no surprise, um, obviously did really well. I'm trying to think of what classes, like what classes really kind of shined uh, that were a bit surprising. Like, I honestly didn't think Fire Mage was going to be that great. Um, we saw most of the wins from the mages when they were grouped up with rogues, uh, which is kind of funny. Um, I think Yellow Rogue doing really well. These elemental shamans seem to be uh, doing quite well. Also, we have Trent on the Demon Hunter. Um, his performance was impressive. I feel like he's one of those players that could go far. Um, was there anything that kind of stood out to you uh, regarding the healers? 
Uh, regarding the healers, well, I was surprised to see uh, so many resto druids. Actually, I uh, I thought we'd be seeing you know mostly holy priests and holy paladin uh, being selected, but uh, definitely I uh, thought that the holy priest would be doing the best. But it looks like they're, they're all kind of evenly matched. Um, also, the Mistweaver did decent, actually. Banks on that Mistweaver did a, a pretty decent job, actually, picking up some wins. And I would say the most surprising thing, um, I, I kind of expected the melees to be dominating uh, in this uh, tournament. But I'm surprised to see the Ellie Shamans actually do as well as they have. Um, Swapsy had a really good showing. I feel like uh, Ellie Shaman in general, uh, actually, you can see Zipai right now blasting Blizzo, you know. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised to see the Ellie Shamans uh, do as well as they have. I wonder if we're going to see like, actually we, I, we have the groupings here so we can kind of see them. I was wondering if we're going to see one that's just like super heavy caster, or just like all melee. Because I've definitely been in solo shuffles myself where it's like that. There's like those <laughs> three rat paladins and then me on my arcane mage and just every group is just <laughs> rat paladin, rat paladin, you know, rat arcane uh, over and over and over. <laughs> um, so I wonder if we're going to see anything too crazy. But yeah, my, my, big, um, my big curiosity, I think is going to be if any of these players decide to mix up their spec like any of the elemental shamans decide to go enhance. Um, you know, if they're in a group that has a bunch of outlaw rogues, like maybe you would rather be the enhancement shaman than the elemental shaman. You're not as susceptible to being trained down or like going over to arcane, you know, or, you know, Galu playing affliction, you know, little things like that um, could be really big. Um, but yeah, it, definitely a lot of fun so far. I think that one of the things that has kind of surprised me about these, well, it hasn't really surprised me, but it's been kind of enjoyable just to see how fast like dampening has really come in and, um, speed up the intensity of the matchups yeah definitely and uh dampening i mean we uh, we didn't talk about it yet but if a match actually goes five minutes so that last match that we had went to 99 percent dampening if a match goes to five <laughs> minutes the game just ends and everybody gets zero points so uh you could maybe you know if you feel like you're behind you can't win or uh, if you have uh, you know enough points to advance if it's a tie you could try to be tactical about it so so it hard <laughs> it was zero healing <laughs> Yeah, but on Tolvir in the last game, I swear, I feel like they could have maybe tried to drag it out a little bit more, but uh, it would have been the same result, though. Um, but still, it's it's uh, it's fun to see. And yeah, for sure, uh, dampening, definitely uh, making things uh, very, very action-packed early on. And I mean, this is kind of a, a little bit of a preview of what we're going to see in Dragonflight as well, because in Dragonflight, we're getting rated uh, solo shuffles. So uh, this is, you know, kind of the right now the peak of uh, of competition that we have for the solo shuffle and it uh, might just become you know like the the big thing and a lot of uh, meta changes for that uh, later in dragonflight so that's going to be very exciting as well yeah i mean this is a little bit of a preview of what specs are going to be good and um how these players kind of adapt because it is a different a uh, little bit of a different play style i mean i think is one of those things that super t's kind of mentioned is aggression i feel like wins out a lot of the time especially with how fast dampening ramps up like of course you have to be tactical with your defensives but you really need to be a playmaker you need to be the one pushing the pace you can't be falling behind it can be really hard to recover so the more aggression you have um the more kind of offensive cc and offensive interrupts your landing it can really put your team ahead yeah definitely and uh, that's what's interesting i like when uh, you know aggression is what gets rewarded and this was one of my favorite matches right now that we're looking at look at this match this was this was the game where gelu and kasu both start look at gelu he's he should be dead here you know but they just turn it around onto trilla and they actually beat double outlaw as hunter lock and those are the kind of upsets especially for the healers where things can really get swung uh in uh, you know in your favor so uh, there's been a lot of interesting comp selection, a lot of interesting matches so far. And um, I feel like uh, we've seen almost every, we, I think we've seen every class, but we haven't seen every spec just yet. Uh, we haven't seen, I believe, Enhanced Shaman or Destruction Warlock. And it might be something else as well, but uh, now is the chance for these players to swap their spec. Um, if you're a healer, you can't swap because uh, you're only allowed to swap your uh, spec, not your role. So if you're a healer, you obviously can't just go and play triple <laughs> DPS and grief your whole team. But uh, if, you're, uh, if you're a DPS, you know, if you're an Ellie Shaman, you want to go enhance, you can. And uh, we got the Pickems live. Guys, go to pickems.gg, vote. And um, 
the healer matchup is Asgarath versus Epic Shot, Druid versus Priest. And then we got Z Pai and Jamie on the du- the yeah. double elemental shaman kings. And then we got Nixie six zero. Look at look at how many votes Nixie's getting. He's the only one who went six zero uh, in those first six set, uh, set of matches. And then of course Gelu, uh, one of the crowd favorites as well on that warlock. Yeah, this is really, really interesting. I think uh, one of the things about this particular matchup is all the compositions are going to be like pretty good. Um, the only thing that might be a bit questionable is the double elemental shaman, but <laughs> I feel like it could actually be good. And the reason why uh, is just because you can take down Gelu's pet. Like demonology warlocks are super susceptible to their felgar just dying instantly to uh, uh, elemental shamans. Like one elemental shaman can just bully a demonology warlock the entire game. Two. I, I don't know. I think Gelu's going to have to keep his pet just behind a pillar or hiding the entire game <laughs> or like something because uh, it's going to be an absolute nightmare during that particular match. But yeah, this one very evenly matched. A lot of big names here. Uh, I, I feel like Epic Shot is maybe the one that needs to prove himself just a little bit. But uh, let's see what he's able to do. We're going to hop into round number one. And it looks like we will be starting off with that double elemental shaman. Uh, just keep, a look, <laughs> keep an eye on this fell guard. Watch the explosion of Lava Burst. Got to target it down. Yeah, we're going to have to definitely pay some attention here. And uh, look at JJ already getting aggressive with the cross CC there. They got the fear. They got the blind sap. And uh, Jamie trading out the astral shift right now. Jamie caught up in the kidney shot. So far, not a bad trade. Asker uh, actually didn't have to use his trinket. Trades out the nature swiftness. Holds on to the iron bark. Things are looking uh, actually pretty decent here for the double Ellie's. I mean, considering what's been uh, traded offensively on the other side, but compositionally, we saw Rogue Lock uh, with a Demon Warlock actually do pretty well in the AWC. But look at Nixie taking some heat here from those double Ellie Shamans. And I mean, if you're going up against double Ellie Shaman, the two scariest Shamans got to be z and Jamie for sure here in Europe. Oh, all right. Well, this is interesting. I feel like Gigi uh, has actually done quite well on that Priest playing really aggressive. So you know, zero percent, <laughs> um, you know, kind of prediction rate. I, I don't know. We'll have to see. I feel like I have faith. Uh, that they're actually able to get really, really aggressive and do well on this match. Jamie right now, getting kind of pressured away. As you can see, dampening already at about 15% in this match. Mana for both these healers are relatively even. And just seems like, I mean, at this point, Galu and Nixie, their, their main, their main <laughs> uh, object in this matchup is just go after one of these elemental shamans. Go after whoever's kind of pushing in, who's getting in your face. Just try to kind of swat them away from Galu allowing Gelu to get out that consistent damage. Nixie's going to be extremely hard to take down. So as long as he can stay alive, um, it's going to be really, really important. And he can kind of be that playmaker for the team. It's why Outlaw is so strong. GG getting blasted back to the pillar. But this is the boon of the Ascended trying to get aggressive. They're actually just going after Nixie. They stun him up. Big blast of damage. He's going to trade out his trinket and that feint to stay alive. But these are the aggressive plays uh, from the Holy Priest that I really, really like. They're able to force out some of those cooldowns with that extra hit of damage. And that could be the difference for picking up some of these points. Yeah, and uh, I figured out the name for this comp. And we're going to call it Cowboy Cleaves because uh, we got lassos for days here. Jamie just did send it out there. Full blind coming in on Asgarath. They got a Hex here as well. But look at z though. z how is he going to stay alive here? They stun up <laughs> Asgarath here as well. And uh, z is still dropping initially low. 43% dampening. He just can't survive. Asgarath going for the Tranquility Bubble here as well. Trying to maybe immune some crowd control and get some extra heals out with that Iron Bark. But that was everything Asgarath had. They need to find a kill right now. There's the Cap Totem. There's the Lightning Lasso. Gets interrupted. Decimating both the second Lasso coming in here from the Cowboy Cleave. Can they take somebody down though? They hex Gelu. Lava Burst coming in here onto Nixie now. Actually, a lot of coordination coming in, but look at Jamie. Jamie's flailing to stay alive right now. Has the astral shift, but they will survive again here. And there will be, I think, one final opportunity potentially for the double Ellie's to make something happen. I don't know if Zipai can do anything at this point. He goes for the Fleshcraft. Gelu, though, as well, just needs to stay alive here. Actually, Yellow's dropping way too low right now, 62% dampening, and I can't believe it, but everybody is still alive, man. No I know, oh, but up for long! He's gonna go ahead and try to get away, but he's getting punished uh, by no that way. elemental shaman flame shock no dispel. Yellow trying to keep him alive, but she's just 10% health still behind the pillar. Nixie at the no same way. time, though, it looks like he will get dropped. The double elemental shaman dream. Actually, can he keep Nixie alive? So that, that's one thing to consider. And one thing I wanted to mention when we were watching kind of that last uh, round of the last game play when we went to dampening 
um you you stay alive like if that pod had survived yeah. and the death knight had gone down it would have actually been the team with the pod that survived so these kind of cheat death mechanics like the guardian angel can be super potent um, and actually pull off wins like i've actually had games myself where i've lost where like i've taken down a holy priest and he's just sitting there healing and then i die like a few moments before the guardian spirit would have actually ended so uh Definitely something to pay attention to, and I wonder if it's something that these players have really considered as kind of like an extra insurance policy for winning these games. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And we saw that as well with Necrolord, we saw it with the pod, and now with the Guardian Spirit almost paying dividends, but they did take down Nixie as well. And I'm just shocked to see the double Ellie Shaman actually picking up the win there and uh, kind of setting the pace because Roguelock Priest is definitely one of those comps that you expect to actually do really well, but they do find that swap and they will be able to take down uh, the kill there but now we see ellie warlock and right now jamie is going to be the one in a lightning lasso here from his former team at zpi now looking to swap to asgraf though nixie's going in nixie's uh, double o uh, six and o dream has already been crushed in this series here but he could still can't be greedy uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Nixie, come on, man. They had to put him in his place right there. Uh, after going 6-0, he was getting a little bit uh, too confident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, going 12-0, it's, it's, we need a little bit more drama in these games. So uh, we'll see right now. Gelu in a kidney shot right now as Nixie's trying to kind of swat him away. <laughs> Jamie and Zipai just wrangling each other up with lightning lassos. And it kind of is like, I mean, out of all the things in this matchup, of course, like, it, you know, everyone's competing for themselves. But I always feel like when I play solo shuffle, it's when I go against the same spec. Like if I have another Frost Mage in my game, I have to beat them. Like that's my number one objective. <laughs> so I think that's probably what Jamie and Zipi are thinking. Like they want to best each other. And I wonder if they're going to try extra hard to shut each other down just because of that. Yeah, the, the, the class envy, it's a exactly, beautiful yeah. thing in World of Warcraft. We've all felt it. And right now, Jamie is actually feeling it. Zipai doing quite a, mild, a decent amount of damage. Asgraf's chilling in the sap. No trinket, no way out. Boon of the Ascendant coming out here. They're going after Jamie. They're going after Gelu as well. And anybody who steps in JJ's line right now will be a target. But now here comes the swap. Big damage coming out onto Nixie. Gelu uh, will recover here. It looks like but Jamie's going to be the one who takes the damage. He goes for the lasso, but it's not going to be enough. Zipai will take the win there. But... He did have the rogue on his side. I feel like fighting the, you know, with the warlock against the rogue. I feel like you have the edge there uh, if you got the rogue on your side. <laughs> I'd have ever thought that, like you know, <laughs> warlock elemental shaman has been such a classic composition throughout just World of Warcraft's history. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. Because now we're swapping or swatching, uh, swapping. Oh, I can't talk. We're <laughs> switching and swapping roles uh, with Zipai and Jamie. Now it's going to be Jamie with the Outlaw Rogue and Nixie, and Zipai with that Warlock. So let's see what they can get done. Both these healers tied up here as we go into round number three as well. Uh, we'll see who can kind of be the playmaker for their team. If everything was to kind of go as expected, this is where Jamie would kind of pick up a win and tie things up here. Let's see if Zipai can shut that down. Yeah, this would be a big win here for Zipai if he can get this one. It's going to put him ahead uh, in this group. Gelu, however, uh, still looking to pick up his first win. So he definitely needs this one right here as well. Jamie actually taking a lot of damage right now from Zipai. Zipai with that power infusion. Boon of the Ascendant coming in. Big hits coming in here, actually, from the Caster Cleave. Decimating bolts getting lobbed in now as well from Gelu. Everybody is kind of working here on that pillar on the side of Asgarath and Jamie. And Lightning Lasso coming out. Jamie just trying to play defensively. War Stomp into a Cyclone there onto Zipai. Actually gets interrupted, I believe. Full Sap onto JJ. But look at Jamie. He's taking so much damage here once again. Even though he's the one with the crowd control on his side. Jamie again at 50%. Nice cap totem there by Zipai around the corners there. And now finally everybody does recover. And it will be Zipai here on the back foot. But JJ still with decent amount of heals here in his back pocket. We're only at 7% dampening. But that number will go up extremely fast. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of surprising how fast it goes up, especially if you're a healer. All of a sudden, your stress just goes through the roof in just a matter of, uh, you know, moments. First couple of minutes, everything's fine. And then, you know, minute two, minute three, things are just absolutely unstable. Right now, Jamie getting a little bit low. So we'll see if Zipai can pick up a win here. This would be massive. Jamie down to around 30% health. Gelu and Zipai just pushing in, trying to take him down. And it looks like Asgath might be able to recover him right now with the Tranquility. 
like the healing should be enough. GG's going to be pushing in as well, potentially looking for a full fear. Can he find it? Potentially get the double. It doesn't look like he's going for it. He gets stunned, potentially into a hex, but there is a decurse available. So uh, Jamie's just not even going to go for that. Just wanted to shut down the stun, wanted to avoid the fear. Now kind of repositioning far away from Asgrath. Nice axe toss Ooh. into a double fear. There's no tremor totem. Bit of a damage swap here on a Nixie. He's got the Cloak of Shadows and has to trade it. Now Nixie's actually kind of a vulnerable target here. That dude. Yellow and Zipai and GG are playing this one incredibly well. This is, it, it looks so well coordinated in this game. Yeah, I wonder if they're on the voice comms here. They have the option to. Uh, JJ sitting through a blind here at the 38% dampening, but still able to keep his team alive. Here comes the boon of the Ascendant. Nixie with no Cloak of Shadows. Look at him. He's stuck in the midfield. Here comes the damage. Can they take him out? This is a big moment here. Asgraf trading out no the Nature Swiftness, the Iron Bark, everything. But is it going Nixie. to be enough? Nixie, so low here. This is an important win here for Gelu and Zipai. Can they take it? JJ pushing in, looking for the fear. He wants to get the double with that Tremor Code and being available. Can they buy? the kill here he goes for it right now maybe jj looking for the kill potentially onto nixie with the boon of the ascendant finally gonna time out and nixie will get crushed unbelievable yeah that, that, that's crazy um i just want to remind everyone that when we looked at like kind of the predictions here people put zero percent win for a gg over asgrath so Really kind of mm -hmm. stepping up. I, I said he was the one that had to kind of prove himself. He's up right now, two to one. There's still three rounds left to go, so an opportunity for Azriot to come back. But definitely a nice performance so far. And Zipai is definitely the one who's kind of stood out in this group uh, so far. Okay, so here we go. Uh, things are a little bit different now. Um, Azriot's only 78%, still quite high. Uh, but at least, you know, some people give you some credit. Uh, but yeah, Zipai, Zico, um, is looking really kind of like the standout uh, person in this group so far. Absolutely. Zipa has been playing a phenomenal game so far, and uh, it looks like he might be able to keep it up that way. He's got the Rogue on his side once again. He won with the Warlock on his side. If he wins this, uh, I'm pretty sure he will be the first place in this group. And uh, Super T is right now in shambles here as we see Asgarath uh, being his top healer pick for the tournament down right now in this Must series. be really rough, yeah. Yeah, Super T's. If he could say something back right now, I'm sure he would have a witty comment, but he's just going to have to take it. <laughs> uh. All right. <laughs> it's not over uh, until it's over. That's uh, some wise words here from uh, Super T's. But we'll see. Uh, indeed, Zipai right now looking to take his fourth win. Can he do it? Gel right now will be the target of choice here for Nixie. And Nixie going 6-0 and zero and right now struggling with just one win. Uh, he's going to need to pick up this one then. Uh, definitely. Gelu, though, on the back foot entirely is going to have to trade out the, uh, his defensive wall in order to stay alive. Unending resolve. So... Uh, that's kind of a big win here for the side of Asgath, Nixie, and Zipai. Um, as Gelu is kind of in their main target of the match, he portals away, trying to create some distance. Goes for the coil on Zipai, but he's getting blasted right now by Jamie. Jamie just going for the lightning lasso on Zipai, just trying to shut him down the best he can. Big damage out on Gelu, and GG is kind of struggling to stabilize. And if GG could pick up this win, that would be massive. This is something that Jamie needs as well. Otherwise, Zipai is going to have a commanding lead. Um, here with four wins in this game or 20% dampening right now. Nixie moving forward, continuing the pressure on the Gelu, but I think Gelu should be able to portal away relatively soon. It is off cooldown, so he repositions. Great kiting so far, but be really difficult to kite an outlaw rogue. Nixie's just going to go for the vanish. And oh no, Gelu's pet's dead. This is an absolute nightmare. If he cannot get a fell guard, I really feel for him here. Z5 blasting that away, and that is going to be like a main pressure point. Honestly, if I was a demonology warlock, Playing against Jamie and Zipai on Elemental Shaman, that would probably be my biggest nightmare. Uh, if he can get the pet, it's massive. But without that, I mean, Gelu is kind of just a sitting duck in this matchup. And it looks like he will get dropped. I mean, that is just worst case scenario and something that can easily happen. So a lot of that is Asgrath and GG have to commit a lot of resources to keep that pet alive. Because if they let it fall, uh, there's not much Gelu can do. Yeah, and uh, all of a sudden, things are looking to shape up here. We're starting to see kind of who is pulling ahead in the group. Uh, Zipai looking absolutely fantastic right now. Asgarath and JJ still tied between the healers here. And uh, we'll see. Uh, somebody could go 4-2, uh, or they could tie up as well uh, between the healers. So we're going to need to keep an eye on that. And right now, I think the second place uh, for the DPS is really the main point of contention here. Nixie 
uh, right now holding on to that spot, but not looking too good. He's playing a rogue uh, druid and warlock. Let's see if they can take down this cowboy cleave. So if they can do it right now, Gel is going for large amounts of damage, summoning that uh, fell lord. Uh, let's see if, if it can actually land on anyone. Are they going to be able to kite it? Uh, it's getting a few hits off, uh, decent damage here on the Z5, but at the same time, Nixie uh, pushing forward, trying to get that pressure onto Jamie. Double Elemental Shaman once again, but this time with a Priest, and they are just blasting Gelu in the midfield. He's maybe overstayed his welcome uh, with the kidney shot from Nixie. It is going to get shut down just a little bit, but as soon as that fades, <laughs> they got to go, and I feel like Asgrath as well needs to be very careful in the middle of the map. All of these uh, Lava Bursts coming in from these Double <laughs> Elemental Shamans could just be an absolute nightmare to deal with, but at the same time, Jamie is just so incredibly low. Going for a Hex, can he find it? I think he might be able to stabilize here. GG in the Cyclone. Getting a lot of cr crowd control on the Priest. Asgrath playing a lot more aggressive than we normally see. Really trying to create some plays here uh, for his team and set up some CC. Yeah, but all of this was before dampening really started kicking in. Now they don't have these cooldowns to work with. Asgard, no trinket, and uh, we are <laughs> we are only going up. You know, dampening just started. We're already at twelve percent. Look at Jamie right now uh, in a kidney shot, starting to feel the pressure here already. JJ actually in a cyclone, and while Asgard was going for uh, that cyclone, look how much pressure they got. It's going for the incap roar as well. Nixie though, oh, dropping so down to low as well. Jamie's so low. Can they take him down? And Nixie really needs this win right now to try to get that second place at least for the dps he really really needs this win bash coming in onto jj nixie though getting blasted there's the lightning lasso huge pressure coming in here from the cowboys can they take him down with that lasso we'll see jamie right now going for the lava burst gets caught up in the kidney shot how is he going to stay alive Ascraft gets more crowd control jamie flesh crafting he has the astral shift i believe might yeah there it is he will send it and he will use that grounding totem as well buying himself just a couple of seconds but will a couple of seconds be enough lightning lasso coming out onto nixie no cloak of shadows on nixie as well so Nixie could definitely go down as well. Zipa is free casting right now, blasting away. And Nixie, I don't know, he might have overstayed his welcome right now. They're actually swapping to Asgraf. He goes for the Tranquility. There's a full kidney shot onto Jamie. JJ is pushing in here, looking for crowd control as well. But JJ just needs to spam out heals here onto Nixie, or onto Jamie rather. And it's still, Jamie is just so low. Another Warsman oh. coming in here, and Jamie will fall. Nixie will be able to pick up that win. I present a now this, this is a really interesting match. Um, Z5, if he can win this one, he'll be able to go five, uh, five uh, over one on Jamie. So that would be a very impressive performance. It is going to be the Elemental Shaman uh, with the Demonology Warlock and the Restoration Druid. So uh, definitely a solid comp. I'd say both these teams have kind of more standard comps that you would see. Uh, kind of on the ladder so we'll see who can actually pull ahead on this one uh, i think the main vulnerability in this match probably yellow's pet so really want to see asgrath do a good job keeping that alive he did it in the last game um and that could be something that you know ultimately earns him enough points in this match so this is a big one for asgrath as well as z by here yeah this is uh definitely a really big one and uh, we, we're gonna see here if nixie wins it he will be able to tie for first if z by wins it it's going to help him secure that first uh, for DPS. So there's a lot on the line here. And Gelu as well, actually. If uh, Gelu wins it, he will tie for second with Nixie. So there's a lot of uh, tie scenarios here. JJ, though, getting blasted here behind the pillar. But he still has at least that minute of safety with no dampening where he can get some work done on that healer. And uh, he needs to make it count because dampening is coming here any second now. Only 10 seconds away, and Nixie's still not top. Nixie had to trade out his trinket there as well as his vanish. Goes for the sap there as well. Now, will this aggressive play pay off here? Jamie taking huge amounts of damage, actually, Ooh. while they're going for that offensive CC chain. This is fantastic situation here for z -Pi. Yeah, I mean, definitely want to be picking up those wins. Jamie does recover, though, and is in a decent position, but z -Pi playing very aggressive. Trying to land the, the interrupts on the heels. Jamie right now with a kind of a counter assault. And one thing you can do as Elemental Shamans as well is go after the Fire Elemental. So that's another pet that they have to kind of look after. Elemental Shaman without his Fire Elemental does significantly less damage. And that's something the Elemental Shamans can look for. Nixie getting it blasted and deleted. A huge swap there early on in the game. Really didn't expect that, but such an interesting lobby. z and Asgrath, obviously the winners here. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, 
really, really beautiful performance by Zipai. Didn't really expect him to pull that far ahead, but you know, such a phenomenal elemental shaman. Uh, it, it was great to see. Yeah, Zipai definitely best in the competition in this one. Askarath uh, coming back in a big way after that tough start, but we have no time to talk about that last series. It's done and dusted, and we are already 38% dampening. We got Dakroth and Shadow here playing a Warlock. I think Dakroth is a UA Warlock. I believe he's the only UA Warlock, or Affliction Warlock, rather. There it is. And uh, he ports in, goes for the Hall of Terror. We got the Ellie Rogue on the other side here next. Actually, my top healer pick, so this could be Karma Swapsy. coming in here. Big, but Swaps is getting dropped immediately here. What is going on? Immediate damage coming in. And uh, that, what? Affliction Warlock is in the lead in this group, man. What's happening here? Affliction Warlock is actually back. Like, it's back in a big way. <laughs> and in solo <laughs> shuffle, it can be really strong. Um, so uh, I think the main thing about it, you have a lot of raw damage. It can be really annoying against certain things. Like, I feel like the, the problem uh, a lot of Affliction Warlocks run into is some of the comps you fight can be kind of a disaster and kind of counter you, like a Demon Hunter, for example. You fight against a Demon Hunter, uh, you're going to have a bad time because they can just reverse magic all of your bursts. But in a format like this, I could actually see Dakarot doing pretty well. If people aren't, like, perfectly coordinated to actually take them down, uh, in terms of defense, they can keep themselves alive quite well with their drain lives and stuff like that. So uh, I think Dakroth could actually do uh, decently here, but this is a really scary composition. <laughs> Unholy Death Knight, Outlaw Rogue. Uh, this is the kind of composition you would expect to just rip into an Affliction Warlock. Let's see if they can actually stay on target. Yeah, already Dakroth forced to run, but he still has the unending resolve. Ooh, might have spoken too soon. Classic cast of curse coming in there for Dak. I'm sorry, uh, but uh, let's see if he can get some counter pressure with that anti magic zone also uh, being traded out there uh, on the other side. And they do have a gouge here onto Zank. No follow up on that though. Swapsy still taking a lot of damage here. And uh, Dak and Swapsy right now definitely delivering the heat, but uh, they need to get some distance. And of course, uh, this map right here, the Coliseum, is fantastic for building that uh, momentum, building that distance between the melees and the casters. So this is definitely a, a nice map if you are the caster team, but we'll see if they can pull ahead. Right now, Zank in a crowd control. Swapsy taking a lot of damage here next, doing uh, some work here as well on that healer. And we can see Swapsy uh, still dropping dangerously low. Iron Bark not going to be enough. Actually gets the nature swiftness there as well. But they have a coil there onto Zank. Swapsy still on 50% HP. And this is the tough part about the Solar Shuffle. you got to trust your healer. You're most likely not on comms. And this is where we can see those defensive overlaps come through, which might cost you the game. I mean, it's really scary when that happens as well. Um, especially because dampening is just so unforgiving. Chances are your cooldowns are not going to be able to rotate back up, but you can see the pressure here on the mana bar of Next already down to around 50%, but relatively easier. And even actually with Zank, there's a full blind. It's got Relentless, so there's no way out of that blind that they can land a sap out of that. Uh, they are going to be able to. I was going to say he's too far away, but you know, Outlaw Rogues have a decent amount of mobility. He's able to connect the sap and uh, continue the damage, but there's just no pressure right now uh, for the side of Shadow and Trimaz. Uh, unfortunately, they just can't connect to the target. This is a really large map, uh, so fighting against these double caster comps uh, can be kind of devastating um, for the Outlaw Rogue as well as the Unholy Death Knight. And uh, this Ooh. rot pressure is really setting in here, Zico. You, you can see the Elemental Shaman, the Affliction Warlock. The amount of pressure just overall they can put out is just so immense. Yeah, and look at Chatter right now, though, doing uh, uh, actually taking a lot of damage oh. here. What? <laughs> Dakroth just pops off, kills the priest. He's going for the double kill, but this is res, the situation maybe he's we're a talking about. Legendary. Yeah, oh yeah, he could be, he'd be playing the res legendary as well. And oh, he also is a, a guardian right now. And actually, is he? I feel like, oh no, uh, there we go. Okay, there we go. It ended. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't have the stacks, but uh, yeah, just those swaps on the priest, just devastating. I think a lot of that comes down to the map as well. <laughs> just super, uh, such a big map. Um, so it could be really, really difficult against those compositions. Um, but yeah, uh, look at Dakaroth. Uh, three three <laughs> wins this one, uh, winning this group so far over at round six. And that Affliction Warlock really representing, like you said, the only Affliction Warlock uh, in the European tournament. Um, and he's been doing a great job so far. Uh, it's definitely nice to see that Warlock representation. 
yeah, he's been popping off. And I mean, those drain lives at the end of that one, uh, securing the kill, almost getting himself a triple kill with that one. And uh, we can see Shadow right now in a sap here. Trimaz looking for the opener, going to go after Dak. Immediately gets howled away, and Dak already building up that rot pressure. And the nice thing about the solo shuffle, actually, with the Affliction Warlock, is that uh, you, you get dampening so early that you actually will have that spread pressure coming in. If you can just survive long enough, that's when you can get things going. Now he's playing with a DK on his side and a Priest. And Zankt and Next are battling for that healer spot. Everybody else is battling for that second spot behind Dak right now. If Dak wins this one, uh, he's uh, pretty much going to be guaranteed to be first in this group. So we'll see if he can pull that off. Right now, he's doing a lot of work here. Shadow just trying to connect to his target. But at least now, both teams have a melee on their side. So they can't utilize the map uh, that much at least. And we're going to see if Shadow can actually stay alive right now. He's still taking huge hits of damage here behind the pillar. Dampening just setting in. He will catch a few big heals there from next. And that should be enough to keep Shadow alive for now. Yeah, it looks like he will be able to keep himself alive. But he could be a vulnerability too. Death Knights kind of rely on the self-healing that they can do um, with that Death Strike. So if they go after Shadow a little bit later on, you can see Swapsy just dragging Shadow away. Now getting Swapsy in a kidney shot. This is exactly what I like to see. Swapsy and uh, Trimaz are actually pretty well coordinated here. Swapsy just uh, baiting the Death Knight, super far away from the healer. Trimaz comes back with a kidney shot. He can get the dismantle on him as well to prevent those Death Strike heals. And I feel like Shadow in this particular match is going to be very vulnerable. So Dakar is going to have to kind of pop off in this one, get a lot of pressure out, uh, and give Shadow a little bit of breathing room because he just cannot connect oh. to his target, and he might just get dropped right now. Shadow taking huge hits right there. He gets disarmed there as well to deny some of those death strikes. Flashcraft's coming out. Trimaz trying to lock him down, but he actually does get topped. Uh, next, uh, doing some uh, wizard work right now on that priest. Dacto getting swapped to. Trying to stay alive here. He still has the unending resolve to work with. Goes for the Howl of Terror. Zank actually dispelling that unstable affliction. Dacro reapplying it. And he is spamming out those dots right now. Shadow is taking immense pressure next. Trying to keep him alive. I think that Guardian proc there for sure. Traded out with the Icebound Fortitude. And uh, Shadow will survive again. That was an extremely close call. I really feel for next at this point. Like, you got to have a heart attack when you're playing these healers. Uh, when dampening is ramping up the way it is. Shadow trinketing out from a blinder, I believe, actually. So he has no uh, breakers now. The next time he gets kidney shot, he's stuck in this. And it's 43% dampening. Might be a mistake from Shadow, actually, to trinket that blind uh, when he is that main target. And Zank right now still feeling the pressure, but dealing with it pretty well. Uh, on that restoration, Druid gets strangulated. Dak going for the kill is moving in for a half terror. Potentially gets a nice double there. Zank actually trinketing out, using the bark skin as well, trying to stay alive. Swaps in now trinketing as well. Everybody is down, basically every single defensive, and it really comes down to the wire here. Anybody can take it, and I feel like if the Affliction Warlock team can just stay alive, they have the edge here. Shadow just needs to stay alive and just not take unnecessary risks. Dakrov is just rotting everything down, and Trimaz oh. might just fall behind the pillar. Lightning Lasso coming out, but Affliction Warlock at 60% dampening this just is looks crazy. to be king. This looks so much fun. Dakrov is just having a field day right now. He signed up, and he said on Twitter that, yeah, I think I'm just going to send the Affliction Dream. Probably won't go that well, but I'm just going to try to have fun with it. And right now, it looks like he's having fun. Zang, he's going to get <laughs> crushed. That's like... That's what you love to see. That's like the, you know, that's the iconic Affliction Warlock. Just everyone is dead. Everyone's 10% health. <laughs> no one can recover. And that's one of the things. I mean, Solo Shuffle kind of gives you that opportunity, especially with how fast Dampening comes in. It can be really uh, kind of difficult to stabilize yourself. And Dakarath, I, I think, is doing a really good job. Um, I think in terms of map, like I said, this map is really good for him. It gives him a lot of opportunity to kind of kite around. Uh, and he's been kind of the all-star of this particular game. I definitely don't envy <laughs> the healers that have to try to keep up with the amount of damage he's able to put out in this match. Yeah, definitely. I think there's a lot of people now with soul, with rated uh, solo shuffle coming in Dragonflight. I think there's going to be a lot of people respecting Affliction and uh, getting ready for it. And uh, I mean, for good reason here. Dak so far four wins, only played. Uh, well, if he wins this, he's going to be at five wins. Dak actually might be going. Yeah, he's won every round so far. So Dak Ooh. actually has the opportunity here to go for our second six and zero at Affliction Warlock. Sure, we kind of expected it maybe from a rogue, but. If an affliction warlock can pull that off, that would be absolutely insane, man. 
Yeah, no doubt about it. He's actually playing Death Bolt as well. So when that Death Bolt goes off, it's going to be a huge hit of damage. And I, I like that adaptation. I feel like in Solo Shuffle, it's really nice. Because people aren't playing, like, you know, perfect communications. People aren't going to be making perfect cooldown trades and have everything perfectly tracked. Um, there's more room to, like, kind of bring in these kind of oddball abilities like the Death Bolt and try to just sneak a win, right? Like, you leave Dakarath alone, he gets the Death Bolt. Then all of a sudden, he can just close out the game by himself. So uh, I, I like those picks. I think that's something, uh, you know, as people get more familiar with Solo Shuffle, um, they're going to be kind of experimenting with their builds and what talents are good and what abilities can be used to just pick up kind of a cheesy win. Because getting a surprise victory, getting like a cheesy win, uh, it, it's a viable strategy and something you can kind of reliably do in this game mode. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's just been fun to see and uh, look at everybody else trying to compete for that second place here on the uh, on, for the DPS. Healers are all tied up. So this group has, so far has been very, very evenly matched. It's been fun to see. Uh, of course, uh, aside from the outlier here uh, with that Affliction Warlock, everybody else is uh, pretty much tied up here. Swapsy and Trimaz. Uh, will be in a pretty good spot. If Shadow can win this one, he's going to start picking up those wins that he needs to maintain that lead. Shadow is definitely looking pretty good so far. And that's another thing, right? When we did our pick -ems, not a lot of people expected DK to do well. I actually, uh, one of the big brains who predicted DKs to be doing well. And so far, I think Shadow's been uh, doing a great job here. And we're going to see if he can keep it up. 30% dampening right now. Shadow looking for that third win in this group. Can he find it? Dak actually finally being pressured here, taking a lot of damage there from Shadow. They're going to connect onto him, but kidney shot coming out from Trimas. Trimas doing a good job here, just peeling for his Warlock. Defensive blind again there onto Shadow Zank, taking huge hits here from Swapsy as well. And Swapsy been having a quiet game so far, but finally uh, starting to show some signs of life here uh, with that LA Shaman as well. Dak now porting away, running for his life here, but Swapsy trinketing out of the Cyclone, trying to get a Aggressive Dak though with huge pressure, but look at Trimaz. He's got the Cloak of Shadows and the Evasion, so he will recover, but not a lot of healing available right now. And that path is hitting him from behind. Trimaz, you need to face it with the Evasion. The evasion does time out, and Trimaz will go down. And as soon as we mentioned the possibility of a 6 0 for Dak, he gets cast a cursed immediately here. But Shadow will at least be uh, picking up that second place in the group uh, for now. Still got one more round to go. Yep. One more round to go. Who's going to need this win? I feel like for Zanked, it's going to be a big one. But, man, we re really saw the Death Knight and the Rogue struggle uh, on Maldraxxus to you know connect to Dakarath uh, or Swapsy. The thing is, like, you want to go after the Affliction Warlock to try to just limit his damage. He's kind of a vulnerable target as well. But if you leave him alone um, and you can't actually connect and you just decide, okay, well, we can't actually get on Dakarath. He's cutting too well. This map's too big. We go after Swapsy, that's when the game gets really unstable and the Affliction Warlock can just pop off. So <laughs> it's almost like you have to go after the Warlock, even though it can be difficult, but he just might get dropped in the opener. Can Dakar survive? He's going to be training out the Unending Resolve. Big drain life. So that was a really big kind of power play there by Shadow and Trimaz to catch them off guard. It almost worked. Dakar the next uh, overlap, basically all the defensive cooldowns to stay alive. Uh, definitely wasn't a bad play um, as they're still in it. Yeah, definitely, and and now they have a chance to bite back, but th that was Shadow actually kind of surprising everybody with that Strangulate right there onto Dak, uh, kind of denying him the port, denying him a lot of that Warlock mobility, uh, which is, uh, you know, the main uh, way for an Affliction Warlock to survive, building that distance and trying to just uh, stay away from the fight while dealing that pressure, and now with that opening, they will have, you know, big damage hits available before that next unending resolve. Dak might not even get another unending resolve here. Swapsy, though, going to be the target of choice. He's still got a lot of the defense to work with. Immediately has to trade out the Astral Shift as next is sitting through that crowd control chain. They will have a blind, potentially with a sap as well here for Trimaz. If he waits uh, about uh, 15 more seconds on that Outlaw Rogue, next in a Strangulate, Trimaz trying to connect onto his target actually trades out the cloak of shadows there offensively that is not what you want to be doing against a warlock look at him trim has now in a lot of trouble uses the vanish defensively can't go for the blind sap with it and he will potentially get pulled out shadow. of stealth here he's a shield shadow, shadow though left alone in midfield he gets counterspelled on his fleshcraft trying to stay alive behind the pillar he has two healing over time effects he's death striking some of these pets here finally catches a big heal here but with that, as soon as that cloak got used from Trimaz, all the pressure in the world just happened uh, from Dak and Swapsy. And now uh, they still have a lot to work with here. Crowd Control Chain is incoming here. 
They actually don't have a blind though to work with, only a gouge and a stun onto next. And now Dak once again here looking for the pressure. Trima has still got about a minute left on that Clock of Shadows van. Yeah, it's quite some time, but if he wants to play defensive, he, he really can. Uh, I do worry right now for Shadow and Trimaz if they're going to just play aggressive in the middle of the map. Maybe they could take down Swapsy. All three of them are just going for it. They're playing really, really aggressive right now. Swapsy has to stay alive, but next in a prime position. He can use the life grip if he wants to. He's got the Guardian Spirit up to kind of bolster his healing. Aegis is actually traded out by Swapsy as well to just kind of trade out for that Abomination Slim. I think that's a really good play. I just avoid getting cheesed down by Abomination Slim. You put on the Eternal Aegis. Uh, I, I like that adaptation there by Swapsy, but we are at 50% dampening healing against an Elemental Shaman and an Affliction Warlock. This is where the game gets really interesting. If you're Zanked, how are you going to keep your team alive? Tremaz forced to run, run and retreat back to the pillar. Cloak of Shadows coming up in just a few short seconds. That will be a lifeline for sure. But when you're just pinned at the pillar, dampening is going nowhere but up. You've got no pressure. I really feel for this restoration, Druid. How's he going to stay alive Ooh. next with a game-winning fear potentially? Goes in, gets aggressive. Tremes has the Cloak of Shadows. Is he going to trade it out? He does. As soon as it comes off cooldown, 60% dampening. Dakarath and Swapsy next. They can just taste that extra point. Dakarath wants to get that five... <laughs> Uh, wins in this game, and it's looking like they're going to be able to do it. Shadow, his house is going nowhere but down. Uh, he ends up getting drop. Uh, yeah, this is a really interesting game, and I think a great showing here for Dakarath uh, on that Affliction Warlock. Yeah, I couldn't say it better myself. Dak picking up five wins in this one, and uh, we have a tie for second here in this group between Swapsy and Shadow. So Swapsy had a bit of a quiet start there to that one, but was able to pick up some very, very impressive wins there, and I mean, look at Dak's damage. Look, look how much fun he had this game. 9.3 million damage, out damaging, uh, you know, DKs. And look at Swapsy as well, right behind him there as well. Just uh, looks like so much fun uh, seeing that Ellie and that Warlock. <laughs> you know, a comp we usually haven't seen in a while. He's definitely having fun, just doing the most damage and most healing, just killing everybody. <laughs> like, definitely, yeah, that's a good time. And we can see here uh, the standing so far. We have Nixie in the lead, Zipai. Dakarath and Shadow, actually. I feel like the big surprise here is Shadow. I mean, this is Aya's prediction uh, to kind of make it all the way in Europe, but uh, I think a lot of people, you know, they don't know much about this player, but I think that's one of the really cool things about this format is some of these players, you know, we haven't seen them compete before, but they have an opportunity here, and I think Shadow's stepping up in a big way. Look yeah, at those look predictions. At They're all tied up, Zico. You're telling me you're trying to tell me my prediction wasn't good. And <laughs> look at us now. We're, we're tied exactly right now. Seven points apiece between our predictions here. So oh, it's gonna actually, be it. A... My prediction is Zen. So uh yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm not I'm not looking great right now in the prediction. Uh I probably should have I spoke a little bit too soon there. Zen, you're letting me down right now. Uh, but this is his chance to get back. Isn't in that there. both of your predictions? Hey, he's also had less games to play. Let's just be honest. You know, he hasn't had his second set yet. So there's still, you know, a good opportunity here. Um, all right, I'm out. Uh, Have fun, boys. All right. <laughs> Later, Zico. All right. Look at this. Raikou and Waz. Like, they better win their... But we have Cassio <laughs> and Tony. Wait, game number one. This is, is this just the AWC? What's <laughs> going on? the AWC right now. Raikou and Waz versus Tony and Cassio. Who's going to pick up the win? <laughs> No Holy Priest, though. Two Resto Druids in this one. So I always feel like when there's like a class stack that you're kind yes. of at a disadvantage. Um, so if, if Tony manages to get like a good point score with two Druids, like he's not even going to flip-flop between an, and another class, it'll be really impressive for him. Hunter as well, like you don't really synergize really well with a Fire Mage. Like this is going to be a really tough bracket, I feel like, uh, for Castu and Tony. Uh, whereas it's it's... It's good, I think, no matter what for Waz. Like, Rogue Feral seemed pretty decent. Hunter Rogue is good. Mage Rogue is really good. So this is a good bracket for Waz. Another one of my predictions. So I, I love this right now. Uh, they've started with stuns onto both healers. Castle looks to be the primary target for now as Clyde uses a Tranquility, trying to anticipate the blind. But Waz was patient, saved it, and now goes for the full blind, chasing down Castle. Castle drops a Flare to stop the sap on the Vanish. Castle's Flares have been so good throughout this tournament. It allowed them to get a win as... Hunter Demo against, I, I think it was like Rogue uh, Mage as well, or just Double Outlaw Rogue earlier on in the tournament. Like, Kasu really knows how to play around the Rogue class and assist his healer despite the matchup or despite the players he's playing with. And we're at 13% dampening already. And I see Tony has been on the back foot so far in this match. And 
Right now, Waz actually getting stunned up. Maybe they can actually take him down. It looks like he will trade out his trinket and ultimately will be able to survive Raikou right now with his combustion getting really, really aggressive. Sacrifice trades out by Kasu. Let's see what kind of plays that they can make. Robbers right now getting some really beautiful cyclones and the aggressive plays is something to definitely look out for. Um, your healer. If your healer can get aggressive at the right time, it's definitely going to give your team a huge advantage. And those cyclones coming in from Robbers. Um, ultimately allowed Kasu um, to get pressured heavily enough to trade out uh, his turtle. So right now, Kasu actually has nothing left. And uh, yeah, those uh, offensive plays like I was talking about from the healers can be the difference uh, in solo shuffle. I'm just trying to remember our current scoring. At the moment. I feel like this is an important match for Raikou. Like he only got two points, I think, um, yeah. in, the first, in the first match. And this group, he's got another outlaw matchup, so he's got to be getting at least... What is his overall? Two. Like two. He's at least two. Yeah, at least lost. two. If he but doesn't. It's he's like, got to ah. win with a feral, and he's got to win with a hunter. Like I, I think we're starting to see like fire mage. Like it's really good when you synergize it together, and you can premeditate all your attacks. But when you're just solo queuing it with all these other specializations, it kind of falls flat. Although this matchup, it's looking pretty strong with Tony going down at three minute mark, ten percent remaining health. Is he going to stay alive? There's no Ow. way. There's no way they kept him alive right there. Raikou what? is now down at ten percent. Are they going to manage to proc his cauterize? Castro has to solo the cauterize. Tony is running away. He's not finding the damage. Now Tony's behind. He stuns Waz. Clyde charges in to try and assist Tony behind the pillar as they finally cycloned Waz away. It looks like both teams stay alive at that moment, but definitely Tony falls behind, having to exchange the survival instincts. And they could swap to him again as they've got him caught in a gouge. Casu into his cyclone, trying to set up for a polymorph. Not finding it. Combustion swap over to the hunter. Roar of sacrifice going to negate that combustion very pet. effectively for Casu. Or did they? I think the pet died to the sack damage. It's active at the moment. Kasu, two seconds away from Turtle. Is he going to go down? He gets his aspect of the Turtle. He's resing his pet with it. In the meantime, Tony's going for the kill onto Waz. Popping Berserk. Stun onto Fnobbers. They're trying to turn it around. Raikou blinks to eat the Freezing Trap. Waz eats the Freezing Trap. Great teamwork on the side of Fnobbers, Raikou, and Waz. Interrupting that Hunter crowd control chain. That was a big moment for the Hunter team to start putting themselves back in the match. But when Dampening's at 75%, I feel like anything can happen. Just at any whoever grabs momentum and pressure is going to win this, and the healers need to be ready for it. Are they? Raikou's forced into the block. Raikou can't afford to lose these rogue games. If he loses when he's got the rogue on his team, there's no way he's probably going to lose zero rounds this matchup. He needs this win. Is he going to pull it off? Kasu is so low. Iron Bark at 10%, but Kasu is going for the kill at the same second. Who will fall first? Dragon's Breath on Kasu. He's going for fireballs. He doesn't care. Raikou's cauterized his proc. He's, he's burning, burning down. I think his seed's going to proc. I don't think he can heal it, but Kasu is stunned. He's going for the kill. Wild Seed, seed versus Kasu. Wild Waz is stunned up. Tony is going after the seed. Can they take out the wild seed in time? And they will. And that is devastating for Raikou. If he can't win these rounds with the rogue, I don't know if he's winning a single round here. Yeah. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be rough. I, I, I think for Raikou in this one, um, so far, mages have not had necessarily the, the best performance. You kind of highlighted it. I feel like the mage with the rogue, um, if you have really good synergy, that's why like winning these games with Waz, you didn't win with Waz. I mean, those guys are the champs together. So um, it's definitely unfortunate uh, for them, but they're going up against the tough opponent, Kasu and Tony. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous the way this group has played out. Uh, but now, we, once again, we're going to have a double Druid. So it's going to be Tony and Waz going up against Raikou and Kasu playing Fire Mage Hunter. Now, how do we think this one's going to go? I kind of want to say I'm going in favor of Waz and Tony here. This might be the most scuffed combination of all of the specs on both sides. <laughs> like these are the like the most absurd. I have to give it to the Feral Rogue. I feel like their sustained damage is going to be more important with how Dampening ramps up. The sustained damage classes have a way better shot in this format with Dampening starting the way that it does. It's not just all about burst damage only. Um, so I, I would have to give it to them. Unless Kasu has some really big surprises here. Also, Rogue and Feral are just very hard classes to kill. Whereas I think Hunter is, is definitely not that hard. And Mage without a Rogue protecting them or a Warrior protecting them, I don't think is as hard, difficult to kill either. But they're struggling to actually connect. Kasu and Raikou are just avoiding them. Just holding them back with Frost Nova, scaring them away. And perhaps they just want to wait for a little bit of dampening. You can kind of get away with it because it starts right here at one minute. Tony's going in right for the kill. Popping Berserk into a War Stomp. Triple Stun. Doesn't get anything really off the back of Kasu with that push. That is actually a terrible start. Uh, in my opinion, for the Feral Rogue. I was anticipating a lot better pressure. Now they're swapping back to the Mage and looking like they're just going to retreat back to the Pillar. And I'm curious to see if the strategies adapt as we move forward for this kind of like 
kind of just wait out the first couple minutes until you get a bit of dampening. Because if, if you got like a three minute cooldown and you use it at zero percent dampening, you get way less value than using it at fifty percent dampening, right? Like that's half the recovery on your damage cooldown. So either you need to pop your three minute cooldown instantly and then get it back at the three minute mark, or not pop it. I just wait. Yeah, I try to like go in for the all the all in later on, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, I feel like a lot of the strategies for solo shuffle still aren't entirely figured out. How fast dampening comes in, it's definitely something you 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 need to play around. Um, but I, I would say Tony's been under a decent amount of pressure here. Um, at the same time, though, Casu kind of getting hit by Waz. Um, this matchup isn't going exactly as I expected, but I don't know how I could really expect anything. We've never seen anything like this before. I mean, it's been a long time since we've seen Fire Mage. Survival Hunter with a Restoration Druid kind of backing them up. Fnauber is actually sitting down for a drink, so intelligently he's going to be able to recover his mana a little bit. But still, even though he drank, Clyde is ahead. So you can tell kind of the overall pressure in this matchup is going in favor of Tony and Waz. And I would say the big thing I, uh, for Waz and Tony is they have a lot of defense. Like both the Feral Druid and the Outlaw Rogue are extremely difficult to take down. But I feel like as dampening goes uh, higher and higher, that kind of defense is going to pay off for them a little bit. But Raikou actually getting a decent amount of pressure. I mean, it would be a big surprise if Raikou is actually able to pull off a win uh, with this composition. He trades out the ice block. Not exactly uh, what you want at this particular time. And make a swap over on Fnobbers. He's caught into a full kitty shot. Can they take him down? A big swap here by Waz and Tony. Trying to secure the win, but the Dragon's Breath comes in from Raikou. Trying to peel it up just a little bit. Fnobbers just cannot get his health up. And he does get taken down. Uh, it's going to be the second win for Tony. Uh, and Raikou is still looking to put a po point on the board. I feel like we, I talked about how this was going to be tough for Tony because it's double Druid, but he's actually in the lead, um, even with it being double Druid. So it is tough to call and predict. Raikou, though, in the meantime, needs to try and get a win. He's going to get one more round with Waz on his side, that rogue. But it seems like if the Hunter Feral can just maybe avoid them until higher dampening and do a push and all in, like they could still beat Rogue Mage. Um, it's a lot easier for them to survive with dampening ramping as high as it, as fast as it does comparatively to an AWC tournament, for example. So I'm not even certain if Raikou will actually get a win um, in this set series. It seems like his side is always just getting pushed back uh, harder than the opposing side. And now we've got Hunter Rogue. A really aggressive comp focused on crowd control, fighting a mage feral druid. Also a team that focuses on crowd control. I'd say it's more defensive, though, with the healing of the feral druid. Waz gets popped out of stealth by Raikou's arcane explosion. That allows them to start right away on the rogue. This is a good start for Raikou. And they just decide to polymorph him and swap to the healer. A very unorthodox strategy here incoming from Raikou and Tony, trying to catch Fnobbers off guard in round number three and put a point on the board. For Raikou, but Fnobbers looks like he's ready for it. He survives the initial assault, only trading his bark skin. Now Tony in trouble, caught in a bash. Clyde in a stun, unable to heal into a freezing trap. Now Tony's on the run, trying to pet. escape this assault. And now they're swapping back to the pet, an important strategy for the Fire Mage, as if they can manage to destroy the pet of Kasu, he will lose access to Roar of Sacrifice, which provides 100% critical strike immunity. And as a Fire Mage, you're all about critical strike. So if they can get one of these swaps on the pet or a Ring of Frost onto the pet, and they're using their combustion, that's going to be the win condition for Raikou. Yeah, definitely really, really important. I like the fact that he's going after the pet. It also just forces mana, right? It forces Fnobbers to actually heal a, a kind of a different target. And right now, surprisingly, Fnobbers is down 0-2 so far in this match. Clyde kind of besting him so far, but we'll see as these compositions kind of evolve and everyone gets to play with each other, not how that score potentially evens out. Tony right now under pressure, the clear leader in this group um, for the time being. Let's see if the Feral Fire Mage can actually pull off a win. Now, this is a composition in the past that's actually been quite good. So there is synergy there. I have a lot of uh, kind of crowd control with the Cyclone and the Polymorph, but uh, it, it does seem like they're kind of struggling to find pressure right now. And without that Mortal Strike effect, uh, I think Fnobber should be able to heal through um, a lot of this pressure quite easily. Yeah, let's see if they can keep it going. Raikou down to 30%. Clyde in a stun, Ironbark's up. Is it going to be enough? He's trying to eat the Freezing Trap. Manages to eat the Freezing Trap. I, I got to say, really well done uh, by Raikou and uh, these, anyone on the team against the Hunter, really, for getting on top of their healer so that that crowd control can be soaked by them rather than the healer. So it uh, enables their team to stay alive in those tight situations. And now after eating that Freezing Trap, they've got Aspect of the Turtle from Kasu. They're in a position where they might be able to kill him. And this is where the difficult calculation comes in. Is dampening it's 38 percent but that is going to scale out of control and raikou's actually just deciding to go for the combustion they cyclone the roar of sacrifice and swap to the pet 
trying to finish off the hyena there in midfield and i'm not sure if it's gone down yet we don't have a really good way of tracking its health looks like it's still alive though raku has to ice block and now he didn't get value from the combustion he can't really he doesn't have a threat to turn this fight around and dampening is going to scale out of control big damage incoming double kill potentially on the side of kasu and waz towards raiku and tony they're trying to retreat but they're just getting ravaged by kasu and waz during this assault raiku still has cauterized in his back pocket it's going to proc i think he alters back at 10 percent, but there's just no healing there's almost no mana full kidney shot cauterized is proc and he's going to be going into a wild seed at any moment burning down freezing trap secured and it's not even playing he's just going to be outright done in this match now, uh, the fourth round of the series is in a terrible position. Still has one round with the Rogue, but that means he's only getting two points for the first match. Only one point for the second match it is not a position I would have anticipated um, for a position or for a player like Raikou here in this tournament. And these these dampening timings are definitely sh like shifting the way that players need to like be aware of when to go for their cooldowns. You got to be like a little bit more greedy at moments, I think, on when you send it. I know I say some wacky things, but I, I swear I feel like Frost would actually be better than Fire. Just having more consistent damage in the match, it's not about having like perfect CC chains. Like that's what Fire is all about, right? Fire is all about having perfect crowd control chains. Everyone's locked down. You get the hero combust and you take someone down. That is how Fire plays. And outside of that, Fire, I, I just feel like it doesn't do that great. So in a solo shuffle environment, I actually feel like these mages should switch it up. Maybe try Frost, maybe try Arcane. Try to bring just more overall damage in these matchups because uh, Fire Mage is not working out. I mean, Raikou considered one of the best mages in the entire game, and he is struggling to pick up wins here. So we'll see if he makes any adaptations. Um, this round, uh, this game it obviously isn't over. There's still three rounds left. Uh, so let's see if he's actually able to pull out some wins. Raikou goes for the altar time right now. We get a kidney shot into a sap onto Clyde. So great control coming in from Waz. That outlaw rogue really uh, doing some work here. And as a result, Raikou is forced to play very defensive, but you can't play defensive too long in this mode. You need to get pressure out. And Raikou realizing this is just going to pop the combustion to try to get aggressive. But unfortunately, it's not able to find the damage. Yeah, let's see if they can pull it off here. Uh, Raikou on this side is like, this is the, he's going to win as Hunter Mage again. It's the same matchup. Uh, what's the best option? Do you, do you try and wait for dampening? Do you, do you just play aggressive and try and get CC and go for the kill? It's going to be such a tough position uh, on his side to try and figure that out. And this is the second to last match, right? He's only going to have one more grouping. And he's only going to have like, three points if he doesn't win one here. Actually, he only have two points if he doesn't win a single game. Uh, it, it would be basically impossible, I think, to qualify at that point. He's got to pick up a win. At least, I'd say at least two if he wants to have a shot moving into the third match. But Clyde is actually getting attacked early on here by Tony and Waz. They're just racing down the healer. Is Clyde ready for it? He's in bear. He's got Barksian, but it might not be enough. He's getting cut down. Nature Swiftness, big heal. They're still pursuing him. Can they finish him? Scenario Ward not available. He goes for Thorns, gets into bear form, and manages to escape with some assistance from Raikou. Polymorphs onto Waz. Dragonsmith on Fob Schnobbers, holding them away. But they might just train the healer start to finish. Waz is now on Raikou, trying to slow down. His pressure a bit. Cotton Frost Nova can't connect to anything. Tony's just retreating away. Waz is going after Clyde. Stuns him for crowd control. And it looks like they do want to switch their attention to Raikou, but Raikou's ready. Dragon Express Waz. Kasu gets Cyclone. Both teams just holding each other and stalling at the moment, waiting for their next big opportunity. Berserk coming up. I, I'm not sure if that's the right timing for Berserk. Honestly, between the rounds of the cooldowns, not resetting. Uh, Feral Frenzy, big hit onto Raikou. Clyde's in a sap. This is devastating. This could proc his cauterize, get a block potentially, alters back to midfield. While well, Clyde sits through his sap, flare to stop the resap. Has to go for a kidney shot, but kidney shot's just as good. Six seconds of stun right there. But it doesn't look like Tony is getting aggressive. He's just choosing to stay at the pillar. Wants to play it safe. Get into a little bit of dampening. Take no risks. But Waz was left behind. Now they're swapping to Waz. He has to evasion. He pops faint. Trying to stabilize oh. through the combustion. Is it going to be enough? It might not be. He's running back behind the pillar. Tony gets swapped to, and this is it. Raikou's looking to put his first point, yeah. and he does it as Hunter Mage. And this is why he's a <laughs> multi-champion uh, in the AWC, pulling off a win with such a bad composition for a Fire Mage. Hey, you'd love to see that. I mean, that's a bit surprising, honestly. I didn't think they were going to pull out that win. And now this is the chance for Raikou to actually, um, if he could come back in this one, I mean, right now it is going to be uh, Raikou with Waz. Um, the only problem is, uh, like I was saying, I mean, normally you see Raikou and Waz, it's like, oh, how could they lose? Like, right? But then you, yep. you're fighting Kasu and Tony, and it's like, oh, that's <laughs> how they lose. <laughs> like, pretty good jungle team, uh, that Feral Druid. 
uh, and Survival Hunter. So this is definitely an even match here between uh, all of these players. Uh, I think for Fnobbers as well, he wants to start picking up some wins and still has an opportunity to tie. If he can win this game as well as the next one, he can go three and three with Clyde, uh, which is definitely a position he wants to find himself in. Um, but yeah, definitely a really, really interesting strategy. And in that last one, Raikou was kind of just acting as like a turret uh, standing in the middle of the map, just doing as much damage as possible. Not necessarily going for as much crowd control, but just really trying to put out pressure, which I think is really important in this mode. Definitely. Damage is really valuable. It's not like when there's zero dampening where you kind of just want to avoid um, a, a point where you get bursted down. Like just getting damage out, putting the healer behind. But dampening stacking as fast as it does is super valuable. So kind of a shift in meta and play for all the players here in the tournament today. It's only the first day of the European region. You can see the stress. Fnobber's in a blind, Kasu the target. And this is the game that Raikou can't afford to lose if he wants to even have a shot of qualifying through in those top DPS slots to the tournament finals. Uh, if he's going to have a shot here. Combustion is still rolling, swapping to Killed Tony, trying to burst him down. And did they did they kill it? It's really hard yeah. to tell sometimes. Ooh, is it, is it, I think he feigned death his it. pet. So your pet is a feigned death and you can juke people with it. Um, and then he got fully hotted up there by the rest of Druid. So it looks like the pet is going to stay alive here. Uh, Waz is just trying to connect to Kasu. Kasu's playing really aggressive. They're not just kind of waiting at the pillar for dampening this time. They're just chasing Raikou behind the pillar, trying to close this one, close this one out fast, uh, as opposed to the previous one round. Now they're actually choosing to retreat away, so just flip flopping their strategies. I guess it's the advantage of having <laughs> so many games played together. They can just do this in the solo shuffle tournament too. Have the synergy to play both defense and offense. Waz is cycloned. Kasu's pushing in, Tony's pushing in, Fnobbers is crowd controlling Waz with entangling roots, trying to fake cast his interrupt off that grappling hook as well. And this one, he's got another entangling root for him. Tony into a ring, gets dispelled out instantly, stun on Waz, trying to make their way around the pillar, freezing trap on Clyde, but Raikou is doing a great job avoiding the damage while Clyde is in a freezing trap. Now he's out of it and has options. He's got to make a decision though. He's scenario wards, this is going to be the right one. He's falling behind. He's trying to greed out his other defensive cooldowns manages to make it through while being greedy for now but here's berserk from tony they need a response is iron bark going to be enough clyde is in a bash i'm not sure raikou gets a frost note but tries to soul shape away he's still below half hp he's getting crushed by the damage of kasu now with the coordinated assaults and they didn't manage to get cauterized at least which is a good position for raikou his combustion available if they can manage to kill the hyena crowd control the hyena and find a clean target to set up on with this combustion it's still an opportunity to win the game yeah, Waz goes for the kidney shot here onto Fnobbers, but it uh, doesn't look like... Oh, he actually gets it! I can't believe they let Raikou get that polymorph. He managed to secure a full polymorph, and they do get the aspect of the turtle. That was a great push there uh, by the side of Raikou, Waz, and Clyde. Uh, but I think kind of a fumble by Castle and Tony. I think Tony ran a little bit too soon there. He could have shut that down. Um, and as a result, they do manage to get some cooldowns out of the way from Castle. And that turtle's very unlikely to come back at this point of the game. Uh, I mean, even just three minutes into the game, I, I mean, dampening is so high. We're almost at 60%. These druids are going to really start struggling. And it feels like Kasu and Tony have most of the pressure and momentum at this point of the game. One kidney shot on Kasu, though, could close out the game. I think he's probably going to just trinket it immediately. Needs to just avoid damage. He goes for the feigned death, but the damage is overwhelming. There's the trinket. There's no recovery. I could manage just to get another win there with Waz. And uh, that's a great spot for them to be in. And Clyde, I mean, we, we got to talk about Clyde too right now. I mean, he's just having a phenomenal showing up four to one over Fnobbers uh, so far in this game. Um, if he could get five, that would be massive. Yeah, as, as the healer, there's there's less spots overall for qualifying through. So a little bit of a tighter race um, for you. And now it looks like it could maybe be a four-way tie if they can pull off an upset here. Uh, with Raikou and Tony and Fnobbers playing that Feral, Fire Mage, Resto Druid. I feel like they've got to have a chance into Rogue Hunter. Like, I just I feel like the Feral and the, the Fire Mage should be able to find some burst damage uh, onto a Hunter or even onto the Rogue later in Dampening and be able to execute for a kill. So uh, we can see Kasu's side just choosing to stay in stealth and camouflage. Same with Tony and Raikou, honestly. So both teams maybe think they're favored if they wait. Um, but they've got triple stealth, so Raikou is just waiting for Invis, hoping they can find a target. Uh, Arcane Explosion, trying to hit something. They don't. Now they're moving forward, getting ready. Flare comes down. Maybe going for a sap. Oh, but those Shadow Side Eyes also spawn pretty fast. Raikou's picked that up at the 30-second mark here, charging in to pull them out of stealth, and uh, maybe they weren't ready for that while it's got pulled out of stealth. Raikou's immediately getting aggressive, going over onto Kasu. Clyde into a Polymorph. Great opportunity for Raikou to get some big points here. Potentially three points from this match. 
considering his performance in the first round with only two. Is he going to manage to do it? Glides now into a Cyclone. Fnobber's into a stun after the chain. Now into a Freezing Trap. Tony in trouble. Trades out a lot of cooldowns. Is it going to be enough? He's in bear form. He's on the run. He had to press every single button he's got to stay alive right there in that situation. He doesn't have a lot of options in the future. It's up to Fnobber's to save him later on. Was sitting through Polymorph into Dragon's Breath. Raikou trying to crowd control the Rogue and go after the Hunter. But Roar of Sacrifice. Actually, Roar of Sacrifice before Combust. I, I, Raikou can actually win this game right now. Um, without that Roar of Sacrifice to answer it. If they can just get a stun from Tony, Feral Frenzy with a bust, I, I think they can KO a target. But Tony's in trouble! Oh, He's Tony. down at 10%! He could just fall! Ironbark at 10%! Is it going to be enough for him? Innervate's up. Fnabber's just mashing out his biggest heals at zero cost. Manages to keep Tony alive in that position, but it looks so scary for their side here. Here comes Combustion. Raikou's trying to win the game by himself. Kasu feigned S off the dots. Tony jumps in, but Raikou is gouged. Waz is holding Raikou away from the, connecting with that combustion. And with Waz, Waz stalling out their assault, they're not going to get the kill onto Kasu. And now they are very far behind. Can they manage to pull it off still from this position? No Berserk for two minutes. No Combustion for two minutes. Unless Raikou can get a clean reset just to cast a few fireballs. He's managed to get a Polymorph on Clyde. Still going after Kasu in midfield. Waz is Frost Nova. Really good control from Raikou in this position. Just dropping a Ring of Fire with a Polymorph. Not sure if I'm the biggest fan of that combination. Uh, just breaking his own Polymorph with the Ring of Fire. Kasu grappling over. Looking for crowd control. Fnobbers. Looks like he's ready for it. Just manages to avoid it. Tony is charging in. Waz waiting to get out of crowd control. Now grappling over. Tony into the kidney shot. Swap into the Feral Druid. They managed to pull Bark Skin on this swap, and it was no cooldown. So this is a big opportunity with dampening as high as it is to kill Tony now. Yeah, let's see if they can actually take him down. I mean, dampening is going nowhere but up. At the same time, Raikou could be vulnerable. They can get his ice block. There will not be a second one of the game. Cast with a stun. Is Raikou and Tony trying to get aggressive here? Was all over Raikou, though, just trying to shut him down, trying to shut down the control. Big damage out onto Raikou as he uses Alter Time as well as his Soul Shape to kind of reposition himself. Tony getting rotted down as well. Um, and the pressure is just really high for the side of Casso and Waz right now. I would say Fnabra is really struggling. Is he going to trade on this trinket? Tony could just easily get dropped. And it looks like he will. That will conclude this set. And I, I think the big winner here was uh, winners were Clyde, Casso, and Waz. So really nice performance there, especially from Clyde, who managed to win five rounds uh, over Fnabra's. As a clear advantage, really unfortunate for Fnobbers now because he's going to be in a position where I feel like he's going to have to go five if he wants to qualify. I almost want those leaderboards up like in the middle of the game every once in a while because we've got so many players with so many different scores. But what do you know? we got another game underway, and this one looks chaotic with Acro already at 10%. Is he going to be going down? Gripped back by Zen Lin, interrupted by Brunhidi, and closed out just in round three towards the tail end of this one. And now we got to assess the score. What's the situation here in the solo shuffle? Zen Lin with a two to one lead over Chaz. Acro and Brunhitti, two, two. It looks like Twinkle is not having the best run here on that Feral Druid. Now going to be facing up against a double outlaw rogue. The things you don't want to see. <laughs> I feel like going into a solo shuffle game, uh, seeing uh, you know double outlaw rogue. I'm trying to imagine what would be worse. Maybe like double Affliction Warlock or something like that. That'd be an absolute nightmare as well. But uh, yeah, I think for Twinkle, likely probably going to get trained down in this game. Uh, but Tay and Zenelin might be able to help keep them alive. Uh, we'll see what they can actually do here. Um, they can get crowd control onto Chaz. Uh, there's definitely some opportunities for them to take down these rows. We have a stun onto Acro very early on. A beautiful um, fear coming in from Tay as well with that intimidating shout, fearing everybody up and uh, just getting the game started with some great offensive crowd control. Now let's see who they're going after. Just cleave damage at the moment on both Tay and Twinkle. Both these teams have a lot of damage. Just a cleave matchup, no casters. Looks like maybe they want to go onto Chaz. He's baiting them into the starting room, into a bad position, but they're still going after him here in the starting room. They don't care. They're throwing caution to the winds, chasing down Chaz. How is he going to deal with this pressure? He's just, he's just holding up in the corner there, going into bear form now, trying to get away and reposition. Double war stomp into Cyclone from Twinkle. Big value there. Uh, to peel both of the outlaw rogues and stay aggressive on the resto drew a triple fear by zen lin this is looking clean right now a good opportunity for twinkle to put a point on the board yeah let's see if he can do it i mean it would be massive definitely don't want to be down zero and two uh or zero and three it would be you know even worse uh, worst case scenario kind of but uh twinkle really struggling probably need to get in bear form soon these double outlaw rogues just really ripping in and 
Surprisingly, Outlaw Rogues are really good at kind of cleave damage. So when all of these melee are grouped up, and it's kind of just like a rumble of the melee, uh, how good Bladestorm or Blade Flurry is uh, really comes into play. You get a lot of damage out on that double Outlaw Rogue. It's going to be a struggle for Zenelin to actually keep him alive. And you can kind of just look at the mana. Zenelin already down to around 50%. That's the kind of pressure that's coming in from Brunhitti and Acro. Uh, in this particular match. But that being said, Acro with no Trinket and no Vanish could be susceptible to a stun. He's got the evasion, but if he gets caught in a stun, that's not really going to do too much work for him. So if we can get crowd control on Chaz, maybe like a Chastise Fear with a stun on Acro, there's definitely a clear win condition here for Zenelin, Tay, and Twinkle. Yeah, let's see if they can keep it up. Two minute mark, 27% dampening. Kidney shot onto the Fury Warrior. Obviously, Enrage Regen. Managing to stabilize for the stun. Now trying to get aggressive onto Chaz. He's going to bark skin. He's in bear form. You don't normally want to bark skin when you're not stunned, though. Because later on, he, he won't be able to use iron bark if he gets caught. And he's actually caught out of four. Massive mistake on Chaz's part. He's caught again in a stun. Bladestorm coming out for Tay. He's chopping up Chaz. And they do manage to do it. Twinkle with a little spark here in round number, th <laughs> or round number four. Managing to pull off a win and try and climb back on the leaderboards. Zenlin now with a big lead. Um, over Chaz here in this series on the Holy Priest. Yeah, you know, honestly, Zenelin, you know, being my top pick, looking really good so far. <laughs> uh, you know, I know you had your doubts, Supertees, but uh, I, I think he's proving himself quite nicely here. Um, and I, I, I do think just the Holy Priest is really solid. Um, you know, you have that extra little bit of offense uh, that, you, that you can use. You can get crowd control by yourself on the enemy healer when you sense your team has kind of momentum. You can throw in some additional damage. I think just overall for solo shuffle, it's uh, really, really good. And at the same time, you have some more of like the defensive healers, like the Mistweaver Monk and the Restoration Druid that can be really good at just healing. You know, just sit back, heal as much as possible, and uh, just hope that the other healer kind of crumbles under the pressure before you do. Um, but it looks like we are going to have a little bit of start here on Brunhitti. And uh, we'll see if Twinkle can actually put another point on the board grouped up with Zenelin uh, and Brunhitti. Who are they going to go after? Potentially another swap over onto Chaz. Maybe they can take down Acro, uh, but it would be massive if Twinkle kind of tie things up here with a win. Let's see. Pressure onto the Fury Warrior. Already getting enraged regen, although it's pretty fairly exchanged for the Berserk. Is it going to outlast it, though, is now the question. Stun onto Twinkle. Massive damage incoming onto the Feral Druid. Zenlin popping the Apotheosis. Emergency recovery maneuvers on his side to try and stabilize. His paramending begins to bounce between the players, healing them both back up. Acro stunned. He pre-cloaks this stun, but cloak might not be too valuable with all the physical damage. Chaz in a chastise. Acro now falling behind. Big swap onto Acro. Is he going to just fall over? Twinkle now down at half, constantly back and forth. Not even a minute, just a little over a minute at this point. Tay is still down below half. Chaz is trying to recover, but he's got to allocate his hots perfectly. I think Scenarian Ward's up on Tay. Brunhidi is now falling behind. Zenlin finally out of a blind, connecting out some big heals, but actually gets sapped. Uh, insane sap by Acro right there. I can't believe that landed onto Zen. Now Twinkle starting to fall behind, has to trade survival instincts in bear form, ducking for cover. Chaz is charging in, looking for crowd control, finds a cyclone onto Brunhitti. Twinkle is trying to retreat away, jumps over to Zenlin, trying to escape to safety. Tay chases him down. Shadow or Death trying to anticipate a fear or a blind by Zenlin. Good positional awareness. Now repositions, gets a full fear onto Chaz. Big opportunity, but it's actually Brunhitti that's still behind as Zenlin is struggling to heal. Is he just going to fall over at 30% health? I think it's, it is it for him. Brunhitti goes down. A very unexpected game there uh, and result. I was expecting Brunhitti, he's been doing so well in the earlier matches. I was not anticipating that side to be going down so easily, and suddenly the series is opening up a little bit. Fury Warrior seems to be another one of those specs where I think people kind of thought it would do well, um, but... Uh, in terms of like what people predicted, a lot of people didn't go with the Fury Warriors, but we saw Joe, uh, you know, have a great performance. We're seeing Tay right now on the Fury Warrior as well. I, I think just the strength of its kind of Mortal Strike effect, the amount of healing it can reduce, and just its overall consistent pressure is kind of perfect for a game mode like this. So uh, Tay really putting in some work, trying to go for five wins, which is really impressive. I mean, it, if you get three wins, like you did your job, right? Like three wins is you did a really solid job. Four is like, wow, that's impressive. Five is like, okay, this person's crazy. If you can get six, it's like, okay, you literally carried every single game. Um, so Tay, if you could get five here, I think it would kind of speak volumes to his performance here in this match. Um, and obviously Chaz, this is his last opportunity to kind of tie things up here with Zenelin Brunhitti taking a lot of pressure at this point in the game. will trade out his Vanish, his Cloak of Shadows, as well as Faint. And make a swap over onto Tay. So good pressure coming in from the side of Acro and Twinkle uh, at the early stages of the game. Yeah, let's see if they can 
switch gears too, also into defense, should they start to get overwhelmed, because that Fury Warrior and Outlaw Rogue can definitely turn the heat up. As we see a kidney shot onto Chaz, Twinkle repositions, trying to escape, maybe needs to think about bear farm soon as Chaz is in a full fear, managing to just heal himself up with some regrowth, has bark skin, he's getting aggressive, Tay goes for a disarm into Acro, trying to slow down his assault, Twinkle going for an in-cap roar into Cyclone, oh, but Zenlin blinks out a line of sight of it, insane soul shape by Zenlin, avoiding that crowd control chain, now caught into a stun, but Twinkle can't chain it, he's just going for damage onto Tay, and Zenlin can easily respond with the Guardian Spirit, if he was Cyclone, then this Berserk would have got way more damage out, Really good positioning on his part, looking like he might close this out with a 4-2 to two score against Chaz. In the meantime, Tay is just looking to try and get, wreck his way through with a 5-point score overall. If you get those 5-point scores, you're looking really good to qualify into the next round. As Chaz is now into a kidney shot, Twinkle into a Cyclone. Acro's all by himself, trying to peel the team with Vanish and Cheap Shots, and manages to stall just in time. Now turning it around with crowd control into Zenlin and Brunhidi. Going after Tay, it would appear, but Tay has so much defense left. I don't see him going down anytime soon. Acro retreating away with the grappling hook during the disarm. Unfortunately, still has to use the evasion on top of it. Now Twinkle into a kidney shot. Acro, how's he going to protect them? Zenlin cycloned. Acro goes for a kidney shot on Brunhitty, turning it around now onto him. Fey Guardians come up from Zenlin to stabilize the damage. And Cloak of Shadows on top of it. But Tay, his defenses are pretty limited at the moment. And he's still below half. Dismantled away, can't attack. He's trying to pull away. Akris is chasing him down, trying to go for the kill. Shadow or death from Zenlin, anticipating the blind. Doesn't hit it there, but if he manages to hit even one, it could win the game. Chaz is now fully blinded. Twinkle's in a stun. How are they going to respond? Twinkle's just... Oh, he's dead! They procced his Necro! I cannot believe it. Insane damage there uh, from the side of Tay and Brunhitty. And now, that's Zenlin up four points in this match. Tay's a monster. they just putting out devastating amounts of damage. Uh, winning five rounds, kind of the clear winner of this one, Zedelin as well. Uh, this is a really interesting set. And this is one of those games uh, that's very chaotic, right? Because there's no casters. Every single person uh, was a melee uh, in, in, in that particular match. So just the uh, overall consistent damage is going to be really, really high. And uh, kind of anything can happen when you get into like kind of that blender ball situation, that tornado of, you know, <laughs> four melee uh, being in there, just doing as much damage as possible. And it seems like. That in that particular situation, the Fear Warrior kind of reigns supreme. See the amount of healing uh, he was able to do, as well as just the overall damage, um, looking pretty solid. Um, and I think more so than anything, it's just that the amount of healing that the Fear Warrior can reduce is just super strong. Yeah, the Fear Warrior is definitely, you know, I thought that it might have only been a, like a ladder thing, you know, like online solo shuffle um, and tournament play. I didn't expect them to do nearly as well as they are, but between Joe's results now, Tay's result from that last match. We're moving into Blizzos. Uh, he's going to have an opportunity, and he's paired up with Alec, Oscar, and Trent. So we've got Warrior Mage, Double Mage, Demon Hunter Mage, and Trent was one of the first to staple Demon Hunter Mage. If you remember from AWC, I think it was last year. Um, he was the only one playing that composition, so it's going to be really cool to see these go up head-to-head. -head. We've got our leaderboard standings with Nixie coming out on top at the moment, Kasu in second, Zipai in third, Brunhitti in fourth, and I believe... Joe Fernandez there down at the bottom, but we're about to see him, right? So sometimes their scores are lagging behind just because they haven't played yet. And this is going to be a big opportunity. Actually, just updating with Brunhitti, uh, taking the lead. And oh my God, we get updated in real time with animations. This technology I'm like, is, nice. very, is very advanced. This Look at this. Listen, it's, Sid, this it's is updating the year in of real time word based 2022, on 2022, okay? What? We have the technology. Yeah, I'm still using PowerPoint to make my thumbnails. Like, this is too much for me, okay? I can't, <laughs> like, I can't adapt to this. We'll see if we get it uh, once again here. We've got uh, Clyde at the top there with the um, just leading the pack against the Hunters. Zenlin in second, next in third, and a uh, very, very solid group of people as well, seeing a lot of Druid and Priest representation. Why do you think Supatis were not seeing the Holy Paladin do quite as well? We, I guess we haven't seen him play that much today. This is probably one of those situations you were just mentioning. Probably better to wait for the next match. I think the yeah. main weakness of the Paladin is just mana. Seems like they're mm -hmm. going out of mana faster than every other healer. Um, and then they just they can't keep it going. Um, this is the main problem for them at the moment. I, I think they're probably the weakest healer on ladder, just ranked 3v3. I thought maybe with faster dampening it'd be better because they could win the game before their oom with dampening, but they just oom twice as fast as what it looks like. Uh, but regardless here, we got double mage. They both decided to enter this match as fire. 
So not heeding the advice like Vinrique was talking about, maybe Frost would be better for these for these solo shuffles, but they're actually both going to be fire. It kind of seems like you don't want the mage on your team, which is really weird with how strong Aww. mage has been throughout all Shadowlands. But uh, if they can win with double mage here, I think it would be impressive. Um, and we've got a Mistweaver healing them too. That's a very strange composition. You really wouldn't see this. Um, like maybe maybe you'd see like Zarya or something playing double mage or something for fun, but they're actually just getting an insane opener onto Judel Dump. He's getting the jump right now. Is he going to be able to get out behind the pillar? He's just staying out in midfield, tanking combustion. I don't think this is going to be a great idea. Manages to now finally get back out of line of sight. And the initial opener from Invis is over. So as long as Judel doesn't put himself or in a bad position, he's actually playing Thought Steel. He's stolen Polymorph from one of the mages and Polymorphed the Mistweaver with it, mm. trying to slow them down. But not not enough just to find a kill. I'm actually I'm really worried for Judel. I, I feel like he is a vulnerable target. If he gets baited in a bad position, like he is the weak link of the team at the moment. Yeah, definitely getting opened on very hard there. He is able to stabilize, though, and as we would have it, as we've seen in previous matches, we're seeing Alec just getting uh, pummeled down by the melee the melee specs here with Tren and Blizzard just following him, trying to get a ring of free, uh, sorry, <laughs> an ice ring off here, seeing if Alec can get them just off their back just a little bit, but once again, that app time is just insane against these poor Frost Mages. Uh, Oscar a little bit, able to free cast just a little bit, trying to get some polymorphs off. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're seeing uh, just immediate aggression with how quickly that dampening is coming in. But I really do have to feel bad for these mages. I mean, look at Oscar. It's just, what, what's the term y'all use? Uh, blender ball? Blender is, that, ball. is that applicable here? <laughs> oh, big swap on the Judo with the leg sweep. Is he ready for it? Trend gets, oh, he gets knocked out of darkness by the ring of peace. A huge push there. Uh, but back to your question, feel bad for a mage? No, I'm sorry. I, I can't. I don't. I won't ever. <laughs> Uh, I won't feel bad. I won't feel bad for a mage. They've they've had their time. There's no sympathy <laughs> right now for the mages. Right. Um, but Judel still feeling the aftermath of that last attack, trying to get himself back up to full health. Life cocoon trades out for bank at the two minute mark. This is where things really pace up. Deputy seems like it doubles with every tick at this point in the match. Uh, and I bet you're pretty happy with Trent on the demon hunter here. It's not very often we get to see the demon yeah. hunters or the death knights in the game and. He had a great first match, so the second match, I feel like it's a good bracket for him um, with the cleave option with Blizzo on his side versus double mage. Like, those should be, I think, some pretty easy games as long as Judel doesn't get caught in a bad position. But as I say that, Oscar's right on top of him. Is he going to get it? He gets stunned on his Dragon's Breath. He can't get the Polymorph. Judel's in position to fear him. Now Alec falls behind in prison on Bank. He trinkets, but Block is overlapped. He could get Mass Dispelled. Bank is moving forward onto Judel, trying to win this game here, but he's got Trinket and Barrier which is a really good defense to that leg sweep. Alec, his cauterize is triggered. Blizzo is soloing Alec. He's blade storming over, just cutting him down and proccing the wild seed. We yep. got an Alec protein shake here in the first <laughs> round of the solo shuffle. Wow. Okay, well, there goes round two. We're gonna or we're gonna be moving on here to round two. But yeah, to answer your question, definitely excited to see the Demon Hunter representation here. I don't think we saw it at all last AWC. Maybe if we did, it was probably only once. But you know, without Trent, he's kind of the only one keeping the the Demon Hunter dream alive on AWC. You know, we sometimes we see Cheerios step into step into those brackets, and we get to see just a little bit more. But Cool to see him doing decently well. He's already got a point on the board here. And we just swapped up the teams. And now we're going to be seeing him play alongside Oscar with that Miss Weaver monk as well. It seems like the healers both on, on both on the side of the Miss Weaver and the Holy Priest ran out of mana fairly early. I wonder if that's to just like how hard they were going on. I mean, they, they pretty much, especially Judel in that game number one, Sid had to just utilize so many defenses so quickly to stabilize his team with how hard they, <laughs> they went on him early on in the game. Yeah, the opener of the double fire mage is really scary because they're both invisible. So they're going to yeah. pretty much guarantee to get their crowd control at the start of the match. And it's as soon as you can survive that opener, it's a lot less surprising. Uh, right now, we can see Oscar is the target. Who? What class is going to be better for the mage? You know, is it a demon hunter or a warrior? Because normally at the beginning of Shadowlands, it was warrior. Then we saw Trend doing the fire mage for a bit, and like this is Blizzo's comp, right? Like. He has played this composition to BlizzCon multiple times. So if if Trend can manage to win this matchup, where it's, it's Melee DPS Fire Mage, it would be very impressive in my eyes here. I would say they're already behind. Oscar is just 30% health and getting crushed, trying to find his footing with Blizzo in his face. Bank is trying to re-roll back to the pillar so he can line of sight. Now pressure onto Alec. Trend actually getting feared defensively. So at least Bank won't have to worry about that intimidating shout. Blizzo gets swapped to. Big stun lock by Trend. 
Big opportunity. Are they going to get the kill? Doesn't look like it at the moment, but Judel on a Disc Priest doesn't have the immediate recovery like he would if he was holy, so he's kind of got to anticipate the damage and have it pre-healing with Atonement and having his Purge of the Wicked out before he gets CC'd, and now he's into the Paralyzed. Bank is rolling up for a Leg Sweep. Beautiful crowd control by Bank. He picked the perfect moment when Oscar wasn't going to, or when Alec wasn't able to intercept him while he rolled across midfield. So really good awareness from Bank in that position. You need to pick your moments when you're going to cross in because you're so exposed to crowd control rolling in the middle of the map. Really good on his part to try and tie it up one-to-one -one between the healers in round two. Yeah, absolutely. Doing a really good job of mitigating those circumstances. Um, but we're seeing what, uh, those uh, melee just going in, continuing to go in really hard on that aggression. Alec dipping just a little bit in health, but still got that cauterize, still got that ice block. Um, Judel running out of mana, though, once again, oh. kind of saw him at this point in dampening last game, too. Bank stuck in that ice and uh, stuck in that ring. <laughs> That right one day uh and oscar just dipping low in health and once again i mean i love the fact that as soon as someone dies in these matches that's the end i mean there's really not much recovering once one team finds some momentum though uh so we'll see we'll see who gets the turn of events Ooh. here pretty soon but alec continue to dipping in continuing to dip in health Oh, we're tying it up. Both ice blocks out of the way. But Blizzard's right on top of Oscar. He gets in prison. He goes for the kill. Oscar dragons press him for a moment. Blinks behind the pillar. He needs to escape. Blizzard. Blizzo leaps in. Gets a storm bolt. Oscar breaks it. But will it be enough? Conqueror's banner is too much damage. It's overwhelming. They drop darkness on top of Connor as they're trying to push Alec over. If he gets unlucky on this darkness, he's going to die. And he's just pushing through it. Oscar's wild seed is triggered and getting blade stormed oh. down. Blizzo with the first point lead here uh in this series in round number two uh with two points now is showing his mastery of this composition i feel like he could have almost not asked for a better group like warrior oh, mage yeah. is his best comp and then like warrior demon hunter into double mage like this is a situation where blizzo could be the next player to go six and oh i think yeah and that's why i'm so shocked that the, when you know when we've seen him the votes for chat it's like people aren't believing in blizzo dude's an absolute legend Guy's been around for years. He's kind of like one of the best warriors in the game and obviously very much carrying his own here. He's got two <laughs> points higher than any other of the DPS. Um, and the gates are opening for game number three. So let's see what he can do here in round number three, Said. I want a lobby with Blizzo and Joe in it. That's what I want. Oh, we got the lobby yes. with Jamie. Wait, do we have that? Wait, I'm going to look. I think we have to wait till the next round if they make it. Well, everybody makes it through. We have to wait till the next round of matches is generated and then yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll be able to know. Uh, but I think production has just confirmed we're not Sag. We're, we're not going to be, right. we're not going to be able to get that right now. It's a mage war between Alec mm -hmm. and Oscar on these fire mages and Alec is in the lead. Now he's going to have to win with the demon hunter. And if he can, then he's going to be in a great spot for the rest of this shuffle. Cause that's the real test is like, can Blizzo lose these melee fire mage mirrors? Uh, mm -hmm. because if he can, then obviously Alec is a good shot. But right now he's struggling, gets a Ring of Frost, but Blizzo just gets out of it. He's going right after Alec. Is he going to fall here? Alec gets gripped. Blizzo is just a machine chasing him down, just crushing him outright at the moment. Oscar now falling a bit behind from Trent's pressure, trying to find his moment as well, but not nearly as much sustained damage with that Mistweaver. I feel like a Mistweaver is going to heal through a Demon Hunter so much easier than a Disc Priest into a Fury Warrior. Uh, Blizzo getting racialed there with the Quaking Palm, mm -hmm. just trying to control him, bank into an Imprison, trying to find crowd control. Trend actually breaking out a Storm Bolt. So he used Storm Bolt, I think, to get a reverse here onto Jewel Jump and try and get them aggressive here. Um, but it doesn't look like they're finding the damage that they need to, unfortunately, with that play. And now Trend with no Medallion means that he can't Trinket in Darkness to save someone in the future. Oh, yeah, I mean, if it works out like that last darkness, though, might not matter, but he just used popped his meta, so we may see some damage go out on Oscar quickly, though. Interesting choice as well with how many cooldowns that the team, the team on the left side has, so not sure if we'll see much from this go. Oscar dipping just a little bit in health, however, uh, but on plenty of defensives on the left side of the team, so I don't think anyone's going to go down quite so soon. Uh, so it kind of feels like the game is, like, the pacing has slowed down just a little bit. Do you think that people are kind of getting used to um, just... The, the, the sort of the format of things it seems like they're sort of figuring out uh, how they want to be playing these games out yeah i mean comfort right like tournament jitters like you're coming into the mm -hmm. tournament right at the start of the day like oh wow dampening starts really fast and then, oh, okay you're dead <laughs> uh and then like the more games you get the more you're you'll get to see those moments of spikes this is a terrible position though right now for alec he ice blocks and paint suppressions and he's dead through it <laughs> like it's not no. ah! uh, it's not good and you, you can see blizzo is flexing i think at this point um, now with three points on the board, he's looking to try and get a clean sweep. This would definitely be the matchup bracket for him. 
it's kind of i feel like trend will end up going two points because i'm expecting the double fire mage to lose which means it would be uh. like trend and blizzo in the lead um but what would the healer score break down it's three three i think right if that if it if, if a dps goes six and zero the healers have to three three Oh, um, man, you got to stop making me do all these math equations. Yeah. I can't, I'm also the worst much. one at math, and I don't know why I'm walking myself into asking, <laughs> like, like a rhetorical situation. Like, what is the situation of when the train leaves the station at X time and arrives at, like, like I don't know, I guess. You can't see me, but I'm literally that meme right now where all those numbers are floating around <laughs> my head, and I just look really confused because, yeah, trying to big brain the score is definitely going to make you go crazy with the format of the solo shuffle. But all we do know is that it is match number four, round number four in this match up here and it's kind of just almost tied across the board blizzo however soaring ahead with three points we know that judal also is eating the other healer right now it's kind of dps against dps and healers against healers are sort of in their own little bracket but i you know speaking of kind of future matches we, we touched on it just a little bit i'm excited to see sort of once we start eliminating players because right now it's kind of nice and even right we've got melee players we've got the range dps and it's sort of like nice little packages even though some of these comps are a little bit weird but i feel like once we get deeper into this like on championship sunday when teams are eliminated i feel like we're going to get just even weirder possibly I, I feel like that's when you weed, weed out the weirdness you know you wouldn't expect like the or strange that. comps or classes to make it through like if trend makes it through he's got like a 0 0.09 percent bet rate <laughs> for making yeah. it through this whole yeah. tournament on the demon hunter like if he makes it to tournament sunday i feel like it's already an impressive feat uh we've got like judal's the only disc priest we've really seen i believe mm -hmm. zenland named disc uh, yeah, I didn't. Not anymore. No, I think you're right. I was so surprised. I called him a holy priest earlier because I just always assume at this point that priests are playing holy. So it's cool to see that that spec getting represented. Also, something really funny. I'm just every single player I go and look at who they what they wrote in the hoping to not see question, and pretty much 90% of them wrote outlaw robes. <laughs> It's just you don't you don't, you don't like being gouged in a kidney shot. I feel like that <laughs> and then kicked. Yeah, this nah, is not. Nah, it's that's, not. That's not a vibe, as they say. Ooh, is Alec actually going down right now? Counterspell on bank. Definitely counterspell a really key uh, ingredient if Trend side is going to win this game. Another counterspell onto bank. Alec is falling dangerously low. Oh my goodness, the life cocoon comes out at 10% health. Uh, and Oscar is really working for it. He doesn't want Blizzo getting that perfect score because any amount of significant leads is going to make it difficult for himself to qualify. So he's got to put up some pressure, put up a fight here and not let Blizzo walk away with this. He's altered time behind the pillar. Heels back up into mid. Bank got crowd control onto Judal. Dragon's Breath onto Blizzo. Blizzo actually breaking out of it. Goes to the Conk banner. Oscar needs to avoid Blizzo at all costs. He's trying to mind control him. He doesn't get the mind control. Now he gets stunned into an imprison on his trinket. Really good awareness from Trend to save that crowd control to stop Blizzo from connecting. Now mind controlled as well. Trying to take the Fury Warrior out of the competition. Oscar gets to a good position on the balcony. Gets another counter spell onto Bank. Goes for the Combustion, but he can't connect. He's trying to get in line of sight of Alec and get some damage out with Combustion. The Grip got charge rooted. Alec is still down low. Dampening is getting high. Is the Mist Sweeper going to be able to keep up with the Dampening? He's struggling, but Alec is turning around Combustion uh, of his own. Which Alec Mage is going to die? Oh, I mean, both of these mages running dangerously low. They both have about the same amount of cooldowns, though, but Alex tipping just lower and lower. Trend is absolutely relentless. Uh, doesn't have meta at the moment available, so I feel like he's got a little bit more time. We're seeing shifting power go out on Alec with... Uh, is he able to get up that poly? Not quite. And it's just... Just, oh my god, Alex, sorry. This... <laughs> Okay, he's fine. Looks like he stabilized just a little bit. Oscar's still running a little low, but I mean, really, I feel like one of these mages is going to go down soon. Uh, I think it's Oscar. Ice block for ah. Shattering Throw. Where's the Shattering Throw? Blizzo gets stunned. He's going for the Shattering Throw. He can break the Ice Block. He gets imprisoned on it. Trent knows exactly when to save that crowd control to stop Blizzo from winning the game. They're doing whatever they can to stall, trying to buy a miracle opportunity with Dampening. We're at 69%. It gets higher and higher. They're swapping to the Fury Warrior. I love that swap. The Fury Warrior's defense is healing, and that's reduced by 70%. So a swap to the Warrior and Dampening is exactly what they need. Trent just needs to connect. He might be able to close it out. Bank gets interrupted. I think that's it. Blizzo's perfect score is slipping through his fingers at the moment oscar he pops combust on 10 percent to go for the kill who's gonna fall first he what? gets it and blisso's perfect <laughs> record is gonna be stomped out at 78 percent dampening crazy strategy development here like on the spot you got to think about it like what well, we're playing mage demon hunter how are we gonna do this oh if we can get to dampening i'll save in prison i'll stop blizzo on his kill windows and then we can swap warrior and dampening like to conceive that strategy in such a small amount of time oh, yeah. when you're just getting stomped the whole game is very impressive.
Yeah, I, I know I've seen a lot of people saying they would love to hear what the comms are for this. They do have a Discord that's optional for them. And apparently I'm getting word from Toxic, our admin that's working really hard behind the scenes here, that they are, they've all just opted to go in the same channel, like all six of them at once. I'm not really sure how that works or if they eventually sort of break up into smaller groups. But I mean, it sounds like a little bit, uh, a little bit of chaos, but obviously it worked out. Now we're seeing a double Fire Mage Priest, a uh, Disc Priest go out against uh, a double a double melee cleave. So we'll see how this one works. Is is Tren, uh, is he running Mana Rift? I feel like I haven't seen it. Uh, no, I, I don't think Mana Rift's in the game anymore. I'm pretty oh, sure gosh. they removed the Mana a while Burns. Since I played, yeah, I was going to say it's been a while since I've even seen it. But I, I mean, it would be good if they had it against uh, these mages. But uh well we'll see how they can do against these fire mages it's gonna be a tough one what do you what do you which one do you think wins here i mean this is definitely fire and double fire mage i'm not even sure how that works i think it's harder to kill a misweaver than a disc priest if double fire mage is gonna win i think it was killing the disc priest um whereas the misweaver can port while they're stunned so if he's like swept he can just port out a line of sight away from the combustion and i think that's mm. gonna be a lot harder for them to kill and the misweaver will immediately heal everyone to full health against fire mage if he's not cc'd so uh they should have a <laughs> lot of uptime here under the mages and the disc priest i think this ends with just the disc priest out of mana so this is a good match for bank to try and sort of even things out um between yep. himself and try and get more points on the board for that overall leaderboard bank is rolling in gets a paralyzed oscar's in trouble he's interrupted he drag double dragon's breath ring of frost polymorphs both of them are casting them to try and get them off their backs <laughs> and try and target down blizzo they actually got a polymorph onto the mistweaver but i feel like they should just play defense keep the melee away from themselves until dampening and then just lob out two massive combusts onto the warrior i, I think that's a safer strategy just Crowd control, polymorph them both at the same time. Take as little damage as possible so your priest doesn't isn't out of mana at that point, and then run down the warrior with a combust. Oh man, certainly certainly a lot going on here in this matchup. Oscar dipping just a little bit low. I mean, it's really hard as a mage, as a caster, get, to get away from a demon hunter, honestly, and a warrior. So there's just not really much crowd control you can get off. You see those polymorphs trying to come out from the mages, but none of them are really able to land uh, too much. And I just feel like I would be really terrified right now if I was in this matchup, if I was either of these mages. But holding off pretty well. We haven't really seen a lot of defensives come off on the side on the right team. Judel still able to hold on to his mana. We've seen him run out quite earlier in these previous matches. Uh, we see Meta just going out with Trent, so we may see some wind go down. Oscar losing health, just used the ice block. Is he able to get the cauterize and stay up though? Oh, Judel getting swapped to as well as Oscar's in an ice block, now into an imprisoned. Trends just crowd controlling, being such an annoyance for the priest as they've got pressure onto two targets. This is an opportunity for Blizzo and Trend to like secure so many more points and kind of climb over the rest of them. Alec has just not been having a good day, I feel like, overall, uh, in terms of point gatherings. He's going to need to up his performance in the series and win with double mage. Can he do it? I don't think so. Oscar gets crushed. Wild Seed has been procced, immediately stomped on. Uh, and now we're going to be sw switching back to that warrior mage versus demon hunter mage. This time around, he'll have the misweaver, a lot of throughput to keep him alive and find those opportunities. And Trend now, it seems like they've got that win condition. CC the warrior on his big cooldowns with stun and imprison. Get the dampening and then go on to the warrior. So if Alec is going to have a shot to put a point on the board, it's got to be with that strategy that was used in the round previously. Otherwise, Blizzard is getting five points. And there's been quite a few players getting five points, and it's going to be so tough yeah. to scale past them if that keeps happening. Oh, yeah. I feel like, you know, when I was first looking at the scores, I thought it was just going to be kind of even. But we're definitely seeing a lot of these players very quickly rise to the top in terms of getting points, not only within the individual matches, but on the overall score as well. I think Nixie is up, uh, he was at the top right in, in, with DPS. He's had some two really good matches, I think, winning almost every one of his games. So we'll see if anybody surpasses him. I think that's the order we're on. But just really early on, uh, we're seeing a lot of aggression come through. Lizzo, once again, just not letting up on, on poor Alec. They're able to get that imprison off on Blizzo. Uh, Trinket's out of it, though, so we'll see if we can get uh, we'll see if we can get something happen here. What do you think the setup looks like, Supa, for either of these teams? Uh, Dragon's Breath, Mistweaver, Stormbolt, Kill Target. Try and polymorph out of the Dragon's Breath uh, is kind of the warrior side. Whereas the Demon Hunter, it seems like they're focused more on defense, so they're not even really trying to CC yeah. the Priest. It's it's like all of Trend's CC. Actually, use this Chaos Nova on the Priest to set up for a polymorph, maybe. Bank rolls in for an impri or Paralyzed. Blizzo's in trouble here. This is round six, the last opportunity to grab points here to qualify overall. The players with the most points will move into Championship Sunday, so you need as many as you can get every single round 
has an impact on that qualification. Who's going to do it? Who's going to get the most points here in this game? Alec is falling behind. He's only at one point right now. He really can't afford to lose this match. Life Cocoon trades up from bank, but now he's counterspelled. I feel like Oscar has been landing so many more counterspells than Alec. Like, I look at the opposing healer, and it's just... He's counterspelled, it seems like, almost 80% yeah. of the time. So Oscar's having a really good game in that regard, but he's behind. He might not be behind on Ice Bug. I think that's just not reset from the last round on the UI. Judal gets a Shadow of Death on the poly there, breaking the crowd control chain. Bank is just staying max range, but is that going to backfire on him as we see Alec trying to blink beside him? Blizzo is chasing him down. Trent's trying to get back onto Blizzo to peel him away. He gets Polymark. Judal dispels. Trent, he's stacked up. If he's got a triple stun, he could send it. I don't think it's off cooldown just yet, but... Could be definitely a good opportunity uh, for his side. They're just going after Blizzo. Double stun secured. Gets broken out, unfortunately. Trend gets a demon proc. Big boost of damage for the demon hunter here. As he gets that demon soul from killing it with the throw glaive. Where is he going to go with it? He's Dragon's Breath. He can't connect at the moment. Judal into a poly. Blizzo gets disarmed by the Mistweaver. Oscar is falling behind, trying to escape. Trend's chasing him down with the metamorphosis. He connects. A ring of yeah. peace. Oh, no. Oscar is pinned at the pillar. Big opportunity for Trent and Alec to get a point here. Can they do it? Can they close it? Judal gets the pain suppression. Keeping Oscar alive. They've imprisoned Blizzo on his conk banner. They're still going for the win. Oscar is so low, and I think they've done it. They've procced him. You know, he ice plucks at 1%. Unbelievable right now that Trent and Alec are putting up such a fight. I was anticipating Blizzo to go 6-0 here, but now Trent is turning it around with these strategies. Yeah, I mean, I, I wonder if at some point today we see some new compositions come to play. Alec using that ice block Whoa. at the very last minute. Still <sighs> low in health, though. Gets that cauterize out. Going to live just a little bit longer. Bank, quite a bit of mana left still, but he's kind of using all of the stops to try and keep Alec alive. Try Alec alive and down goes Alec, and that is going to be another win for Blizzo. That's going to be six points for him. That is a lot of points on the left side of their set. The left yeah. side team. Team left. <laughs> Team left I mean, side, man. I don't know. That, the leaderboard is starting to look really top heavy, I think. Um, if we, if <laughs> yeah, we swoop in and bit. get a look at it. Um, but I feel like Trent had a really good performance, even to win yeah. one of those games uh, with the Warrior Mage matchup, considering Blizzard's experience. And I think maybe the comp advantage, but maybe there isn't. Oh, no. We've got another set of games, just game after game after game here. And it's our Holy Paladin hero, the only one in Europe. And I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> he's down two points right now. I can't lie, I can't fake that at the moment. So he's got to overcome adversity here if he wants to be the only Paladin to make it into Championship Sunday. We've got a double Warlock set up. Mercy has decided to go with Affliction. Infernion has gone with Demonology. So quite an interesting um, spread of specializations for this shuffle. Also, things you love to see. It looks like there's a lot of love, a lot of fans for uh, for Reese in the chat here. So he really is keeping that Holy Paladin dream alive with the, with his fan base that came out to support him. So uh, maybe he can some, get some more points on the board. Trele going down just a little bit, but manages to stay alive. But is he going to stabilize it? He gates at 1%. He's behind the pillar, but he's dotted. I think he's dead. Joe leaps in. Is he going to get the kill? Truly manages to get a kidney shot, stopping Joe from attacking, buying time for Reese to try and get out some heals, but his heals just aren't doing anything. It's 50% dampening. They just need to stay alive, though. That Affliction Warlock is just an unending damage engine if it gets into deep dampening. Can they stay alive? So, or we can see Soul Rot coming up in one second for Mercy. That's when he can really amplify his damage. He's going for it. Soul Rot is popped. We need to get the dots onto all three players and start rotting them down here at 62% dampening. His Reese has basically zero mana, 10%. The BB gets feared up. He's dotted. Infernion's trying to get a fear, gets kicked. Joe is now the target. We see Casting Circle, free casting Warlock in midfield, trying to lay in some punishment, but he's just not digging in. There's not enough damage. Mercy ports at 30%. Joe is chasing him down, reconnecting. Drain life. Is it going to be enough? It doesn't look Mercy. like it. Mercy will fall over. Joe now oh. with three points. Joe is killing it. Joe, uh, Zico said he's hungry, man. Like, wow. he is absolutely hungry to have a good performance in this solo shuffle tournament with three points comparatively to one spread out across the board. And I think we're starting to see the weakness of the Affliction Warlock from that last game. When you're fighting other Warlocks and Fury Warriors that heal themselves, it's really tough to have your dots start to have like a significant impact on the health bars. You just can't move their health. So really struggling in that last game. Also, Mercy has been spending so much time, I feel like, on Warrior that I almost wouldn't even consider Warlock his main anymore. <laughs> like It seems like this is his yeah. all. Um, and they've got double Warlocks. So this it could either be an insane warrior. comp or a flop. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, we'll definitely see, but it's not really a good day to be a Warlock or a Mage. We've got a double melee cleave on the right side here. Maybe this is Reese's chance to get a point on the board. Joe, of course, has been killing it all day, looking to get a fourth point, but Warrior's really coming out on top. I feel like it's, uh, you know, no surprise the Outlaws are doing so well, but at least for me, Super Tease, I feel like it's, it's cool to see these Warriors do just as well, but it's really no surprise as well when you've got people like Joe um, and Blizzo controlling those characters so we'll see what they can do in round number three but double warlock what a composition uh, i love seeing these double classes not something we ever get to see in awc uh it pops up every once in a while yeah, i don't know how often it really works but every once in a while someone gets <laughs> desperate and tries to break out like double shot what do you or mean something. double outlaw was like the, oh yeah the, the meta double breaker was... last awc <laughs> it a worked, main staple every other time but yeah i would agree not really maybe the double demon hunter days too yeah, those are good um, times. Shout out Nez. to yeah. <laughs> He's always Sidu. <laughs> Wait a minute, there's a trend here. It's always Sidu doing these double comps, but I think Demo Aff, it could be really scary. You get the Mortal Strike from the Demonology that got buffed, so it's 25% healing reduction. And then you got dots on the whole team. It's like as a demo lock, you got like a little mini Joe Fernandez pet running around, you know, putting up portal strike on the people. Doesn't hit as hard as Joe though. Oh, uh, maybe yeah. not. Blade Storm. Oh, big heals coming in from Reese, saving the whole team. But the damage is just constant. Mercy's rot pressure really tearing apart Reese's team. He hasn't got a single point. This is devastating. They need the kill. Can they finish Infernion? They're so uh -huh. low at this point. Double Howl of Terror. Infernion looks like he's recovering as he blinks back to midfield. Reese also looks like he has managed to recover his side. Such a dangerous moment for both teams here. Round three, we're already halfway through this solo shuffle. Infernion's pet is dead. Joe, he needs to keep that pet dead. Cheap shot on Infernion. Trilly gets a kidney shot onto Habibi, setting up the damage onto Infernion with no soul link, no mortal strike. I think it's over for him. Full fear onto Habibi. Joe Fernandez is oh, tearing the competition apart. Wow, Joe just... He definitely, I don't know who said it first, definitely hungry. Dude has had breakfast, lunch, and dinner today, looking for dessert with that last win. And I wonder if we're going to see yet another game where Joe actually manages to win every single round here. This is match five out of six. So uh, pressure certainly ramping for players in this matchup like Reese and Inferdeon who don't, and Mercy, don't have a lot of points, only one on the board. This is really going to start getting a momentum in terms of just all of the players overall, it's it's getting top heavy. It's going to get even more top heavy after this matchup if some of these players don't catch up just a little bit. I'm very excited to see what the leaderboard looks after this because we've been seeing Dude. so many matches, so many points. Like, who's coming out on top before we move into the final set of rounds? Inferno on Gates out of the Spear of Bastion. It's really interesting as Joe is playing a completely different covenant than Blizza. Like, he's been playing Spear of Bastion every single round, whereas Blizza's been playing, I think, Honk Banner Necrolord every single round. So even differences in build between those players is really cool to see. Um, this one starting off a little bit slower than the others. We're, of course, only 30 seconds in, so I say that. Um, Reese gets feared away. Nice crowd control chain, but no damage to connect with it just yet. You can see stuns incoming, trying to set up damage onto Infernion, but Joe gets peeled away with an axe toss. Unfortunately, that blinding light of Reese ends up breaking. He's got one point on the board. He can't afford to lose any more matches if he wants to at least go three and three and keep things a little bit even on the healers. It's way more cutthroat as the healers. There's just less spots uh, overall to be able to take. So is he going to manage to do it? Even up the score three to three against Habibi. Fernion still the main target. Caught in another spear of Bastion by Joe Fernandez. Snipes that from across the field. And I know a lot of warriors that would miss these spears. It, it can be one of the most heroic moments or one of the most awkward moments when you throw a spear and it misses. Uh, so the pressure is on for Joe to not whiff any of those spears throughout this series. Try and maintain his lead with four points already. Charlie Bartom's looking to get second in this series, and the Warlocks seem to be like the ones struggling, and it's because that fell guard keeps going down, and Ferdinand's trying to res it. Oh, nice wild charge from Habibi. He roots Joe Fernandez and stops him from getting in the room to prevent Infernia from casting the fell guard. But Mercy was just dying to Trille in the meantime uh, in the back line. Is he just going to die? He's insane damage onto him. Reese gets a big heal. Manages to keep him alive. It costs the unending resolve, though. Just constant back and forth in these games. Nice gateway from Infernion to escape that Spear of Bastion. Really good positioning to break that lockdown and escape the bonus damage. Uh, but we can see Joe in a position to get a triple fear. He gets dismantled. Can't connect, unfortunately, with the triple fear. But he's actually into a Hammer of Justice now. Trilly could get swapped. He's got to be careful. He's got cooldowns. He's going to Evasion and Cloak. Stay alive in this position. Try and get aggressive and try and turn it around with a swap onto the Paladin. Going after Reese. How is Reese boss going to deal with this? He's going to have to Divine Shield, break out, and go immune to everything. Top his whole team. And now they've got to get aggressive. they got to close this out. No Divine Shield in the Paladin. And Dampening is getting high fast. 
I I'm gonna be honest with you. I think Trillet wins. Uh, I'm going off off topic here, but Transmog so alone. So I think can we, can we just give him an extra point for that. <laughs> loving, I'm loving the Transmog for him. But. Thank you. You want yeah. to give him a... That's fair, right? Yeah. I'm just Even if you don't win the whole thing, there's a bonus that. hidden award yeah, yeah, for yeah. transmog. <laughs> yeah. They oh no! Oh my God! As I'm distracting everybody about the transmog, we have a player go down, Reese dying there in the corner, and we are moving on to the next matchup. Reese still only at one point. Mercy only at one point. Joe still only has four points, but still. Looking very solid here. Trille also getting gaining another one. So I feel like at the moment, Outlaw, Outlaw and Warriors definitely, definitely coming out on top here in terms of DPS. I feel like for for healers at least, Supertees, it seems pretty even across the board. Maybe maybe Holy Paladin's not quite as good as Dru Druids out overall for all of the matches. It's making me question whether picking Brain in NA was a good idea. Um, but it's also Please, Brain, the so unkillable I'm not. Yeah. Exactly. I, I can't. I can't. I cannot question Brain at this point. It's Reese. Reese has got to step up here. Reese has got to be a boss. He's got round five here, moving into round six. So can he get some points? He needs whatever he can grab right now, and he's got Joe Fernandez on his team. And Joe Fernandez has been owning at the moment. So if he's going to do it, it's got to be now. Infernion's down below half. Reese is struggling, but gets a big heal, tops the team. Infernion's trying to get aggressive, but Dark Soul is rolling for Mercy, which means Reese has to heal through a lot of damage at the moment. Has managed to navigate his way so far through it, but for how much longer? Infernion's at half health, gets less of protection out of the kidney shot, has to resurrect his Felguard, and as Demonology into Affliction, it seems rough. His pest is constantly dead. Is he going to manage to pull off this matchup as he's currently in the lead over Mercy on the Affliction? Mercy ports away back into the room, escaping Joe Fernandez for now. Nope, Joe just leaps right on top of him, just recklessly going after him. Trill is overextended as well on Infernion. Just both melee DPS training the Warlocks, regardless of where their teammates are. They just don't care. It's target-acquired Warlock. They're just going <laughs> in. Yeah, really. I mean, it's just, it's certainly difficult to be up against these melees. Uh, it's kind of a melee competition here with the solo shuffle, but time is running out for the Holy Paladin dream for Reese Boss here. He's got to get another, he's, he's really hoping to get more points here. And Fornion trying to get a fear out, trying to get some CC chains going and look at look if they can make a play happen here, but it's really relentless pressure from this left-sided team. Infernion dropping in health. Joe dropping in health as well. See if they can stabilize just a little bit. Infernion getting his fell guard back alive once again. Is that the mini Is that the mini Joe that you were referring to? Infernion's yeah, fell yeah. guard? The okay, fell yeah, guard is the mini so, Joe. <laughs> so Joe number two uh, back alive. But I mean, Infernion definitely having a hard time keeping up his, his, uh, his fell guard. So we'll see if he can uh, stabilize just a little bit there. But uh, we'll see what they can do. See if they can make a play. Things not looking so Super, super tough yet, but I mean, dampening, ramping up, Sid. Yeah, it's, and I feel like it's a wild card. Like anybody can take this. Mm. Oh, the hammer on the evasion by Boss into the War Stomp. Not enough to take him out, but it is moves like that that are going to create possibilities for him to get more points in this series. He does not want Habibi to be walking away with five points uh, in this. It would be devastating for the healer leaderboard overall. Really open things up. We can see Habibi pre fleshcrafts Joe Fernandez, Stormbolt, immuning the stun. But Infernion is so oh. low. Trill is going in for the kill. Is he going to reconnect here? He's trying to, but Infernion navigates away from him so well. And now Trill's caught in a full fear, can't connect. Now Infernion's pushing in for the kill. Gets a demonic tyrant cast onto Mercy. The tyrant is pushing in. Joe Fernandez is chasing him down as well. Can they connect? Mercy's trying to get back to his teammate. He gates back to Habibi at the pillar, but he's still all over him. Joe Fernandez going in for the kill. The BB actually has to dispel off an unstable affliction. Must have got spell reflected. It's actually putting him a bit behind. Mercy, Woo! no Infernion. Is he going to go down? He soul shapes a 10% ports back in the room. His Felguard's dead. <laughs> Trille is going in for the kill. Wheelbarrows are out onto Infernion. He gets incapped on his res. He can't get his pet. He's just dead oh in the dirt. Wow. Just relentless pressure on the world on Infernion and throughout that game couldn't keep himself stabilized in terms of health, couldn't keep his fell guard alive, and he did go down in the end. There, it wasn't. I mean, you can just tell how much pressure he had on him, how much uptime with with the difference in damage between Mercy and Infernion. I know they're playing different specs, but it definitely tells a huge story here for the damage uh, from both of these teams. But uh, that was that was match number six, right? That was the last one. Yep. So yep. 
I need a leaderboard. I want to see a leaderboard right yeah, now more too. than anything. Like who, who's coming out on top now? Where's Joe and where's Blizzo? Like I want We're that matchup. The they got to both get through so I get that matchup, right? Like I need that. Oh my God. Look at, Whoop. look at Joe on top. Number one, numero uno at the moment here over Nixie. Truly Bartom taking the top three. We got Blizzo in top seven, which is still clean. I think it's top 12 overall. Your call, Shadow Death, still in the runnings as well, moving into the, the next set of uh, solo shuffles. So still anyone's game here, oh. um, like looking at these points, uh, at least within the first page, right? This is only the first page. And how many DPS is 36? 36 DPS. Oh, it's not. Yeah. Okay, now we're looking at the. This is the one where we don't want to look because it's like they're not having the best oh, run no. today. It's um, all caster classes at the bottom here. Is Twinkle playing? Twinkle playing uh, Balance or Feral? He's Feral. He's playing okay. Feral. Chime as Outlaw. Alec is playing Fire Mage. Uh, the Fire mm. Mage is not having a good run right now. Um, with Oscar all. and Raikou also down here. Swapsy and Jamie looking to try and snag their way up there into the near future, I can imagine. Gelu as well, Echo as well. Uh, but it's looking really unlikely, I think, for Alec and Trimaz at this point. They're just so far behind. Yeah, definitely going to be really difficult to sort of catch up at this point. But we'll see if uh, we'll see what they do in subsequent matches. We're going to switch over to healers and their rankings right now. Judo, the only disc priest today. At number one right now with nine points, Clyde following closely behind, and then we've got two uh, two holy priests in third and fourth. So kind of the same story over here. Uh, just you know, a couple couple single people having a really good day so far and getting nine points. Does that mean you wait? Okay, so if you hadn't lost a single game, you would have played two matches by now, right? So you'd have yeah, 12 you'd points have 12. total. So so that's that's pretty solid. It's a pretty good win rate if you actually do quick. Mental math said, what's that percentage? What's 9 divided by 12? I was never mm -hmm. good at division mm -hmm. or... Oh, it's 75%. I knew Wait, that. Is it actually? No. Well, I don't know. Zico, so I'm gonna, Zico <laughs> chimed in our ears and you said that it is, so I'm going to trust him. <laughs> Asgrath needs to get some points here. I, I, yeah. I'm not gonna, I don't want to be wrong. I can't be wrong. Asgrath was that your prediction? Points. Yes. It, it, it's not looking too good for your prediction, you said. Actually, we're kind of tied. My prick is uh, Zan, yours is Asgraf. They were both at seven wins apiece. So this is the one that's going to decide it all. And uh, these are replays from uh, what we just witnessed right here. I think I chose Chaz for healer. I was going to go with Chaz. It was for it really me, it was like, but, yeah, it was like, do I go with Chaz? Do I go with Zan? But in the end, I went with Zen because chess is a classic Andy. <laughs> Whoa. Aren't you a classic Andy? I'm a little bit of a classic Andy, but, Damn. you know, I'm not, I'm not competing here. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. Yeah, but I think the, bi the big surprise is actually uh, the Warlocks. I didn't expect the DAC to actually have such a, such a good run in Zipai as well. Yeah, you did have a good one, a good run in that the last matchup, but I think he's still kind of low overall, right? Because his first match wasn't that great. Yeah, if yeah I remember that's right. right. Uh, but I think he's still the highest, the highest warlock, if I remember. So uh, good to see him catch up just a little bit. So it is doable if you take if you know take Dak as an example. But uh, these are just a few replays from some of our previous matches. So. Who, uh, who who did you vote for 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 DPS Zico? I know who's, who said did, but I voted for Waz, and I voted for Peekaboo. And then, so you voted for Rogue for best best overall yeah, best, DPS spec, best overall DPS class, uh, Rogue. Um, and then I picked Waz, Peekaboo, and for healers, I picked Zen and Brain in NA. But Paladins don't look too hot right now. So uh, I don't know. I might need to choose. Ah, it's brain though. It's brain. If so, if there's somebody who's gonna make it work, it's gonna be brain, right? Yeah, I agree. You know, seeing him last year in AWC, Sid terming, uh, coining him the the hardest mage to kill, or sorry, the hardest paladin to kill, or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, he was right. Brain, brain has just been dominating. But uh, there's been a lot of druids. Like uh, a lot of druids. I, what what did you pick as your top healer pick? Uh, Druid. I did. I think I'd have to look. Let me. I can go look okay. at my Twitter. But I know that I picked Sidu because I, you know, I'm gonna be a little biased Ooh. there. And uh, these are the most oh, voted healer that. classes for everyone, though. And it looks like uh, Priest and Druid are tied. Yeah. Exactly. I Priest. 
Oh, that that is spot on, actually. Mist Weaver, look at Mist Weavers. Hey. All right. Okay, let's see. So Chaz got the most amount of votes. Zenlin, look at Zenlin. Wow, he got a lot of votes as well, actually. Then has got. Uh, there's a lot of Zen fans out there. That's good. I'm definitely one of them. Uh, he's 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 crazy. <laughs> now. And next or as well. Or before. Are you just a bandwagoner? Zen? What? No, no. I, I played with Zen. We got rank one together. I, I knew, oh, I've known him for okay. a while. We used to play a lot of uh, Arcane Holy Priest in twos. He was the only one who wanted to play with me, like in BFA oh. when I was Arcane Mage. He was okay. the only one who believed in the in the dream. So uh, I, I had to believe you. in him back. No, well, okay. if, if he's got a pretty uh, a pretty funny bio, also Zen Lin. If you look at what he submitted to us, he said, "I don't I don't know why I don't know why he added this." He says his favorite food is rice, tuna, and mayo. And then he said, I'm not as good of a priest as a certain Finnish priest, which is sad. Who's he, who's he talking about? Oh, he's talking about meh. He's definitely talking about ah, meh. Ah, yeah, meh. I forgot he was Finnish. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, that's fair. And then his, his biggest threat is his own mental. I don't... <laughs> yeah, no, he was really nervous. Uh, he, oh, was, he was? He, yeah, when he saw my picks, he's like, oh, you shouldn't have voted for me. I'm going to choke and stuff like that. Um, but you know, I believed in him. I told him, "Don't choke." I was gonna vote on Chas, so uh, mm. make me proud. And uh, I mean, so far he's been holding it down, uh, but it's, it's still gonna come down to these last six uh, sets of games here that we have. And uh, look at the look at the most voted DPS class, Rogue, seventy six percent, of course. But I'm surprised to see Warlock actually up there. And look at me poor too. Tren, and Mage. I know. That's only Trends. that that that's probably one. I wonder if we had the statistics for how many votes that is. I bet it's like one person out of all the people <laughs> that voted. Um, it sounds like we have a, a thousand people. So we'll, uh, yeah, in I don't total, point oh nine percent of a thousand, whatever that is. So uh, not a lot of love for demon hunters, but trend, you know, holding his own for sure. But warlocks and mages certainly not doing well. I feel like it, not not uh, proportionate to the percentage. I think from from uh, the votes here. Honestly, when it comes down to mages, I feel like a lot of people are making a mistake going fire mage. I, I think in a lot of these games, when you see that you're in a melee heavy group, just go go arcane or go frost, because at least you're going to have yeah. some consistent damage if you're frost. And if you're arcane, you can just kind of run around and you know live and maybe try to get some points in dampening. Because I feel like uh, playing fire, you're just uh, you're you're just going to tank a lot of damage. And we got our match predictions uh, live right now. Guys, go to pickems.gg. Vote. Who do you think is going to take it here in this group? Dacro is getting a lot of love now after they saw um, in his yeah. uh, previous match, uh, kind of rotting everything down. Acro had a lot of points earlier, but he's, uh, he's uh, kind of dropped a little bit. Infernion. Come on, guys. Somebody's got to give Infernion some, some love. love. This guy Infernion. is crazy how good he is. Yeah, I mean, he just had a really tough matchup last game. A lot of a lot of hard counters. He was kind of just getting tunneled down, always losing uh, his his little mini Joey or Joe Fernandez, as Sid would call him. Uh, so he's you know had a bit of a rough day, but <laughs> we'll see if he can continue uh, getting a, getting some more points. But I'm surprised at the 24% for Acro as well, considering how well the rogues just in general have been doing i i've only seen the first match that he was in when he was against chile um who actually got quite a, a bit more points in that round so how do you think these classes are going to interact with each other zico i think i mean zipai just kind of blasted off uh, last time zipai mm. had an extremely good showing uh in the match uh, where he was in the same group as jamie and um I think it's actually going to be pretty even. You're going to have, um, you know, uh, Locke and Ellie together uh, twice. You're going to have, you know, Rogue Ellie, Rogue Locke. Uh, I feel like these are all pretty good comps. The only thing that might be a little bit sketchy is the, the double Warlock uh, matchup uh, when you play double Warlock uh, Pally or double Warlock Priest. But even that, honestly, uh, could work out. I'm excited to see also Infernion was playing demo, I believe, just now. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if he respects to Affliction because Dakro's been having pretty good success with it. Mercy actually did spec Affliction um, after that first round. So it's going to be interesting to see if Infernion decides to go with it as well. Or if, oh, look at that. Infernion's finally getting some votes. Yay. Things are getting balanced. Everyone is just, ac poor Acro, man. He, yeah. You're like, oh yeah, 25% Acro, that's low. And Acro is just falling behind here. Uh, actually, 
uh, going to be looking to upset this uh, bracket, even though he is that good, and even though he is a rogue, it's very interesting. And we're you rigged actually it. <laughs> you, rigged it. you rigged it in favor of of not Acro. Now people are just voting for everyone but him. Poor guy, what you did. Yeah, poor Acro. Uh, I'm sorry, bro, but. Um, Inferno, look at that. Inferno is getting a lot of votes. Zipai as well. I feel like Zipai, uh, for good reason. If there is one LA Shaman that's really going to go through here, I, I would bet that it would be Zipai. Zipai, Swapsy, Jamie, they're all extremely talented. But I feel like Zipai is just, you know, he's just one cut above the rest because he's just been that LA main for so long, always holding it down. Swapsy been more of a kind of a multi classer um, in that regard, playing, you know, DK and. and just everything um yeah and it's so, been yeah. a while we've been able to see him on the the shaman as well you know we haven't really been able to see him step into his main for quite some time because it hasn't really been very good so we're we're seeing him play a lot of those alts so it's great to see not only him not only z by but but swapsy and jamie as well going back onto those shamans i i wonder if also we see a little bit of enhanced shaman especially with all these caster cleaves I don't think Zipai is going to go enhanced, to be honest. Because uh, he had a lot. It would be Swapsy if it was anyone. Yeah, Swapsy, I could see doing it. Because Swapsy, he is so good at those cleaves. He is. Uh, he's, I mean, he's really good at the Ellie as well. He's had a phenomenal success, you know, throughout the years on basically everything he's played. But uh, I feel like Swapsy is more. Uh, he likes to cleave more than he likes to, to be a caster. I, I, I mean, I don't know that for sure, but that's kind of the impression that I get uh, watching him play. Um, whereas Zipai, I feel like if he can't play Ellie, he will play, pick it every single time. Uh, well, what do you think about the healers here, though, Aya? We got Epic Shot is next. Um, and then we got Reese Boss on that H-Pal. Um, I feel like... Oh, no, Epic Boss... Sorry, it's JJ. Getting, uh, getting mixed up here. Yeah, no, JJ is Epic Shot. I guess, like, that's his, uh, his BNET name, but that he's just mostly known as JJ. But... Uh, I mean, he had a really good game. The first round I saw him, uh, Reese, not quite as well. Last time, I think he just got um, a little bit of a bad, you know, bad crit with these compositions. Um, but also just in general, Holy Paladin not not doing so well in this so solo shuffle composition. So we'll see if he fares just a little bit better playing alongside a Warlock and an Ellie Shaman this time around. So especially on this wide open map might be good for them. Uh, but we'll see what Acro and Dak can get done here in this round, Zika. Yeah, I mean, this is a great map for, you know, the casters. Uh, so I'm thinking if you're Infernion, if you're Zipai, you're going to have a field day here. And Infernion is sticking with that Demo Warlock, staying true to himself right now. Dak doing a lot of damage here. Zipai getting bopped. Ooh, they overlapped it with that Astro Shift. And that's the thing when you're playing these solo queue shuffles, uh, you just both react at the same time. You don't have that same kind of level of uh, coordination. You're consistently matched with new people. And, uh, you know, things like that can definitely cost Zipai's team. Uh, later on but look at that big swap here onto jj double stun oh jj Get, playing it a little bit greedy right there but he does survive around the corner and i feel like this is a match that could go a little bit into dampening um i think if you are zipai and inferno you might want to be the <laughs> yeah that's true actually we're already in dampening but i feel like it, it could go the distance because the map is so large yeah, I think it was this map that we saw go to 99% before anybody died. And, uh, you know, the players know that it starts really quickly. So we're also seeing kind of a lot of people play into that, it seems like, you know, with the uh, stealthing until until it starts or something for a whole minute. So I don't know. We'll see if, if dampening has, any, has a huge effect on this one. But I do imagine that these ones are going to go just a little bit longer. It seems like no one's really in trouble just yet. Uh, you know, Acro getting chiseled down just a little bit with his health. But he's probably going to be stabilizing soon. See if they get that hex off. Not quite. And we'll see here what happens. Oh my gosh. Oh, Reese actually uh, using, his, using his divine shield right there already. Only two minutes in. And uh, I feel like if you have a melee on your team on this map, it could be a liability. I feel like it's in Acro's best interest to try to close the gap and just try to get a win early on. Reese right now manages to top his entire team here, but look at the damage Zipai is taking, and uh, Dak actually doing a phenomenal job right now on the Warlock. Doesn't have his Astro Shift, and he just had to use his Trinket there as well, and look at Acro. Has to be so careful now. He's in deep dampening, a minute away from his Cloak of Shadows. He's got no defense, so he's definitely doing the right thing here. They're swapping over to Joe Fernandez Jr. right there, but 
Uh, they will port it back and heal it up. And look at Acro right now, stuck in the Lightning Lasso from Zipai. We'll have to trade out the Vanish. Here comes the Boon of the Ascendant. Reese has no bubble. They might actually be able to go for him. They're going for like Zipai instead. Huge damage coming in. Yeah, and Bernie also not switching specs, which interesting considering uh, how he kind of struggled just a little bit in that ra last match. Dak might be going down here very shortly, though. J JJ chasing after him, trying to stabilizing that health. Still not able oh. to recover, though. And I think he's going to go down behind this pillar here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that is going to conclude match number one. But yeah, it is interesting. I think this is, unless I missed one of the ones that I was off on earlier, I think this is the first matchup where there haven't been one melee and one, like two two melee and two casters in the same match. Like you've got a double caster and then one melee and one caster. So it makes it uh, just the dynamic between the two teams just a little bit interesting. But now we're seeing both of those Warlocks um, on one of those teams and we're seeing the Ellie, the Ellie row composition on the left side with Reese backing them up for Holy Priest. So this might be his game. He wasn't able to get a lot of points in that last match, but we'll see if Reese can get a win out with this one. We'll see who gets the opener, Acro. Try I can't even see where he went. He went behind the camera. We'll see who he opens <laughs> up on. There he goes. Yeah, and we're going to see immediately here the double Warlock now on a large map. So this could be kind of okay. Uh, Acro was a little bit of a liability there in that last match. Already had to trade his cloak here. But I feel like he should be able to get it back if they play their cards right. Uh, but still, without that Cloak of Shadows, he's going to have to be a little bit defensive. Dak immediately porting in very aggressively here, doing tons of damage on that Affliction Warlock. And... Uh, We'll see if they can keep up that pressure because that is all uh, that's been about so far in the solo shuffle. Just snowballing that pressure, aggression, 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 and pushing the pace. Right now, JJ stuck in a full sap Infernion, trading out the unending resolve, spamming out the fears. He gets stunned on it. JJ using the IQD to break free there on the last second. That is a massive trade. And they traded unending resolve there as well. So no defense here on the side of the double Warlock team. That just seems like the play style for Solo Shuffle. It's like they pick one one guy that they want to go off of. They don't swap a lot. They just kind of chisel him down until he dies. So uh, we'll see if that continues in that fashion within this matchup. But Infernia not really able to catch a break. And he goes down only a minute and a half into the game. And that's going to yep. be the end of match number two. <laughs> Poor Infernion. It, it was that moment uh, early on on that. Uh, they try to sit through that blind sap. And then at the very, very last couple of moments of it, they just kind of hard panicked. And JJ traded out everything he had. Infernion traded out everything to kind of allow JJ to sit there. And uh, I think if JJ just traded and Infernion held on, of course, now, you know, we saw what happened. But if they made that call uh, during the game early on, probably would have been better. But it is a tough one to make. And yep. once again, Zipai here looking to dominate another group here on that Eli Shaman. He's got Dak with him. Last time they played together, it was uh, it was beautiful to watch. Let's see if they can do it again. Yeah, well, to see very confidently walking out into the map there, just already putting out that aggression. Just a reminder how quickly chat or how quickly dampening does start in these matches. So if we're seeing uh, that in pressure coming out very early on, Infernion already dipping in health just a little bit really unfortunate we're just seeing him get bullied in these matchups and i gotta feel a little bit bad for him but uh dak going down just a little as well able to stabilize quickly though and uh this match just kind of continuing on once again with these warlocks just getting uh quite a bit of pressure on them lots of uptime from those melee classes or from that melee class uh acro having a lot of uptime as well kind of chasing after dak over there you can see it just in the corner there but right now um, Infernion lost his Felguard once again, really struggling to keep it alive. I mean, it's, you know, definitely not easy considering these, this matchup. So, uh, do you think that Infernion Zico should have switched his, his spec? I know we talked about it just a little bit before this matchup actually started, but it seems like the same thing is happening Ooh. with him that happened in that last match. Ooh, Reese had to use bubble. They had to use, ba they had to use everything. Had bubble, bop, and on any resolve. I think Infernion should have swapped. Honestly, it's hard to say. Right now, he's beating out the Affliction Warlock, so um, I feel like yeah. if he's more comfortable playing the demo, uh, I think that's what he should play. So far, uh, it's been doing pretty well. Dak, on the other end, on that Affliction Whoop. Warlock, definitely 
been struggling here a little bit so far in this matchup, but it's still only uh, the third round here. Anything can happen. Dak, though, with nothing left. Big overlap there between him and Reese. Reese actually throwing out that second blessing of protection. That is the last uh, defensive cooldown they have. They need to try to get a win right now. Infernion using that unending resolve, which is his final defense cooldown as well. Reese now sitting through a blind. I think that's got to be it. Dak is hard. Ah! They're stuck here, and Dak will get popped. He's potted. Can they See? keep it alive? Can they yeah. keep it alive? They cannot. And uh. Dak will get dropped right there. So Infernion picking up his second win right now. And, uh, you know, Ben talked about it a little bit. When you're playing those solo shuffles, the main thing you care about, I mean, sure, now it's a tournament, so there's a, little, a lot of other things you care about. But if I was in this match, I would care about beating my own class. If I'm playing against another Warlock, I just yeah. want to make sure I get more wins than, than that Warlock because class envy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, this is my formal apology to Inferno, and I, you know, definitely have more points than Dak right now. So I guess that you are you are beating your own class. However, <laughs> look at that mouth. <laughs> Love that mouth. Uh, <laughs> you are. They are on the same team. So we got double warlock, holy priest uh, versus the rogue Ellie Shaman with the, with JJ. So we'll see what happens with this composition. Uh, we're seeing a lot of those double class compositions today. Something super fun to see. Uh, so we'll see if they can beat this one out. I feel like this is a, a good map advantage as well for the double warlock composition. A lot of space here to move around those pillars. Um, but, you know, obviously a lot of space as well for Acro to hide. Absolutely. A, a quick question for you, Aya, here. What do you think about so, Infernion's transmog? Because I saw you were talking mm -hmm. about uh, <laughs> uh, the transmog earlier. Would he get an extra point here or nah? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I just liked his glaives. I just like Trilly's glaives in the last one. They're like, what is she talking about transmog? Because I like the glaives, but yeah, Infernion's transmog is pretty good too. <laughs> How does that work with TR? Because they're on the tournament realm. Does that, like, if they have this transmog in the tournament realm, does that mean they have it in the game or do they just have free range to whatever they want? When they're on I think they realm? just have free reign uh, to do whatever they want. Uh, that makes sense. Players. Some players, sure you know, they, they really put a lot of time into it and uh, some, they just kind of go <laughs> with uh, whatever they're wearing. <laughs> Yeah, what what type Acro. of player put, are you? Oh, I gotta be stylish. I got my top hat. I, I'm making surprising. sure everything is on point. You know, that's you. You gotta look fly for the occasion here. I mean, yeah. you never know. Uh, it well, could just get you to win. You know. They say you know they say dress for the job you want. I think that that also says it <laughs> works for for tournaments. You know, transmog for the type of success. I don't know, but Reese uh, <laughs> almost dying there, but he put out some put out some cool uh, some defensives and is stabilized just a little bit, but um, full mana basically on both sides here. Um, who do you think is doing better so far? I mean, it's, you know, pretty, these these games are going so quickly, but this one just doesn't feel like we're seeing a lot of opportunities for a kill here. I think Infernion is definitely in some trouble right now. Okay, as I sound. say that. Reese has no way out. There is nothing he can do here. Ah! Back going for the fear, they do land the killing blow. Aya coming in with the curse once again here. Uh, you got two day. warlocks and one Aya is still better at cursing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that, that was, uh, that was, you know, he looked good and then he, and then he didn't. Kind of, kind of how it goes, right? <laughs> All right, well, we switched things up here. And now we've got Infernion with z Might be a lethal combination. We got Acro uh, over there with Dak. And with this switch up, who wins this one? Ooh, that's a, it's going to be a tough one to call. I mean, I feel like uh, z has been kind of cleaning up right now. I, I think yeah. I'm going to go with z and Infernion right now. But I feel like Dak needs this win. He's He hasn't won a single yes. round yet. It's it's round five. Dak, this is do or die. You, if he wins this and the next one, he can still at least tie with Infernion in that Warlock uh, you know, uh, class envy bracket, which isn't a real bracket, but still. I feel like that's what you're going for right now if you're Dak. But uh, as I say that, there's a lot of pressure coming out now onto Reese here. And they might not even be able to get there. Reese still in midfield here, kind of stuck, just taking tons and tons of damage so far. Finally, will recover. And a little bit of dot pressure coming in as well here from Dak. He's got his cooldowns rolling. And he is getting a little bit of pressure. But still, just forced to play at that pillar. z right now, just looking like the King Wizard. King King of the Wizards, yeah. Especially with uh, if you looked at Dak's points before we went into this match, he was doing really well compared to all of the other warlocks. So what Ben said definitely holds true. Infernion beating out his own class in this matchup for sure, uh, which is for I think bragging rights just on its own. So 
Uh, we're seeing a lot of really good class representation here. So we'll see if, uh, I hope, I mean, I hope Dak doesn't end this matchup with no points on the board. I think that'd be the first time this happens today. Not super sure, but it wouldn't look good either way. I mean, these points are extremely important, especially as we're getting deeper and deeper into this day. Um, a lot of these te a lot of these players, they have two and three points and then Dak's really got to, really got to shape things up. Two more chances on the board here. Infernion dipping just a little bit low. Looks like he's stabilized though. Uh, he's going to be running away from that fell guard as well, seeing if he can uh, get anything out, see if they can set up some pressure on the team, on the left team, Zika. Yeah, let's see if they can do it. Right now, this is looking like Dax win. Finally, Risto caught up in the hex. Actually, Trinket's out of that hex, and they will be able to drop Infernium. There oh my it gosh. is. Going to be able to get a point on the board right there for the young Dak. And uh, Acro actually looking like he's winning this group. It's going to be between yeah. Acro and Zipai. If Zipai wins this one, uh, if Zipai and Dak wins this one, then Dak will tie with Infernion at least. It, you know, it doesn't really matter that much, but uh, Zipai, of course, it matters for the overall standing. You want to get as many points as possible. Um, Zipai will tie for first with Acro, whereas if Acro wins this one, he will be a clear winner of this group, and there will be a tie for second between Infernion and Zipai. Also, if uh, Dax team wins, JJ will tie with Reese Boss, whereas if Reese Boss can take this win here, he will, uh, you know, keep the Holy Paladin dream alive for a little bit more. So, a lot on the line here for this round six. Who do you think is taking it, Aya? I think it's really hard to say. I think my heart is kind of rooting for, for Acro and Infernion here. I think it just might be a um, little bit better of a composition, but I, it's kind of hard to tell when you don't really see these two often on the AWC. Oh. Dak might even go down right here. Uh, that would be definitely a caster curse on my end, so I'm just going to apologize ahead of time. But Dak really not able to stabilize JJ, trying to keep him alive. Gates away, trying to get just out of the line of sight from anybody, but Acro absolutely relentless but he's able to get that health up um, and stabilize for just a little bit longer, Zico. Unreal. I really thought Dak might just go down there with that full sap, but now JJ turning on the heat here. He's got the big, big hits coming in here from his Kyrian. Infernia dropping dangerously low, using the unending resolve. Teleports behind safety. Reese Boss picks him up with the Avenging Wrath. Dak with the triple drain right now, doing a lot of work here with the rot damage. Infernia still taking a lot of damage here. It's a Warlock showdown to the finish. Who is going to take it? Dak summoning a new Fell Hunter there with that Fell Domination. Can Dak stay alive is the big question. Acro is just relentless in his pressure right now, building up the next uh, kind of assault. He's got his Vanish. He could reset his blind with it right now and try to go for the win, or he could wait a little bit and then go for the blind sap. They're actually going for the kidney shot. Here comes the damage. Acro actually did Vanish right there. I don't think he's playing Vanish Legendary, though, because he still oh. has it. Dak, though, Dak catches big heals again, but still dampening at 22%. I don't know if he's going to be able to survive. JJ's on oh. prayer control. He's trying to keep him alive in the back line. Guardian Spirit comes out in the nick of time, and I think Dak should ah. be able to survive. They procs the Guardian, and they go for the flash heal, but still Dak is just not feeling safe here. How is he going to stay alive? Finally catches it. a little bit of heals, but still he just can't recover. He's back ah. trinking out, teleporting right. away, trying <laughs> Trying to blink out, but it's not going to be enough. And it will be Acro and Reese Boss that wins this one. And Infernion and Zipai will tie for second. Ooh. Boy, that was a bit of a back and forth there. Just both of those... Both of those warlocks, it seems like, just you know, couldn't couldn't stabilize their health, just constantly being pressured. Uh, here the here's the match results as well. We can take a look at the damage breakdown, but I mean, just tons of pressure coming out from both sides. Uh, inter interesting to see how that plays out. I wonder if like we we find a new composition Zico today. Is it like something <laughs> something nobody realized was really good? Do you think that'll happen, or is that just a pipe dream? I feel like if it was going to happen, this is the type of environment where it could break out. I, I think yeah. a lot of, I, I think also a lot of people who haven't played together might start playing together after this because, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's like, uh, it's like the, the first introduction between, you know, some of these players. Uh, so icebreaker. I think, you know, yeah, exactly. The icebreaker. We haven't seen any frost mages, but we at least have some icebreakers. <laughs> That's true. Well, I, yeah, it is interesting. We've only seen we've only really seen Fire Mage, but uh, I mean, you guys were kind of saying that, that you know Arcane might be good against some of these melee classes, right? Yeah, Arcane. Uh, I think Frost probably overall Frost. could be best, but uh, yeah, 
Uh, it's it's a tough situation here when you're a mage because you don't have too much consistent damage. You're very setup based, you know. When you when you're playing with a rogue on your side, uh, usually things go well. But uh, when you don't have that rogue, uh, things can definitely spiral here. Alec uh, looking to uh, get some points here. He actually has one point on the board, and uh, oh, they, they played the rogue mage, uh, him and Tremaz here in that first round, and we are just entering round two here. So we'll see how it goes. We got Ellie Rogue versus Mage Warlock. It's a pretty big map. Um, so Alec, this could be his shot to try to have a deep run here in the in the solo shuffle. Yeah, might, might be a little bit, you know, do like the old Cloud Nine strat here with the the Rogue or the the Mage Warlock. See if they can, uh, you know, get something done. Yeah, I mean, Not this is the comp. This is the comp uh, that that Cloud Nine ran actually with Mistweaver as well. So. Uh, this it might it might be you know one of those comps that kind of just comes back out of the woodwork uh, when you don't expect it. Alec though is down an ice block here, so it's not looking too good for him defensively. We're only at twenty percent dampening. Jamie known for his damage on that Ellie Shaman. Trimas though in a ring of frost. Alex doing a good job here, just building some distance uh, while Bank is in that crack control, sheeping up Trimas here as well. And Alec should be able to survive now, but where is the pressure? It's Mercy. It's his time to shine here. And Mercy, did he spec back to demo or is he actually an affliction warlock here? Actually, um, not, I don't see any pets, so I think Mercy actually will be staying with that Affliction Warlock. So, bit of a twist here, and Mercy actually will be punished. Oh, no, there there it is. He's got the Fell Guard. So, Mercy actually swapped to Affliction and then swapped back. Uh, so, it's going to be interesting to see yeah. if he can uh, kind of uh, find what spec he wants to play here. This is his last chance, really. Wait, did it, is Fell Guard? Oh, never mind. He's right there. Okay, well, Alec getting burned down just a little bit, especially since he used his ice block earlier. Uh, but Bank going to manage to keep him alive. Gates away, trying to line of sight. Uh, Jamie just a little bit and see if he can stabilize. Going to be running back in here, though, and getting some pressure onto the other team. Um, and it looks like everything's just fine and dandy so far. Um, not a lot of setups that have happened. No one's gotten really too close yet. Pretty long game in terms of how long these games have been going today. Uh, looks like Alex is hexed, but he trinkets out of it or he gets out of it. Um, and everything's just fine so far. Got Trim jumping in here on the rogue and start trying to hammer down Alex just a little bit. Blinks away. Uh, and uh, we'll see. We'll see if he stays alive. But so, I mean, every time I see a game with Alec in it, he's just getting tunneled down. At least he has his ice block now. I might actually yep. have to use it. No. Will be able to survive, I think, with just the life cocoon. Maybe not. At 67% dampening, that life cocoon is more <laughs> like an ice barrier. And <laughs> Alec dropping super low here. He's going to have to use the ice block and the cauterize. This is Mercy's time to shine. He really needs to get some counter pressure going here. Otherwise, they're just going to fall behind. 72% dampening. Look at Banks. He's channeling out a full soothing mist, and it doesn't even do anything. To Look at him. It, it doesn't do anything. 75% dampening, and now it's put in the kidney shell. Trimmers, though, with no cloak of shadows. This could be dangerous for for him, he gets feared. This could be the moment here. Alec actually with a nice alter time, alter time unaffected by dampening. So that is the one good thing here. But still, Alec with nothing left. Looks like he's just gonna get cracked through the pressure from Trimaz and Jamie. And um, just like that, we said Alec, he's he's in the lead. He's got one point, and then we cursed him, and uh, he got a loss immediately. I feel, I feel like this was this one was on me. I, I it was on you? Like okay, all right. I'll let you. I'll let you do that. <laughs> oh, that's nice of you. <laughs> uh, what do you think about this new uh, this new map? I really like it. I love it. I love it. I, I think it's a great map. Uh, you know, kind of reminds me a bit of to... Nagrand. Go ahead. It kind of reminds me a bit of Nagran, but the interesting thing yeah. about the the Crucible is that those pillars kind of have pillars on them. If you if you yeah. take a look at where Mercy is right now, there is a, a little spot there between the pillars where you can actually line up side. You can see it. Uh, the pillars kind of go in like little uh, triangles, and uh, you can use that to line up side. So it's pretty effective uh, for certain classes. Eli Shaman definitely like uh, this map. So um, yeah, uh, I think it's a nice map. Eli Shaman like this, like specifically. Yeah, I mean, they like to kind of duck in and out between pillars like that. Um, hmm. So, yeah, I think uh, LA Shaman, you know, Affliction Warlock, stuff like that. Stuff that you can see James positioning right now, how he's positioning at that pillar. And as I say that, he's moving out, uh, building distance between him and the rogue. But uh, in general, you don't really want to be in the open field. So you're going to see Jamie again. 
uh, just going back to kind of where Alec is. And uh, that's how they like to play it. You're just ducking in and out. Uh, allows you to do a lot of damage while avoiding a lot of damage. And uh, it's also a big map, so you can kind of use it yeah. uh, to kite melees around. So, yeah, it's, it's a nice map for them. Big map, huge pillars, which uh, is in contrast to the, the two thick pillars that we're seeing in, um, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um, and, and four of them as well. So, yeah, interesting to see how they're being utilized. That? With... Got oh. swapped it right there. Yeah. But uh, he, he did survive, he did trade, but now he has no trinket here. I, I, I don't know. I think it's looking lights out for Jamie. Oh, no, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what he can do. He's trying to run away from that Felguard as well, but utilizing those pillars like we were just talking about. Uh, got full health again. Zanki's got a lot of mana also, but yeah, they were kind of util using a lot of their cooldowns, unfortunately, to stabilize from that situation. And now Jamie is being pummeled down by that rogue with Trim, uh, just not holding back at all, uh, having a maximum uptime on him. And Trim is not, or sorry, Jamie not able to get any distance at all between him and the rogue and that fell guard, both chasing after him. He doesn't have any, he only has one point for this match. We're only about halfway through. But we'll see if he can recover from this situation. Looks like Zang caught in the sun as well with that rogue still once again just hammering down on him. Uh, but he is able to get that health back up. And he's going to go towards a Jamie, get a little bit safe, and we'll see if they can recover. That was really nice off healing there from Jamie during that swap. But, you know, that was in 30% or so dampening. A little bit later on, if they swap to Zang like that, uh, he's not going to have that backup. And Trimaz is doing exactly that. Nice bear form there, though, by Zang. Reading the swap, uh, it can be hard to do with Outlaw Rogues kind of just diving in like that with their grappling hook. And Alec here, finally getting tested. Alec immediately <laughs> getting propped here with the card rise. Might have to use Icebook as well. Ah! He's trying to greet it. Alec, he's giving us a lot of heart attacks today with those <laughs> Ice Brooks. And now, big swap here onto Zank as well. Everybody's just dying. There's a full oh! kidney shot. And that will be the game right there. An excellent showing there by Trimaz, swapping back and forth there between the DPS and the healer. Yeah, it did seem like there was a lot of communication going on behind the scenes, which is something that I'm sure a lot of these um, players are dealing with, with the fact that these teams are swapping every single round earlier. Toxic, the admin working behind the scenes told me that they're all kind of in one voice call. I don't know if that's happening every single matchup or if they end up breaking out into their mini groups. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how that works, but one thing for sure, synergy and communication is definitely going to be a barrier no matter what class, uh, what spec or what role you are playing in these matchups. So... Seeing number game number four in this matchup start quickly here. We'll see who Trim decides to open on and what we're going to see uh, the win condition be in this game. Looks like he's starting out on Mercy, and we'll see what he can do versus this class. Yeah, let's see if he can get something going here. Mercy uh, still with one point, Alec with one point, and Bank actually looking like he's going to win through uh, between the healers here. If he can maintain his lead, a lot is riding on this game here. Jamie already taking a beating here so far in the match. Trima is getting crowd control quite a bit. We got Mage, Lock, Druid, so not the uh, worst comp here to play as a Mage. We'll see if Alec can get a point on the board. So far, all the mages have been struggling. It's not just Alec. You know, we've seen Reich, we've seen Oscar, all of them uh, kind of on that last page. And uh, it just uh, has been a lot of, it's been very melee heavy so far uh, in the solo shuffle, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, it is interesting to see how that's kind of playing out. I think uh, melee is gonna be the winner of this one. Not sure who yet. Uh, that's my prediction. It's going to be, uh, you know, it's one of those melee classes, but I don't know. It seems like as we get deeper into these games, maybe the mages and the warlocks are kind of trying to, are trying to kind of figuring things out with how the solo shuffle works, but, uh, Mercy dropping low in health, uh, seeing if he can get a fear, some kind of crowd control off to just trying to mitigate some of that pressure that we're seeing coming from that rogue on him. Um, but not like, looks like he's able to get much done. He did get his health back up though. It stabilized just a little bit, but. Uh, lots of pressure from both sides. Going to head behind that pillar, but um, that fell guard continues to chase after him. We'll see if Trim gets any connection on him. Looks like he's actually chasing after Mercy, though. Um, no one dying just yet, though. 23% dampening. Loving the fast pace of the pace of this game with how quickly that dampening does ramp up. Alec dropping low. Jamie dropping low. Alec doesn't have ice block. Does have the cauterize available. Yeah, I'm not sure. I actually think he does have the ice block. I think it just didn't reset on oh. the UI uh, from that last game. Uh, but we'll mm -hmm. see for sure. 
Uh, he might sense. have popped it uh, right away. Uh, actually, did he pop it early on? Uh, yeah, he, no, he did. He did. I think he actually did uh, when he was on fire earlier on. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, the, the UI can be a little bit buggy, but um, we'll pay attention to that. Uh, Trima's right now, though, for sure doesn't have his Cloak of Shadows, and that is kind of the big opening here for the Mage Warlock. When you can bully that melee out of the, the fight, that's when you can start getting that lead, and that's when you can start snowballing that momentum. The problem with Mage Lock is that it's a very uh, kind of synergy-heavy comp because it, very, it relies on those spammable CCs. Uh, Alec actually hitting another one of these counter spells here onto Bank into a full Polymorph here as well. So Alec's been doing a good job offensively, landing crowd control, landing interrupts, but they just don't have the pressure right now. Mercy going in for the Howl of Terror, goes for the Tyrant. Here comes the pressure onto Jamie, actually. Jamie taking huge hits of damage. Alec now uh, getting uh, hit himself as well. Blinks out of the leg sweep. Is he going to be enough? He gets caught up in the landing last one. There is the Ice Block. So he did have that available. And Jamie still uh, also taking some damage. Had to trade out the Astral Shift, but still defensively, I would say the right side is definitely looking ahead right now. Once again, it's going to be deep dampening. It's going to be a mage on the run right now. And I just have no idea how Alec is going to be able to survive to that next combustion where he can have lethal damage. Yeah, going to be a while before we're able to see a recovery from Alec. So we'll see if he can make it to that. Uh, but also something interesting to note, Zanked in the bio that he submitted to us, uh, when asked what his smallest threat was, he did say Tremaz. Um, so we'll see if he's about <laughs> to eat his words here with this game. Alec quickly losing health. Is Zank going to be able to keep him alive? Not a lot of mana for him left, though. Uh, teammates trying to peel, but it does look like he might go down here. Jamie dropping a little bit low as well, though. Uh, it's, yeah, maybe, maybe. It looks like he's going back up in health, but Mercy now dropping low. Everyone is dying. Alec is dead and it looks like they have lost that round yeah it's, it, it looks it looks really rough for these fire mages um i mean they did a good job staying alive surviving even at the end there alec was extremely low and he was able to call, uh, catch trimas in some crowd control behind the pillar buying himself some extra seconds but while that's going on mercy is just getting blasted as well uh so it's just it's just a tough uh, matchup for him but look at bank and, uh, you know, a lot of people voted Druid as the top healer. Uh, and uh, look at Bank here right now showing up one of these Druids on that Mistweaver. I'm sure uh, there's some Mistweaver fans out there who are happy to see Bank here uh, banking in some wins. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. I personally, I'm always happy to see underrepresented classes. I feel like Mistweaver is one of those ones we haven't seen um, at, at the top in a really long time. There are even only a few players that are opting for it in, in AWC. I feel like Looney is pretty much the only player we see uh, bring it out in Drainer, I guess. So cool to see Bank doing so well. He's had a really solid matchup. He's got the most points besides Trim, but uh, definitely beating Zank, his opponent kind of here, because sort of healer against healer, DPS against DPS in this solo shuffle. And right now it's looking like he is going to win. Zank, however, does have an opportunity to turn things around if he wins both of these next matches, and then it will be end, end up being a tie for the two healers. But one thing is for certain, as we're getting deeper into this day, those points are, are really, really important to accumulate because it could very well snowball into a very top heavy situation where it's almost impossible to turn things around. But Dampening did just start a minute into the game, so we're going to start seeing some pressure come out soon here, Zico. Yeah, we're going to see if they can get some pressure rolling right now. Mercy trying to build some distance, teleports away, trying to get away from Trimaz here. Trimaz uh, just trying to hunt him down as we speak. He gets caught up in a nice stun there, catches the iron bark from Zankt, and uh, the smallest threat uh, is in a team right now with Zankt. So uh, this should be uh, a dangerous situation here. Jamie actually gets the life cocoon there by Bank. Bank also trinketing right there uh, for that blind. So uh, Bank not going to have a lot of cooldowns to answer with. They kind of need to try to win before that next blind. Uh, when that next blind CC chain comes out, it could be very dangerous. But Jamie also has his Astral Shift. Mercy has his Unending Resolve. But they're just swapping to Bank. He's got no trinket. He's got nothing. Bank gets deleted from the game. What an interesting swap right there coming in. That was very, very nicely done there by Trimaz. Uh, finding that, that situation. And look at Trimaz here. The, this guy just came in out of nowhere. If he wins this match right here... He's on his way to get, he's, he's going to be the second player who wins six out of six. And um, I mean, he's playing against a mage, so the odds are in his favor. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> just biased mages here on the desk. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you know, Outlaw Rogue's definitely doing... Uh, yeah, but mage bias. What, who is shocker? Most of you, half of the desk is mages. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if, you know, Outlaw Rogue's definitely faring very well in this solo shuffle competition. So, Rogue, Warlock, Druid, Zico, how does that how does that uh, composition sound to you? Rogue, Warlock. I mean, it's not too bad. Um, Mercy is also playing demo. This is a comp that we saw in AWC do pretty well, but we also saw Mage Ellie do actually pretty decent as well. So. I, I would go with Trimaz. I feel like Trimaz right now is hot. He's uh, he's looking focused. He wants the six out of six. He wants the championship Sunday. He wants to show what he can do on that rogue. And uh, right now, it's looking like he's doing it. Opening up onto Alec here, getting some work done. But Alec does catch a big heal there from his druid, and uh, that was the blind as well being traded out. And no trinket here onto Bank for about ten seconds. So Bank will have a trinket for that next blind. And uh, Alec, though, there it is. Life Cocoon coming out there from Bank. We'll keep Alec nice and healthy. Alec has all of his defense. I think this game is going to go a little bit into dampening. And if the right side team is going to win, it's going to be off of big pressure. Uh, Jamie may be getting some big blasts out a little bit later in dampening. Yeah, Alec hasn't really been able to do much. This rogue is just constantly on his back, interrupting anything that he's trying to put out um, on this on the on the left team. So Alec not able to get much done. So uh, Jamie gonna have to be making these plays because he's not getting quite as much pressure. We'll see what he can do. Zang trying to get that cyclone out, and it's okay. Alec <laughs> running away from this rogue who is just continuing to chase him, caught in a stun, getting trying to get a ring out. See if he gets it. Does doesn't quite get anybody caught in it just yet. But things might be turning around just a little bit because Mercy dropping dropping in health though. We'll see if Mercy is able to stabilize. Jamie getting out that lightning lasso onto the other team here. But still, no one significantly dropping in health. Both of these healers still have mana. I don't see anyone dying soon. I think you're definitely right, Zico, and that this is going to go into dampening quite a bit. I mean, we're already there, and Mercy is still trying to get a pet out. Alec actually popped his combustion there to try to kill it, and uh, he tried to ring Mercy there behind the pillar to kind of interrupt it. Jamie, however, did secure the wind shear, but now Mercy did secure the pet, and they invested a lot to get that pet down. Ooh. And uh, Mercy did trade out his uh, unending resolve, though, because he had that uh, because he didn't have that soul link. But now here comes the pressure. Trimaz once again looking hungry. Can he get the six wins? Trimaz though needs to be careful. He's getting blasted there in the leg sweep, pulling back now, going once again after Alec. Still has the ice block to work with. 42% dampening. Big hits of damage coming in here from Mercy and Trimaz, and of course Joe Fernandez Jr. there on your screen blasting away there look at alec here dropping extremely low he goes for the combustion trying to save his ice block with pure offense here but it's just so much damage bank is stuck in a kidney shot bank is getting swapped to and i think Trimas is going to be able to do it six zero oh, a wow. legendary performance coming out okay let's go Trimas. we don't I, don't I personally i don't know a lot about this player it's not someone that we see uh, in AWC, so it's cool to see these sort of new players to the to you know to the competition scene at least on broadcast come and dominate um, as Tremaz has done, especially when um, I think it was the he, Bank. No, it wasn't Bank. It was the the healer on the other team, Zank, saying that he was his least least player, least threat in the entire tournament. And look at that, he's got six <laughs> points on the board after this matchup. So uh, Tremaz definitely a player we want to be looking out for, Zico. Yeah, they're definitely going to be reconsidering that statement after this performance from Trimaz. Uh, Trimaz getting all six wins here. Zanked and bank. Uh, zanked and banked. <laughs> that rhymes. Uh, tying up uh, with the rounds here. And Mercy. Uh, look at that. For second place in this group, it's going to be a three way tie here between Alec, wow. Jamie, and Mercy here. So Trimaz actually soaking up all of those wins is kind of good still for the remainder DPS uh, in this uh, group, of course. So it's not too bad, it's true. but still. Yeah, if you're already you know, like if you're already ahead, it's not like you know getting more more wins if you're just first place isn't going to do much for the, everybody else. So yeah, we'll see how this uh, shapes up. We can take a look here. Zippo, 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 and Act. Gray. <laughs> uh, Zipai <laughs> here at 11 points in first place. Uh, and then just, you know, a bunch of rogues. Just just a bunch of rogues. 
uh, following closely behind, and then Joe Fernandez, of course, in third. Um, and Warrior Warriors are are doing pretty well. But honestly, I'm surprised that a, that a shaman is that high up, especially in first. Zika, what do you think? I mean, I would say I'm surprised, but it's Zipai. I mean, this is what this man does. He just comes in and dominates on that Ellie Shaman. And um, look at him go. 11 points. And uh, we got uh, quite a bit of games still to go. But we're starting to see, you know, a little bit of a trend here. There's definitely a lot of rogues on that front page. Uh, definitely a lot of melees. I mean, when you look at this entire front page, it's Dakroth and Zipai. Those are the only casters here. Um, yeah. I guess Casu as well, actually. I mean, he's a he's a hunter. He's ranged. He's not a caster, but he's ranged. So. And he was playing yeah, survival. We'll take, we'll take it. We'll take it. He, he's a caster. I am. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll give you that. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, cool to see how things are sort of shaping up. We can also look at the healers. Judel Dump continuing to be up in that first place. Reese Boss. I know his fans will be happy about that one in second place. Uh, still at nine with nine points, which is good considering uh, his second match that I saw from him. Didn't go quite as well as his first, but he's still up there in points. And then Clyde in third. So little bit more just of a dispersion in terms of class representation with, with healers, Zico. And it's it's but maybe that's because we're really only seeing uh, not not like there's not really a lot of shamans at all. Are there any shamans? I, I think Carlos is playing shaman mm -hmm. tomorrow, but I don't know about EU. We have we have uh, Sidu and Abster tomorrow, but in EU we haven't yeah. seen a single rest of shaman. The only shamans we've seen are all elemental, actually. Yeah, I guess there aren't really a lot of resto shamans in EU at all, right? Um, well, there is a few, but uh, they haven't really been. Uh, the two priv like they haven't been too common i would say in general a lot of the shaman players just opted to reroll druid and um this is a uh, stage three right here we got um let's see here are these yeah so we just watched uh, match two right here between trimaz alec yeah so we still got plenty of games here we got four more series right now and um you know, the, st the standings aren't finalized. There's some people who still haven't played and some people yeah. who have played. So Reese Boss being second, I think it's because he's played all of his games now. Whereas there's still some people who haven't yet played. Uh, Judo Dump right there still hasn't played and he was first. So he's just coming out of nowhere. Also playing a Discipline Priest and, and yeah. doing that well. And uh, we still got Zen Lin in the running. We still got plenty of games here. Yeah, certainly a lot to get through as well. And, you know, obviously stick around if you guys are watching from home tomorrow. We're going to go over into the North American region and there's some classes over there um, that I'm excited to see how those will do. But we're over here in EU. And then, of course, on Sunday, we'll have Championship Sunday to determine the top specs from this pool. But it's just so far, I mean, this has been really exciting to see how these players are doing together in these compositions, how they're adapting with how quickly these matches go. I mean, they only have 10 seconds, which is quite a bit different from the two minutes that they normally have before a game here, before the gates actually open. So a lot of really quick on your feet decisions are being made, Zico. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing about solo shuffle. You just gotta, we saw it earlier, you know, some people adapting their strategies because uh, dampening just goes up so fast. And, uh, you know, going after things like Fury Warriors, their primary defense is, you know, the, that self-healing, starting to target them, starting to do these uh, kind of on-the-fly adaptations. Uh, it's been interesting to see everybody kind of adapt, swapping their specs, swapping their strats, and just uh, trying to figure out the best way to play this. Because nobody really knows so far. No, no. It also, it seems like there really haven't been a lot of... I've only, you know, I've only been seeing the Warlocks really swap specs, right? Uh, I want to say yes. I don't think I wonder, I've seen anybody else swap. I wonder if that's just because there's not a lot of time between games, or just you know, I mean, obviously it's different if you're if you're like a, I don't know a druid, you can't be just swatching swapping to balance. But um, I do wonder if you have more specs available to you if you kind of have a bit of an advantage in this format. I feel like mm, it depends. I think on the class, maybe. Uh, yeah. I mean, all, all the rogues have the opportunity to go for Asa or uh, Sub, but I don't think we've yet to see anybody swap away from that mm. outlaw. So I think I think it depends a little bit. Um, I think I the don't major think the rogues warlock need to swap. <laughs> to be yeah. fair. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very true. 
Yeah, well, we can take a look at the pickums. You guys are welcome to continue on in voting here as well. Uh, okay, come on, come on, guys. Let's get let's get some love to Raikou and Gelu. Um, I know that uh, don't don't currently have any votes, but 100% for Clyde. Interesting. The two resto druids, completely different, uh, completely different results. Zico, what do you think of that? Hmm. Guys, go in on the pickums. The GG, cast your votes and um give chas some love i mean we've He's seen him wearing the suit we've seen him win blizzcon we've seen him uh you know performing classic tournaments and in, in, in everywhere um in, in, oh there we go, there we go. I, I think i think it's gonna pick up but joe i think joe is definitely uh, gaining a lot of uh, uh you know warrior fans out there oh yeah and uh, i i i think joe is definitely gonna be i think joe and brune Healy probably both are gonna have pretty high percentage on this one and I think Chaz probably will maybe outvote. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's my prediction. <laughs> Chaz, Chaz, <laughs> and and Joe. Chaz and Joe probably gets the most votes, uh, you know, in their respective roles. Yeah, I think they're probably. I think that's safe to say. Also, uh, well, between between Chaz and Clyde, obviously both very well skilled druids. Um, but I think Joe. I mean, we just know how warriors in general have been doing this entire day, and obviously Joe has been having a, a really good day. I mean, it's great to see him doing so well. Obviously, he's been around in AWC for quite some time, um, so it's great to see him come to this and sort of bring out bring out his classic warrior and dominate so well and then we've got raikou here he's on he's gonna be playing that mage do you think that he brings out the fire mage again i i think he will but i would love to see him at least try to like frost maybe not arcane but at least try frost it's not going great for any of the fire mages i feel like uh, these maybe are your try. last set of games you got nothing to lose just go out uh with some frost action I think frost is too squishy though against this the the melee classes Especially with how, how tunneled down they've been getting. Um. Uh, no, I think I mean Fire Mage is squishy too. Well, not mm -hmm. squishy, but I feel like as a Fire Mage, you're just running around being kind of like a like a little tank, and you get a like big hit every time you have combustion. But as a Frost Mage, you have more consistent damage, and I think. A lot of the times when you're playing, you know, some of these comps, like even in this matchup here, you're going to have Mage Warlock at some point, right? Uh, I think in a matchup like that, you can, if you get a good map as well, you can definitely do some work as the Frost Mage, actually, uh, you know, casting consistent damage out uh, compared to a Fire Mage where you're just kind of running around and uh, trying to reset your combustion, trying to survive and then go for the combustion. Because more often than not, there are defensives that you can trade for it. All right, well, we'll see if we see Raikou bring out any of those other specs. Uh, but I also think Ven, I think Ven's in, so maybe we can get his take on mages so far in today's games. Well, what would you like to know? Because, yes, I am in. I mean, I, I guess Zika I'm returning. Huh? Hello. Welcome back, sir. Welcome. Yes. Yes, yes. The mages, are they going to change their spec? That is the question. I don't think so. I think all these mages are committed to the fire dream. And I was going to say, I think this is one of those matchups where Raikou could actually pick up some points. If you think about like the composition mages are actually good with, he's going to be playing Mage Lock. Okay, great. Mage Warrior, which is like kind of like a, it's a second to Rogue Mage, not as good. Uh, and then of course, Rogue Mage. So I think Raikou actually has three different compositions that are viable. It's not like he's playing with a Hunter or a Feral. Like I, I think this is actually an opportunity for Raikou to uh, pick up a lot of wins uh, if he plays well. Yeah, uh, I think uh, you're absolutely right about that. And Raikou will not be respecting. Uh, I was just reading some thoughts actually uh, from Raikou. He said he's been enjoying the solo shuffle tournament despite how weak mages uh, have been performing. It's fun and uh, it feels a bit casual. And he has a lot of high hopes for a Dragonflight solo shuffle. And uh, we will be getting rated solo shuffle in Dragonflight. So uh, I'm definitely excited for that feature as well. And we'll see if Raikou can hold it down here on the Fire Mage. And he's going to need to pick up some big wins here if he wants to even have a chance of uh, qualifying for Championship Sunday then. Yep, definitely. We'll see if he can perform. Uh, right now, play with the Mage Lock is going to be all about kind of peels and control. Keep them off of Gelu for as long as possible. <laughs> Gelu actually using the um, Demonic Gateway Legendary. So every time he uses his Gateway, first of all, the first charge of Gateway, 
uh, doesn't activate it so we can use double gateway but it also knocks everyone up in the air so it's quite annoying if you're a double <laughs> melee to chase down a warlock that uses that there's so much mobility with your double gateway as well as your portal uh, it can be difficult to get on target but there's no snares available <laughs> and gelu is just getting ripped apart right now by joe and brunhitty and uh, i would say out of all the melee i mean joe and brunhitty on the outlaw rogue on the warrior they've been looking absolutely devastating so far so we'll see uh how long um, they can survive and this is kind of like a really stacked group here yeah this is a really stacked group that's a good point because joe and brunhiri both have had a really good performance so far in the overall standings and uh, i think uh, they are each other's uh, big competition however if they both qualify their points will uh, get reset all of the people who qualify their points reset on sunday uh, so uh, their standings won't matter uh, when we get into sunday but of course uh, there it is the knock <laughs> and there, yeah, there's a gateway knock as well coming in from Gather. So we'll see. Uh, Joe and Brunhiri definitely uh, not. If you're a warlock, and especially like Gellu said, he's uh, it's his first tournament as a warlock. This is probably not the cleave that you want to be going into. Look at Gellu just. <laughs> look at Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying you're just getting knocked up in the air, and the gateway is just so long. So. Uh, going after the Warlock uh, is going to be rough. I think this is a great adaptation from Gelu. Right, who's just spamming out the fireballs, looking to reset his combustion. We are 32% dampening already. Uh, don't blink, you'll miss it because things are going to start getting crazy in this game. Number one, who's going to be able to put the first points on the board? Gelu right now, caught into a spear of Bastion, trying to get away. And uh, we'll see if he actually can. Raikou right now with his combustion as well, just trying to put out a ton of damage. But... It seems like Chaz is going to be able to answer that with an Iron Bark and kind of just like even things out here in the match. And at this point, I can't really tell who's going to win. Uh, the one thing is Clyde's mana is not looking good and dampening is already at 50%. So if Joe can have uptime uh, with the Slaughterhouse and actually reduce healing even further, then I think it's going to be a disaster for Clyde and uh, Gelly to actually stay alive. I think uh, if they can get some pressure on Joe, that is the only way that they can really win this. And that seems to be the strat right now. They're just CCing Brunhiri and trying to go after Joe. But Joe just having a field day here. He actually just trinketed out of that poly right there and then got knocked on his Bladestorm. Now swapping to the pet here. Yellow uh, trying to get some distance, but Brunhiri once again closing the gap. Joe getting sheep. Gelu forced to trinket out of the kidney shot, stun onto Brunhiri. Raikou looking to power up that next combustion, but I don't know if he's going to be able to make it to that point. Gelu teleporting away again on 1 HP, summoning the Felguard. Kick comes through there from Brunhiri, and uh, I think Gelu, uh, I think it's lights out here for this Warlock. Joe is hungry once again, looking for some dessert there, and I think he will find it. A uh, little lock buffet right now, just eating everything he wants. And this is, a, I mean, I know I sound like a broken record, but I feel like in a matchup like that, if you're a Frost Mage, the amount of damage you're going to be able to do is going to be a lot more punishing, and you can actually kind of force the melee back. Um, so uh, maybe this is something that, you know, the North American mages are going to be able to look at and make that adaptation. I'm really not sure. Um, but I think in this particular match, obviously Raikou is going to be able to thrive. So Brunhidi uh, teaming up with Raikou here, um, trying to get a win. Uh, but at the same time, you have Joe on that Fury Warrior. He's just been so devastating. Let's see the kind of pressure he's going to be able to put out. Maybe he's actually going to be able to have those peels uh, for Gelu in this match like you'd expect. Yeah, and uh, if Raikou loses this round right here, he can't make it anymore. So Raikou, he needs to win every single round from here on out. He needs to like, go 5-0. and oh. uh, I mean, he could rise to the occasion, but... It's going to be tough. At least he's got Rogue Mage for him uh, for this match right here. So I, I do believe that with Brunhiri on his side, with Cl Clyde on his side as well, uh, he has a chance here. Geller right now getting pressured big time here. Only 30%, uh, 30 seconds in. Uh, dampening still at 0%. And uh, Gelu still forced to trade out basically everything. Chaz as well uh, trading out basically all his cooldowns. So, so far, so good here for the Rogue Mage. Now, the thing is, can they keep it going? Yep, that's a really good question. Let's see uh, what they can actually get done. Chaz's mana is looking good. And uh, it looks like Brunhidi and Raikou, their main target in this match, is just going to be uh, Gelu. So go after Gelu, try to shut him down as much as they can in the match. And also Raikou just needs to survive. So cutting around Joe, uh, that's really the match. And 
I feel like for both Gelu and Raikou, uh, they just need to avoid damage as much as possible. It can be really difficult to do so. You can see Raikou right now with his Altered Time is going to be able to stay alive. And that's the one thing. Gelu, uh, Joe, and Chaz, they don't have any offensive dispel. So that alter Time is going to be super potent for Raikou. If he can get good value out of that in the match, he can actually survive for a really long time. And eventually, Brunhidi on that Outlaw Row is going to be able to really rip in here to Gelu. But Raikou gets interrupted on Frost. Cauterize has proc, and the Ice Block is thrown out. Uh, I don't know, Zico. This seems pretty <laughs> dangerous for Raikou. If he has to, he has to win this game, ladies and gentlemen, or he will be uh, eliminated. So, um, really, really tense. He has to basically win out the rest of the series. Uh, let's see if he can get it done. Joe getting low. Can he do it? Kind of the dream here on the line. Two minutes elapsed in this match. Twenty-five percent dampening. Chaz really struggling to keep Joe alive, but finally some heals come in. Big combustion by Raikou. Do they have the damage to actually take him down? Beautiful fear there by Joe Fernandez. Intimidating shout, slowing down the damage, denying Raikou his combustion. He gets coiled out of that into a storm bolt. It is never ending CC. And unfortunately, it looks like the kill opportunity may have been lost, but Brunhitti setting up his team, a big kidney shot into a sap, into a polymorph. Oh. Beautiful crowd control from Raikou and Brunhitti. And it looks like Joe, how? How no is he way. still alive? Somehow, some way in defiance. Still just kiting away, wants to stay alive. Chas needs to keep him up. He's caught into a bash. No but it way. looks like he actually will live. Kidney shot lands. Uh, are we going to see any peels here from Gelu? Unbelievable that Joe could survive there. Yeah, Joe Fernandez is on fire, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, he's going to be just coming in now, looking for the win here. Brune Hitty taking huge amounts of damage, no and he will fall. What a hero play from Joe, man. It's so good to see him back in the arena. It's been a minute since we saw him compete in anything. And look at him, he's doing a little slash wave there for the crowd. That was a health stone, and then he charged Clyde, actually, yep. uh, while he was kiting Brunhiri. Just beautiful defense there. And one of the things I saw some uh, people mention when I was on my break and I was just looking around on Twitter and stuff like that, they were talking about the classes that seem to do well in 2v2. And the player, I mean, a lot of the players that do really well in 2v2 as well seem to be like kind of excelling in this tournament. I know Joe plays a lot of twos, so he's looking for those win conditions by himself. Uh, used to kind of playing in really, really deep dampening because uh, that accelerates really fast in twos, just like kind of so solo shuffle is. So um, it, it's really interesting to kind of just point that out. Uh, Joe right now going to be looking to connect. We'll see um, what he's going to be able to do. So far, has won all the games in this match so far with Chaz. Uh, let's see if they can pick up a third win here uh, with Raikou. Yeah, let's see if they can do it. I mean, if they're going to win a game, it's got to be this one. I, I feel like the RMD, not too bad of a matchup, but now he's got Joe Fernandez uh, buff on his team. I feel like this is the game. If Raikou can get some good value on that combustion right now, let's see what they can get. They don't get the unending resolve. They do get the Iron Bark from Clyde. Is that going to be enough here, Chas? Sitting at full fear right now, Raikou. Uh, his combustion will be fading. They're swapping to Brunhiri here, actually. Nice swap here by Joe Fernandez. Noticing Brunhiri uh, on his aggressive positioning there. Going for that kidney shot into a sap, actually. And it looks like they want to go after Joe here. Joe actually uh, behind enemy lines. But look at Raikou backing him up with the polymorphs. Joe going to be moving back now to midfield where he can get healed from his healer. And now once again, Ring of Fire coming out. Here comes big pressure from Joe Fernandez right now. Building up the Slaughterhouse stacks. And that Ring of Fire is burning. Clyde doesn't get polymorphed out of that Dragon's Breath. Nice shut down there by Gelu. But still a lot of pressure coming out so far from the Mage Warrior. And um, this could be, uh, maybe Joe goes for the 6-0 and o here in the tournament. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't doubt it, honestly, at this point. He's been looking so good today just overall. And in this particular group, the compositions that he can run uh, are, are definitely quite solid. Um, just having that stacking Mortal Strike effect and dampening is just so hard to deal with that kind of pressure. You can see Clyde is burning through a lot of his mana right now. And Joe actually going after the pet. Can they take down the pet? That would be massive. Joe gets stunned before it is taken down. Gelu does get interrupted as well, but just going after that fell or fell guard um, often in the match. If it has no heal over time effects, it's very effective damage. It burns the mana of the enemy druid quite easily. And right now, Gelu actually just getting completely destroyed. This blind from Brunhidi is saving the day, healing up Joe. I mean, if Joe was not in the full blind there, the game was over. So that was some great peels coming in from Brunhidi. Raikou trying to make a play there with the combustion. Very close call on to Gelu. Uh, but ultimately will survive. And now the counter pressure comes in. Raikou forced into the ice block. And this is not looking good for Joe and Raikou. Joe getting dropped. 
big wow. damage incoming from Gelo and Bruhiti. And as soon as Gelo was able to recover from that Sphere of Bastion, they just flipped the switch, turned on the pressure, and uh, it was just all their momentum from that point forward. That was all Brunhidi, to be honest. He blinds Joe to save his Warlock. Then he gets the Kidney Shot Sap to set up the offense as well. Finds the target as well. Uh, just beautiful stuff there from Brunhidi. And uh, it, that's what we were talking about at the start here. Brunhidi been having a phenomenal tournament so far. So has Joe Fernandez. And I don't think it comes as a surprise that they're tied 2-2 two to two apiece. Now Raikou here. Uh, still looking to get his first win right now. But he has Brunhidi and Chas on his team. Uh, this is uh, his, uh, you know, healer on his actual AWC team. And Brunhiri as well on that rogue's been super impressive all season. Let's see if they can do it as that RMD. They're fighting Warrior Lock Druid. This is something that you would see in, like, the Burning Crusade. Look at Chas. Speaking of burning, he is definitely burning down right now to the damage of Gelu and those imps. Let's see if Chas can recover. Trades out the uh, Trank Bubble there as well as his Trinket. So Chas, no cooldowns left already. And uh, a great opener so far for the left side. <laughs> for the left side. Yeah, the left side doing a great <laughs> job <laughs> right now. But right side seems to have stabilized. And I mean, this is actually Raikou and Chaz. This is the first time we've gotten to see them. Even though they've been on the same team, this is the first time we've seen them play together in like a year or something like that. But, uh, yeah, you know, we didn't see Chaz too much in the AWC. Um, but yeah, let's see what they can get done. They should have good synergy between each other. So uh, hopefully this is an opportunity for Raikou to actually pick up a win in this one. Uh, let's see, Joe Fernandez kind of burning down right now. Spear Bastion does drop it. Brunhidi's just going to peel it up. He does not want to mess around uh, at all. And a now big counter set up here onto Joe. But it gets feared away by Gelu. Gelu's quite annoying on that Demonology Warlock. You have lots of different stuns, uh, fears, uh, coils, interrupts that you can put out on Demonology. And uh, it's one of the reasons why it's a pretty effective spec in the solo shuffle environment. You just have so much disruption. You bring a mortal strike effect. Um, and it's really nice to see Gelu kind of put in work on that spec. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a joy to watch him. And uh, Joe right now in that kidney shot. Gelu trying to get some CC here. Gets a fear onto Chaz. Raikou uh, actually doing a lot of damage here onto Joe. Joe trying to charge Raikou right now. Just staying offensive. A lot of faith in his healer. 25% dampening so far. Uh, Joe realizing that his the heals are still pretty effective. Chaz going for the Fleshcraft. How are they going to win on the side of the Warlock Warrior? I feel like uh, trying to take down Chaz. They have a bit of a window there. They find a spell lock and they find any pressure. They're going after Brunhiri. Here's the Tyrant. He gets countered by a beautiful shutdown there by Raikou. That could have just been Brunhiri's life, but instead he will be allowed to trade. The Cloak of Shadows comes out, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Here comes the Tyrant as well. Yellow with big damage. Chaz gets bashed. Trinkets out, actually, and they might have one more CC for Chaz. And that could be enough. They have the Tyrant out, blasting away. 39% dampening. Brunhiri still dangerously low. No Cloak of Shadows. Look at that Tyrant. He's just tanking oh. it. And that will be another win. Look at Joe going deep so far in this tournament. Three wins. And Gelu as well, actually. Gelu too, yeah. What is what is happening? I mean, uh, Gelu is a solid player. And like I said, Demo is really strong. Um, I, I feel like a lot of players, I mean, I, I guess it is too early to tell. And a lot of the LR rogues have been doing well. But yeah, it's really interesting to see. Uh, both these druids in this game very evenly matched, as you can see. Both putting up two points at this point of the game. We have two rounds left, and I mean, we're getting down to kind of crunch time here. I don't know how much we've really mentioned it, but these are the last series these uh, players get to play. So this is their last opportunity to earn points, and uh, depending on how well they do, uh, that determines if they're going to be actually qualifying on Championship Sunday. So they need to be picking up these points. Uh, if Joe can put another two on the board, or if Gelly can put another two on the board, uh, that's going to be really good for them uh, kind of moving forward and seeing where they stand later on in the day. Yep, let's see if they can do it. Yellow trying to keep the dream alive here. Raikou still looking to pick up his first win. He's playing Mage Lock here with Chas and Gelo. Can they do it? Gelo's been having a phenomenal performance so far in this series. Joe, though, uh, could actually pick up a win here and pick up the lead against Gelo. And that's uh, exactly what he's looking to do here. See if they can pull through. Gelo teleporting back behind the pillar. Chas. He's sitting down for a stealth. He's going for the re-stealth. And he goes for the rake stun, actually. Look at Chaz going for the rake stun into the cyclone. Always going for those like little cheeky plays. Going for the hibernate. And uh, this is just typical Chaz stuff. And they get the polymorph because Chaz went for the hibernate right there. So really good synergy there between Raikou and Chaz. 
And um, let's see if they can get any pressure onto Joe as a result from that. Joe will drop to about 50%. Also had to use his trinket, but look at Gallo. He gets pinned down by the spear, immediately has to trade unending resolve. So much damage coming out from this melee cleave. Yeah, definitely. Unbelievable amount of pressure. But at the same time, I mean, Mage Lock, you have a lot of peel. So if they can slow down the game, I think it's going to be, there'll, there'll be an opportunity for them to actually kind of like close it out. But they're just so unrelenting. That's the thing about Fury Warrior and Outlaw Rogue is they're so difficult to swat away. They have a lot of kind of durability kind of built into the spec. Self-healing, defensive cooldowns that they can rotate through. Uh, they're just like a never-ending kind of juggernaut that runs at you. And uh, yeah, it, it can be really, really difficult to actually deal with that kind of pressure. But with dampening, and those defenses do, of course, get a little bit taken down and that's a chance for Raikou to actually get some counter pressure because it seems like that's the big struggle here, right? They're all over Gelu and Raikou just kind of free casting on that mage uh, isn't able to really help him out that much. The, there's never really a moment where Joe and Brunhitti are scared outside of the combustion. And that's just when Clyde trades out the iron bark. So it's like, okay, you're going to combust, then I'll trade out the iron bark and we should be okay. But those cooldowns are a little bit desync. Look at Raikou, has about five seconds left on combustion. Clyde, no iron bark. Here is a chance for uh, the left side to actually pull out a win. Yeah, can they do it though? I'm not sure. Again, it's dropping dangerously low, but so is Joe. It's a bit of a race. Look at the combustion from Raikou digging in with the damage here. But Joe Fernandez hungry and on target right now. I think it's Gelu that's in trouble. He goes for the Feldom Summon, gets the Felguard out. Runhiri is also getting cleaved down here. Raikou actually doing a lot of work with that combustion, but now it has faded. And now the pressure is going to be all on Gelu. He needs to get that Tyrant out. He gets kicked by Brunhiri. And uh, Joe Fernandez actually kicking, I think, at the same time there. So. It's really hard to coordinate all of these uh, interrupts when uh, you are playing that solo shuffle. Joe Fernandez now getting coiled behind a pillar. Did Gelo get the Tyrant out? Uh, he did get the Tyrant out, but oh, no. uh, big damage coming in on the Gelo, and he will get dropped again. Joe Fernandez just looking bulletproof right now and also picking up the lead in this group over Brunhiri and over Gelo. And wait. If Brunhiri and Gelu wins this match, it's going to be a three-way tie for first DPS. Yep. Um, yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct about that. So Raikou and also for healers. Yeah. Oh, that, <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's a lot of different tiebreaker situations um, that we've been talking about today. So we'll see how that exactly plays out. And of course, their previous match results also going to be uh, a huge determining factor on you know where they all place. But I feel like Joe, Raikou, Clyde, if they can pull out a win here, I feel like they can. What I actually want to see them do is just like come bust the pet. I swear that's what I want to see Raikou do. Just abuse Gelu's pet as much as he can in this match, especially if it's later on in the match. At like 30, 40% dampening, it can be really difficult to recover. Um, so we'll, we'll see what they decide to do, what their line of play is. It looks like they're going to be going after Brunhidi. Actually, a little swap over onto Chaz as well in the early stages of the match. And they might actually just train the Druid. Raikou looks like he wants to go for kind of a defensive play, get the double Dragon's Wrath on Gelu and Brunhidi, just kind of control the DPS and allow Joe to just train down Chaz and really test him here. Yeah, let's see. Can they get it done? Joe, right now... Looking, if he can win this one, he's going to be able to solidify things. And we're looking a little bit at standings. Uh, Joe and Clyde uh, and Brunhiri all are pretty much guaranteed to go through at this point with how well they've been doing, you know, in all of their series. So uh, things are looking good for them, but uh, we'll see. Uh, you know, can't hurt to pick up one extra win here in round number six. Let's see if they can get it done or if we're going to have that big tie. Uh, in this group here, uh, three-way tie for first and a double tie for healer as well. Let's see. And uh, Clyde right now stuck in that kidney shot. Joe actually dropping dangerously low. Brunhiri, does he have anything to follow it up with? Might have a gouge or something. Doesn't look like it. Joe still taking a lot of pressure though, but Clyde finally out of crowd control. Should be able to start picking him up. Dampening is only at 15% right now. So uh, if that situation happens later on in the game, uh, that would be a kill. But for now, Joe will be able to stay alive and will be able to stay on target right now. It's looking like another uh, meal is being prepped here in the middle of the map. Gelu Baba here on the Warlock, dropping to 50%, trading out the Unending Resolve, taking big hits here once again from uh, Joe and Raikou. But uh, he will be able to recover as well. Nice heals coming out from Chaz. Ooh, the spear uh, get, gets ported there by Gelu, actually. And Gelu will be able to stay alive now. Uh, as a result, a lot of that pressure just faded. Nice route there onto Joe, but he will 
pop his avatar and he will be kidney shot on it Brunhilde just trying to slow down the damage and get back onto Raikou who is yet to pick up a single win right now Raikou forced into the ice block here and uh, Raikou just trying to get something going here with that uh, warrior mage druid but it seems too rough with only Joe really doing the damage and Raikou just basically being a tank for his team nice alter time there by Raikou but is it going to be enough Brunhilde is just chasing him down and he's burning to the cauterize he's got no ice block climbs in crowd control Raikou will he get potted by in the pillar look at Brunhilde like a shark in the water cue the jaws theme Brunhilde is going to be able to take Raikou down and Raikou Unfortunately, we'll go 0-6, and, and we will have a three-way tie in this group for the DPS and a two-way tie for the healers. That's crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely a little bit unfortunate for Raikou there, but um, everyone else comes even, uh, literally just dead even in the match. So uh, we'll see how that ends up working out. Um, of course, we do have, I, I think, five more groups we need to go through uh, and this is going to be the final series uh, for all of these players as well so their last opportunity to pick up points and i think like you mentioned zico that kind of means raku cannot make it into that uh top eight um so that's going to be uh definitely a little bit unfortunate um Zenelin right now as you can see we're just going to be hopping into this next series we are now on game number three Zenelin might get dropped at this point see trilobartum Knobbers, uh, Nixie and Tay have been picking up some of the wins. Tony Farrell and Zenelin, unfortunately, have not been able to do so so far in this match. Uh, we can see how this one plays out. This is not what you want to see. My top pick here getting absolutely destroyed with zero wins right now. What is happening here? Knobbers in a kidney shot. Zenlin pushing in. Oh, actually, he's going to take to the skies here. We got Zenlin Airlines right now. Uh, fasten your seat belts and... Uh, Stay tuned right now. Zenlin will come down, be top there. Trillibartum taking a lot of damage here while Zen was in the air. He's just being the target here of this cleave. And this is just a pure cleave matchup right now. We got Feral Rogue versus Warrior Rogue right now. And Zen still dealing with so much pressure. He has the Guardian Spirit. He's being greedy with it. Can he pop it? He doesn't. Maybe it's a UI bug. I'm not sure. Uh, Zen not going to be able to access it. And that will be a win for he the... Oh, he's got the res legendary. Always. This is Zen. Zen. <laughs> he plays at 100% of games. It's really funny. But he gets caught into a stun. No, Zenelin. He trinkets. Can he stay alive? He just came back from the dead. Can he cheat death once again? Does not want to go down. Big flash heal. And right now that res legendary is going to be playing dividends. It's so funny. Anytime I play with Zenelin, I'm, I just, you just know he has it. And they no actually way. get the cross kill too. <laughs> a disaster for Tony. That's got to be just so sad. But uh, yeah, that's going to be a win there for Zenelin. Uh, both outlaw rogues are tied up now with two. Tay has two. Fnavis has two. Uh, so pretty evenly matched. Uh, but unfortunately for Tony, he hasn't been able to pick up a win uh, in this grouping just yet. Yeah, unfortunately for Tony, it's not looking too good for him. But uh, we'll see how it uh, how it evolves here. We got Nixie and Trilla. These two rogues right here have been doing some work so far in the tournament. Trilla has been having a really nice showing. A lot of people might have counted them out on the pickems early on. We saw, you know, not getting the most amount of votes, but he's definitely shown that he's here to play. And uh, he's got Nixie on his side. He's got Zenlin on his side. Double outlaw priest. This is. This is, you know, this is a comp that we saw a lot in AWC, but look at Zen immediately taking to the skies there. Didn't have to use his uh, trinket. I do believe he has an IQD, um, and he will be able to stabilize here, and then will drop down. Did they, did, did they proc his Guardian? That's got to be from the last game. I don't think it reset. He goes for Shastai's into a full fear there onto Fnobbers, and the double outlaw is extremely scary to deal with because you got basically blind up the entire game. Look at Tony here. Just trying to get offensive, but with two rogues uh, uh, just tunneling him down, it might be very difficult. Tay, though, with a nice pressure here onto Zen. He uses the Fey Guardians, Zenlin, to stay alive. Zenlin has built his priest very, very defensively. He's got the Divine Ascension. He's got the Res Legendary. He's got the Night Fey Guardians. He's got everything as tanky as humanly possible here. And so far, it's working out for him well, because in every game so far, he's been a target. So definitely uh, kind of built for the occasion right now uh, built differently let's see if they can keep it going here Trill is taking a lot of damage i think tay and tony are realizing that the priest is just built to be a tank and maybe it's better uh, to just go after one of these rogues 
Let's see. Uh, I think the, the main problem for Tony is it's just he's forced so defensive in this match. Normally, Feral Druids excel when they can do kind of like hit and run strategies, but there's a lot of pressure here for Tay and Tony. Maybe they could take down the Rogues. We need to see Zenlin actually get some recovery here. Uh, he actually has Divine Ascension. He flies up in the sky. Now just raining in heals, uh, topping off Nixie and Trillabartum. So I like that. He's pressured with crowd control. Just decides to fly up in this, the sky. Give himself a little bit of time to actually get those heals. But what I was saying about Feral Druids is normally they excel in compositions where they can kind of do hit and runs. Um, but this one in particular, the Kitty Cleave, is actually not too bad. They're really, really aggressive, and Tony can kind of uh, get some crowd control out on that Feral Druid while Tay kind of carries the damage. And then whenever Berserk's up, uh, Tony can burst really, really hard, and the damage can be quite overwhelming. Yeah, absolutely. And Zenlin's man is not looking too good. Fnorvis has a little bit of a lead in that regard, but I have a feeling this might not go uh, the distance. In terms of mana, we're already at 40% almost dampening here, and uh, they're going to need to pick up a kill soon. Nixie with no blind, Trilla with no blind. I feel like the Kitty Cleave is actually in the lead, but Tony, as I say that, drops quite low there, channels out the Fleshcraft. Yeah, camps it out in bear form. He's got the Berserk active right now. Tony definitely wants to get aggressive with that. Tay, though, is taking huge hits of damage from over starting out the Iron Bark. Is going to be enough to swap over to Tony now. Tony basically getting no uptime on that Berserk. And look at the damage coming in from Trilla, the man with the most beautiful Mog, according to Aya. Looking like he is going to put another point here on the board for his team. Can he do it? And he's going to have to vanish out for safety here. He's got the blind coming up in nine seconds. Who is going to take it? This one is a nail biter, man. I mean, it definitely is a dampening. It's so high. Nobody has any mana. Damage is king at this point of the game. Tony, can he survive? He's got a kite. He's in bear form. Got to keep himself alive. But the damage oh. is overwhelming. And he gets taken down. Nixie gets the last laugh with a you know sinister striker. Whatever that was, pokes him down. And uh, unfortunately, <laughs> Tony does fall still just struggling and that that's what i'm saying i mean for the feral druid you, it's all like uh, they work in comps like jungle right where it's like you get the crowd control you move in you burst as hard as you can and then you play more of like a defensive strategy it's almost like uh fire mage a little bit right where it's like you pick your moments to burst and then you're all about control so in this kind of matchup where it's just it's it's a blitz right it's <laughs> you know you're fighting fury warriors and outlaw rogues when dampening gets higher your self healing is just so low and you just don't have the same kind of pressure to go toe to toe so it's one of the reasons why this match is uh, kind of a struggle here for tony yeah uh tony definitely been uh, kind of just struggling right now to to put a point on the board but he's got an outlaw rogue on his side he's got fnobbers on his side he could do it but at the same time Zenlin, we saw this uh, same matchup a little bit earlier with the, uh, actually, was it Warrior uh, Warrior Feral that tried to tunnel him down? We'll see who they decide to go after. But so far, I think it's very important that Zenlin has been kind of showing himself that uh, he's not afraid to be the target. He's got res legendary. He's got everything rolling for him, and he's built for this. And we'll see if they decide to go after him or if they decide to go after one of the DPS here. Nice fear coming in there by Tay onto Knobbers. Then they're not pushing in for the follow-up. Goes for the double fear onto uh, Tony as well as Knobbers. And that will leave Nixie to trade out all of his defensive cooldowns. Dampening just kicked in and Nixie has no evasion, no vanish, and no trinket. So a uh, decent uh, lead, I would say, for the left side. Tay now activating his Conqueror's Banner, trying to get even more pressure going here onto Nixie. Nixie with no evasion. Needs to be careful. Knobbers going for the Cyclone. But if that gets reflected, that could just be it. Knobbers instead goes for the Fake Cast. Goes for the Nature Swiftness instead. Nixie still taking a lot of damage. Trades out the Cloak of Shadows. And so far, it's been all pressure here from the Rogue and the Warrior. But now, finally, Tay going to be having his cooldowns fade. Trading out his own self-healing so far. And Nixie with that Iron Bark fading soon, I, I fear for him. Uh, he's, he's got nothing. Nixie still dropping dangerously low. Full sap with the Fnobers. No trinket. Nixie tries to vanish out. Ooh, if he got pulled out there, it would have been game over. But now he does get pulled out, and it is game over. Nixie gets dropped. Or Nixie. Or Tony. <laughs> oh no, Tony, please. <laughs> Uh, all Tony right and Riker. you know the meme where where it's two hands like holding each other <laughs> it's it's feral and major right now tony and Riker, the o and six dream <laughs> it's just so interesting uh how how different it is right it's just so different you really see a uh, certain specs they thrive in like a, a very like teamwork 
um, oriented composition slash environment and certain specs they do a lot better when it's kind of just you know you're doing your own thing you have maybe a little bit more crowd control or you just have a little bit more throughput uh that really ends up making the difference so really curious to see um you know how this ultimately does play out but we'll see if tony can pick up a win here in the final round uh i think things are kind of a struggle here for him trilla bartum if he could win if they could actually get a win uh he will be the, the you know uh, the highest point earner in this particular heat uh, let's see if he can do it. And this is also a big one for Fnavros to see if he can tie it up here with Zenelin. So lots on the line for this one. Looks like they are just going to be starting out on Tony. Uh, and at, at least the early stages of the match, uh, Tony should be really durable on that Druid. I don't think we're really going to be seeing him go down. It's at that like 50% dampening when it becomes really difficult for Tony to kind of sustain himself. Yeah, it's going to be tough for Tony, uh, but he might be able to pull it off here. He's got an outlaw rogue on his side. And it is Trilla, and it is exactly uh, what you were talking about earlier, Van. It's very interesting to see, uh, you know, the kind of the classes that are doing well in twos uh, come in and do well here, but also the players who do play a lot of twos uh, coming in and doing well here, because Zenon is definitely a player like that, and so is Trilla, I would say for sure. Uh, these are people who grind twos quite a lot, and uh, it shows that you know they're kind of used to this like no communication environment where you just have to kind of see the openings for yourself you don't really coordinate as much with your teammates and it's more about the individual skill and uh, it's nice to see them uh, kind of in this format doing so well there's a lot of people who don't know uh, you know about these players uh, because they don't play maybe in the awc uh, but for sure if you you know watch twitch or the, the latter uh, you will know them and uh, it's just nice to see them in a tournament like this. There's been a lot of new names as well, uh, kind of people just being pulled in from the ladder, people that don't stream. And it's just been awesome to see everybody uh, just uh, have a shot at competing and uh, seeing you know, how they've been able to perform. Yep, so Bartum is going to be vanishing off, just trying to survive. Pressure definitely in favor of Tay and Nixie right now. Fnobbers looking to tie it up here for healers. Tony on the back foot gets kidney shot. Oh, oh no, in caster form, absolute disaster. Beautiful counter kidney shot coming in from Trilly. Keep him Tony alive. That was a beautiful peel there, but there's just no damage whatsoever. Tony's just on the back foot. He's in bear. He's running away. And when you're in bear form, you're not really doing damage. So he needs to find that opportunity to recover, actually get in cat form, get the damage out. But now they're just going after Trilly. Trilly is getting low. Nixie and Tay just really putting the pressure here to the right team. And another kidney shot on Tony, but he's in bear form for this one. Should be able to easily kind of tank through the damage, but this is just unbelievable <laughs> the pressure we're seeing from this left side. Yeah, I feel like Tony just hasn't been able to do anything except sit it in bear form. He tries to cast a cyclone there, but finally he's going to go into cat form here, trying to get some damage going. But look at Trilly, he's had to use his whole defensive arsenal just to try to peel for Tony. And now Tony gets caught in a kidney shot out of form once again. Zen takes to the skies. He's spamming out heals in the middle of the map here, uh, mid air. And it is enough to stabilize him, but a beautiful cyclone there coming out by uh, Fnobbers. And it will slow down those heals from Zenlin. And Zenlin, basically with no mana left, here trying to keep his team going tony's still just not able to find the damage right now on that feral druid trilla on his last leg guardian spirit comes out zen is casting out the flash heals with his last bit of mana and that is it zen is completely tapped looking for a fear potentially gets in capped trilla on basically one hp here he's got the evasion he can't give anybody his back right now look at trilla just dancing right now trying to stay alive tony in bear form as well and you can see nixie on full hp tay on full hp dampening at 69 percent and uh, i just don't see how they're going to be able to to you know win this game uh, if you are the right side and that will be uh, the left side taking the win there the rogue warrior now let's take a look at the damage here we got nixie at four wins trilly at four wins and tay at four wins another three-way tie between the damage dealers and a tie between the healers so the exact same result as that previous match that we saw and uh, let's see the damage here uh, tony actually did do a decent amount of damage but yeah you can see he's uh, definitely falling behind uh, feral druids you know they're definitely uh, you know hit and run typically with a hunter and uh, just uh, going for those CC chains and going for those big bursts and then running off healing, things like that. But uh, in a solo shuffle environment where you're playing, you know, all kinds of random comps, that play style might not always be available. That's what I'm saying. Like sometimes in solo shuffle, it might be better. Like maybe it would have been better if he was just playing like invoke the spirits or something like that, you know, just like go for like a one shot <laughs> when someone doesn't have a trinket. It could be more difficult to peel or stop or you don't expect it. Like just play something crazy i really think 
that it, it can it can make a big difference um but yeah we can see the current standings right now and just for a reminder it's going to be the top eight dps and uh the top four healers that are going to be advancing so right now that is gelu acro zipaite brunhidi trilobartum nixie and joe fernandez actually uh in that position number one now a lot of these players uh haven't had an opportunity to play kind of their final and third series um but you can definitely you get the feeling um that you know the fury warriors and the outlaw rogues are doing quite good and then of course you have zipai and uh, galu on the warlock and the elemental shaman is kind of like a standout and then in terms of healers clyde in the lead followed by xenolin um um doodle dump as well as reese so um that top four also looking incredibly solid but some of these healers still haven't had an opportunity to play and uh, we can see some of those games right now getting into a new series here uh, with Super Tease. Uh, we're actually going to have three Druids, so a lot of Druids in this matchup, Sid. I'm glad I came in. This is the perfect time. Unfortunately, none of them are Boomkin. You know, I uh, think Boomkin would actually be good in this. I really do. Yeah, I mean, it's just a lot of people haven't... In EU, I feel like the only Boomkins left are like Waz, Alt, Moonkin. It's like his fifth Alt. <laughs> um, every other Moonkin has gone into retirement, so... I have to wait for North America. This game already starting off with fireworks. Twinkle just having a tough time on the Feral Druid. Is he going to manage to have a better performance than Tony? Doesn't look oh! like it. He's on 1%. Almost going down. Not even a second into the game. Not a minute into the game. What is going on, Twinkle? He's just trying to run away this entire game and manages to stay alive despite that. But I feel like he burned at least five of his nine lives. Yeah. Probably, maybe even six. I mean, that was a close call. Just hovering uh, for such a long time at like 5% HP. Uh, but that that's kind of the thing. I mean, Fury Warrior as well as that Unholy Death Knight, you have such an aggressive opener with all your offensive cooldowns. Uh, so it can be quite devastating. Now that that's kind of subsided, maybe Waz and Twinkle can actually get some pressure here. There's another one of those uh, matches where there's actually no caster DPS. So it's just kind of melee all the way. And we'll see, you know, in an environment like this, what melee actually kind of pull out ahead. I expect Blizzo and Waz to probably do the best here. Curious to see if Twinkle and Shadow can kind of put up a fair fight, though, uh, and how both of these healers are going to do. Because you can see outside of that opener, Twinkle and Waz actually have a decent amount of pressure right now. Azgrath getting pressured, able to get his bark skin and his iron bark out of the way if he gets caught into a kidney shot. Uh, maybe they can continue that pressure and uh, maybe even take him down. Yeah, let's see if they can manage to pull off that miracle because Twinkle's already on the back paw once again, uh, just in bear form or running in the opposite direction of his opponents, now caught in a storm bolt. Shadow goes for a strangulate onto Habibi, stopping his heels. Twinkle jumps upstairs onto the balcony, trying to sort through the atmosphere and get away from these attackers, but you've got Blizzo and a Death Knight going after you. Like, it's it's going to be a rough ride, to say the least, but maybe an opportunity here on Asgrath if he's unresponsive in a kidney shot. Now into a Mave Stun at 1%. No way Twinkle pulls this off. Asgrath gets a big heal right at the oh, last second. And now Twinkle in trouble. A BB into the bash looking for a Cyclone. Not finding it. Just goes for an in-cap roar. Doesn't want to risk exposing his, his cast bar there to an interrupt. And a Twinkle on the back foot, man. Oh, my God. I feel like he should cross his lucky stars at this point uh, with how many times he's been at 10%. Now Habibi getting swapped to by Blizzo and Shadow. Twinkle just running away the entire game. It's just his POV of him running away. <laughs> Trying to jump in onto Blizzo now and get some damage going as Waz gets cycloned. No trinket. Nice job by Asgrath in the back line. Just slowing down any sort of potential into the near future. He's got Bark Skinny pre-Flesh Crafts. He gets kicked by Waz on the Flesh Craft. Looking to anticipate for a kidney shot. He's in bear form. He pre-Trank Shields. Anticipating the kidney shot. Now Twinkle has been forced away. He can't really stay on target. Double discerning Roar trying to get back on Asgrath for the kill. Asgrath's going to pre-iron bark himself, knowing he's the target. He's in. He's not in bear form, actually. This might not be enough. Anti-Magic Zone comes down with it. and looks like it's going to be a scenario where it's off cooldown. I think that's lights out no. for Twinkle here. Double in-cap Roar. He's in execute range, and that will be it. Round one going to Blizzo and Shadow. Blizzo just establishing even a further lead. Yeah, Blizzo looking good. Shadow too. Shadow, maybe he'll be able to come back here. We, we, have, uh, we have the Death Knight as well as the Feral Druid. Uh, they could have a really, really aggressive opener. Um, but who are they going to go after? That's the thing. I mean, maybe they could go after the Restoration Druid, but then, of course, you have Blizzo and Waz going to be able to peel. I just feel like this is such an explosive match. But it seems like in these kind of like cleave matchups, uh, the Fury Warrior is just king. I, I feel like Blizzo is going to have an, an unreal performance in this particular group. Um, 
see what he can do. Already picking up one win, Shadow as well. Uh, let's see how this one goes. Waz, who is he going to open up? Waz is actually my favorite to win this entire thing, but uh, it seems like uh, it's, it almost seems like the Fear Wars are kind of even outshining the Outlaw Rogues uh, in these games so far. Yeah, it's it's a bit strange here because I, I feel like it, it's going to be an interesting contest to say the least in this championship Sunday. Like out of the Fury Warriors and the Rogues trying to dominate to like who's the top solo shuffle uh, class at the moment. Now you got them both on the same team, and this is, looks even scarier for Twinkle right now. <laughs> Replacing the Death Knight with an Outlaw Rogue, he just can't get out of Bear Form. Survival Instincts has to be traded here, trying to get some uh, counter pressure going. But you can attack a Warrior or a Rogue; these are not good targets and he's got a death knight it's just not the best composition there's no defense there's no offense there's just nothing on the side of twinkle here kidney shot onto asgrat twinkle trying to get a cyclone trying to slow down some of the pressure gets one onto waz trying to pick himself up back behind the balcony blizzo chasing him after the only advantage he's really got is chains of ice he can shape shift out of the snares and use chains of ice and maybe just never let them hit him get to dampening and then pop a slappy hands and try and go for a kill with the death knight's cooldowns that's about the only way i see him winning this match because Prior to that, anytime he's trying to stand still like now, he usually ends up regretting it. Yeah, Twinkle. Needs to be very careful going for those Cyclones. If you get caught in a kidney shot in caster form, that's when it's kind of lights out. And he has no trinket. There's no kind of insurance policy here for uh, Twinkle. If he does get caught, big damage out on Shadow at the same time. And I feel like that's one of the scary things for Death Knights as well. Uh, I, I, there's two classes in particular, actually three, I guess, with the Windwalker Monk, but it sees really high uh, damage melee specs, Windwalker Monk, the Fury Warrior, as well as the Outlaw Rogue that can just drop a Death Knight very easily with a Disarm. So I, I almost expect Shadow to be the main target uh, as this game kind of marches deeper and deeper into dampening. Uh, definitely opportunities for them, but if they just want to go after Twinkle, they really limit his damage. So that seems to be the strategy. Blizzo ripping in right now with Waz. An absolute terror. I mean, when's the last time we've seen Blizzle and Waz teamed up and got to see them kind of uh, work together to actually pull off victory? I think that's one of the most exciting things about today is just all these kind of oddball compositions, these players that have played against each other for such an incredibly long time, actually getting to group up and try to get victory together. <laughs> I love all these different clusters that we're getting of players. This is definitely an entertaining one. Uh, maybe not so much for Twinkle, uh, as he's the one that's just getting beat up every single round. Fleshcraft in Bear gets pummeled by Blizzard. They're going for the kill. I think it's unrecoverable at this point. 45% dampening, and he will be going down now two games in a row. It is looking grim for the Feral Druids of Europe and their possibilities of getting into those top spots for Championship Sunday. Blizzo, in the meantime, is just a glutton. Between him and Blizzo, like, there's no food left on the table. Like, they, they're, not leave, they're not even leaving scraps for a lot of other people to be able to qualify in terms of points um, if Shadow wants to even try and have a chance. Um, but Waz, I put him as my, my top player, uh, top DPS. So let's see if he ends up coming out on top just in this series over Blizzo. Blizzo wins this game. I think he's going 6 0. If he wins now with <laughs> Twinkle. And I think they can do it. I, I Like I said, I think the Feral Druid as well as the Fear War is actually not a bad composition. Like all these comps that Blizzard's getting to play are actually like stuff you would see on the ladder. So uh, yeah, let's see if uh, they can actually pull off the win here or if Waz and Shadow are going to be able to shut it down and they actually get you know the consistent kidney shots. I think that might be the kind of line of play. They have to go after Blizzo, throw kidney shots on him, throw disarms on him, but he's just an unstoppable wrecking machine who's going after shadow right now dwinkle is actually pushing in for crowd control as well but unable to find it habibi is he going to be able to go get any kind of crowd control on asgrath who has no trinket could be game winning especially shadow just super susceptible to that fury warrior or just this is the third round uh, right now and so far blizzard has just been absolutely terrifying in this group I really think Twinkle needs your needs your energy check. Can we get some Twinkle Twinkle little stars for Twinkle right now? Can he get one win in this bracket? Because this is so rough. You got Waz, you got Blizzo. Every matchup is just a cleave training you down. Is he going to manage to pull off a miracle here? Or is that going to be it for him in this tournament? Caught into a cheap shot, already down below half. Kidney shot onto Habibi, even further behind at this point, trying to get away into bear form. Shadow, decent pressure on a shadow. This has got to be his best chance with a warrior against a death knight. I feel like a fury warrior could just solo the death knight if Twinkle's able to stay alive here. And Blizzo is doing just that. Look at the pressure onto Waz as well with a maim stun now into a double in cap roar. 
Twinkle trying to get in there, get up some bleeds before immediately being forced back down below half. Caught in an asphyxiate stun. The VB into the kidney shot. Good cross crowd control. And I love watching these players uh, have to coordinate with new players, right? Like, we'd never see Shadow and Waz ever play together or Twinkle or Blizzo try and figure out how they're going to navigate through these matchups and comps that maybe they've never even played, let alone played with each other uh, with double Resto Druid as well. Uh, but Dampany is now at 26%. that two-minute mark. This is where things start to become unstable. Is Asgrath going to be able to keep Shadow alive here with no Iron Bar for 20? He's so far away from it. Shadow, no IBF for 35 seconds. Waz getting pressured down as well. Blizzo going for the kill. Conk Banner's coming up in five more seconds. As soon as that's there, Dismantle isn't off cooldown. He just used it now. Blizzo's going to connect with the Conk Banner recklessness. He's got his trinket. Here it is. Conk Banner recklessness. And what are you going to do about it, Waz? You're down at half health. They grip Blizzo off Waz using Death Grip defensively here, but now he's just attacking Shadow. Trinket's out of the blind, going for pressure, gets asphyxiated, trying to slow down Blizzo as much as possible, into the kidney shot, preventing him from connecting, but he's charging, intervening over to reconnect. He's got that freedom effect from the Conk Banner. He can't be snared. Shadow's trying to retreat with the Wraith Walk. Twinkle jumping over for an in-cap roar, trying to disrupt the healer and get some pressure out onto Shadow, but I'm honestly very surprised that Waz and Shadow managed to survive there. It was great coordination between the two of them, but now they're on the back foot once again. Can they manage to recover? Because it's also the Abomination limb for Shadow. This is the win condition for the Death Knight. He needs to connect to his target. He's trying to find Habibi, but Habibi has managed to escape. He's forced to go back onto Blizzard. Wait, Habibi, why did he jump in there? That was very reckless by Habibi. Why did he just jump in on top of a Death Knight? He, he's just going to get punished, I think, for that. He's trying to get away. Now Blizzo is oh, dying. Blizzo. That, that had to have been a throw. I can't help but feel that was a throw, jumping in on top of all that crowd control. And uh, it, it looks like Shadow is going to be able to pull off a win there. We're tied, a three-way tie between Blizzard, Waz, and Shadow. And unfortunately, Twinkle, is he's burning out. <laughs> but no, Twinkle, he could do it, put up a win. But yeah, that was definitely an unfortunate situation. And that that's a perfect example of sometimes less is more as the healer instead of like trying to push in and get aggressive just sit back and heal you know uh, i feel like uh, there was definitely a good opportunity for Blizzard and twinkle to actually uh win that one but everyone in this match tied up two right now except twinkle uh, unfortunately not able to pick up a point and habibi at one so we'll see uh asgrath blizzo and waz that's a deadly combination of players in this particular match and i feel like they should have the edge in this particular uh composition um let's see what they can get done though twinkle getting really really aggressive here with shadow this is the abominations with a lot of pressure going out on the right side of the map uh can they actually take him down but at the same time blizzo getting aggressive onto twinkle this is that blender ball i was talking about everyone blowing their offensive cooldowns health bars just looking like yo-yos going up and down up and down a uh, really really scary moment and uh, once the dust settles, we'll see who has defensive cooldowns left. Doesn't look like many. And Twinkle down to 5% health might get taken down. That's Cyclone. Beautiful <laughs> Cyclone there by Asgath. Can they get CC on Habibi? Can they get anything on Habibi? Doesn't look like they're going to be able to. Twinkle and Habibi get behind the pillar. They are able to recover, but definitely a tense moment. Okay, let's see. I mean, every moment is a tense moment for Twinkle. Like, he's going to need massage after this. Like, and just imagine every fiber of his being just completely flexed just on the edge just tension every game like he doesn't want to go out going oh and six it's gonna be a grim way to walk out of the tournament at this point but death knight feral i just don't see this beating warrior rogue there's too much crowd control there's too much mortal wounds effects it's just too tough of a matchup uh, shadow's trying to get pressure out right now with the strangulate but he's just not finding it. it's not sticking and twinkle's falling behind that bb into crowd control after crowd control manages to squeeze out a heal Twinkle trying to get a regrowth, then trying to escape with thorns on himself at the moment, snaring Waz and managing to get a little bit of distance behind the balcony, but Waz rolls over with the sprint, gets an interrupt. No, Twinkle, he's running into the shadow side. I know he's taking 5% more damage if it couldn't get even worse for him. He's just dying to blizzle off the side of the balcony. He's trying to avoid Waz, it looks like. Uh, but at this point, they need to maybe bait some cooldowns, go for a Berserk and Dampany, I think, to find a win. Asgrath into Bash. Is he getting the Cyclone? Is anyone stopping him? No, he actually gets the Cyclone. This would be a good opportunity to get pressure, but let's look at the damage done. Like, that's a full stun into a clone. Blizzo ended that crowd control at the same point of HP that he did when Asgrath entered the Cyclone. So pressure is just non-existent right now for the Feral Death Knight. Uh, they're going to have to combine that Berserk and Abominations limb with Strangulate. They're all starting to line up in about 20 seconds. Should they hold just it. Do, a, a do an all-in with all of those cooldowns together. They might be able to win. They're throwing the Abominations limb now oh, with crowd no. control on Asgrath. Nice stun on the trigger, but it doesn't matter. 
Twinkle, twinkle, little star, good night. Uh, <laughs> this is now four in a row. Not able to get a point on the board. Looking tougher and tougher. In the meanwhile, Asgrass securing a lot of points. I'm feeling a little bit more safe in my pick. You def- I, I, I need to look at the leaderboard again because I feel like we're getting pretty tight here in terms of healer qualifications. Uh, but uh, it's looking good for him to potentially qualify, I think, at this point. Uh, Habibi is the one who's going to need to step it up. Now he doesn't have Twinkle on his team. So <laughs> you'd, th- you'd expect him to be able to pull off the win with how this is playing out. Poor Twinkle is kind of looking like the undergeared guy in a in a solo shuffle where you just get it's like just target the Twinkle, you know. <laughs> he can't he can't do anything. He's just gonna lose here. So let's see if he can turn it he's around. Is he? Yeah, this is the, this faith? is it. He's teamed up with Waz and Asgrath right now. This is the opportunity that that they need. I really think they should just go after Shadow. Just train down the Death Knight. Ignore Blizzo. Um, I would even go so far as to say, like, put off kidneys on Blizzo, dismantle him. Uh, Waz just do his best to control Blizzo in this match, and then just go after the Death Knight from start to finish. Uh, I think is probably their best line of play. Um, and I, I think they could actually potentially pull up a win here and put a point on the board for a Twinkle. Um, I think it can be done, but at the same time, they need to weather the storm. Blizzo and Shadow are going to be able to get really aggressive with their cooldowns. And uh, yeah, we'll see if they can actually weather that storm, if they can stay alive. Shadow right now going for a little bit of crowd control out onto Asgrath. He trinkets immediately, does not want to fall behind. Just instantly trading out his trinket. Shadow gets blinded, trinkets into an immediate gouge, then Waz gets the cheap shot on him. So really just kind of styling on Shadow there, shutting him down, not allowing him to get anything going with that Abominations limb. Uh, really, really nice plays there by Was. Yep. Let's see. At this point, Twinkle is out of the runnings. He's just doing this for his own personal pride. At this point, can he get a point in this series? He's oh, it's so close. Once again, Habibi. He's so low. Is he gonna do it? Twinkle, are you gonna get a point? Don't go out. Oh, and six, man. You'll remember it for the rest of your life. You gotta get one win here in this game. You got two rounds left. Is it going to be possible? At this point, I'm very curious because it, he's gotten close a couple times swapping over to the healer. And I'm just waiting to see if they can do it. Now swapping back to Shadow. Is Waz going to assist Twinkle? Asgrath and Waz are on your team, Twinkle. Like, this has got to be it. This has got to be your shot, Twinkle. Is he going to do it? He's, he's in bear form. Blizzo is just, just destroying him at the moment. He has to jump away. Blizzo chasing him down. Shadow chasing him down. He just can't go anywhere at the moment. Stuck in bear form. Double in-cap roar. Trying to shapeshift away, but he gets grit back into the clutches of Shadow. He stuns Blizzo. Waz is re-stealth there. No, he's rooted behind the pillar, I think, in Cyclone now. Waz can't help him whatsoever. Maybe like baiting Habibi's trinket with a blind, then swapping to him later. Something along these lines. Maybe you have to save the blind defensively. I'm not sure for the warrior and get into dampening before going after the healer. Twinkle's trying to make his way to the enemy healer, but he's just getting intercepted by Blizzo and Shadow. Decent damage from Waz right now. Twinkle charges over to try and assist for the kill on the Shadow. Is he going to be able to do it? Intervene comes out from Blizzo, redirecting the damage. He's not going to let it happen easily. Habibi now into his sap. Big opportunity either to bait the Trinket for a full blind or maybe just close out the game. Can they kill Shadow through Icebound Fortitude? Incap Roar, Twinkle's first win. You. Is he going to do it? He's so close to it. Habibi blocks it with a Trinket into a tree form. Getting massive heals out with Iron Bark onto Shadow. And guess what? If he doesn't I die here, he's you. got Abomination's Limb. Double fear from Blizzo. He's at 10%. No, Twinkle. No shot. Twinkle, he's done it, I think. Shadow is down. He's into the ghoul form, which is going to time out. And I think with the pressure that they've got, there's no shot that can win with the remaining time. And your energy has done it. Your faith and your belief. At least he's not going out of the tournament without a win here in this solo shuffle. I knew he could do it. Twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. He managed to pull out that win. And, uh, beautiful to see. Um, well, can he do it again? Can he pick up a second win? Because that would be nice. He's got Asgrath and Blizzo. I still feel like he can. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity. Uh, and, and that's one of the things. Sometimes you have your less favorable matchups very early on. Like that's happened to me. I'm sure if you guys have played Solo Shuffle, it's happened to you as well, where like the first couple of rounds, things are just looking terrible. Uh, and, you know, you're just playing with, um, you know, you were playing some compositions that didn't work or uh, whatever it was, but you can definitely come back later on in the match. And that's one of the cool things about it is completely uh, kind of balanced in the way that you get to play with everyone. Everyone has the same opportunities for teammates. Um, and now Shadow's actually going to get targeted in this match. And I think this is another one of those matchups where Blizzo and Twinkle, if they just go after Shadow, the Unholy Death Knight is very susceptible um, to the pressure that some of these uh, melee cleaves can put out. Yeah, let's see if they can do it here. 
with Blizzo and Azkarath now, right? Like, you gotta imagine he's got a shot here at least. He is facing down Waz on the opposite side. Blizzo's Bladestorm getting huge value there on the two targets. Waz has to evasion, dodging the remainder. Blinds up Blizzo with no trinket. Now going after Twinkle. He's going to bark skin. He's trying to fish for interrupts from Waz and get a cyclone. He gets gouged on it. Waz grappling hooks over to Blizzo to try and assist as they're going now after Asgarath with the kidney shot. Waz gets disarmed by Blizzo. Still high level plays from these players despite playing with people they may have never played with ever in the history, in their arena history for the first time on broadcast. Definitely putting on a show here as it is round six. It's down to the wire. Who's going to take it? Is Blizzo going to tie up with Waz four to four? Or is Waz going to take the lead uh, at this point with Death Knight Rogue Restoration Druid? Everything is going to pivot on Waz, I feel like, for this team. Setting up with the kidney shots, the blinds, the saps, and then Shadow is going to have to be the powerhouse in terms of damage. And it looks like they just want to swap to the healer, Asgarath, over and over. Is it going to work? Asgarath jumps out of the swap, immediately getting crowd control onto Hibibi. Disorienting Roar doesn't get the Cyclone. No, he gets kicked. He gets grit back in. Waz, definitely MVP right now into a Strangulate. Asgraf with no bark skin is on the run, trying to escape, gets an overgrowth, gets a big Swiftman into NS, but now they're swapping back to Twin. I love this swaps by Waz right now, switching targets off the Scenarian Ward. Now Asgraf is cycloned. They're switching once again as he's trying to run away behind the pillar, gets away in bear. Now they're swapping again to Asgraf. This is exactly what you want to do against the Resto Druid. Just keep them guessing as who's the target is going to be and overwhelm them. And it just gets you so many cooldowns. Now there's a Tranquility Bubble from Asgrath. He's running really low on options. Wasp might even try and sap. He's going to go for Kidney Shot into Bear Farm. Could blind him out of this and go after Twinkle if he wants to. I think that's what he's looking for at the moment. Kidney Shot about to end. What's he going to do? Twinkle looking for a Cyclone. Gets stunned and he's out of form. Shadow looking to connect you with the Dark Transformation. Incap Roar from Twinkle as he charges away. Trying to escape the pressure from the Death Knight. Gets a War Stomp onto Waz. Trying to go for the game winning War Stomp. Not enough damage to do so. Mana slightly in favor of Asgrath. But Shadow has Abomination's Limb. Look at the pressure right now onto all three players on Blizzo and Asgarath's side. Waz is looking like he's about to go five points up in this series. Blizzo is so close to dead. But he's going for the Conk Banner. He's going for the Cross Kill. Despite being at 10% HP. Blizzo is playing to win right now with all of his offensive cooldowns. It's a race. Who's going to fall first? Blizzo or Shadow? And it, it's looking more like Blizzo. He has to pull out in that game of chicken as he heroic leaps to midfield. Asgrath wild charges over to try and also reconnect with him. And he's managed to recover. I'm honestly surprised either side is alive still at this point. Yeah, 53% dampening. This game is insane. And they keep Blizzle alive, though. Habibi way behind on mana, but his team is just not being pressured. Waz needs to get out of that entangling route. This route sitting full is a disaster for Waz's pressure, but finally being uh, freed of that crowd control. And once again, get aggressive. Blizzo and Twinkle just getting absolutely torn apart here by Shadow and Waz. And it looks like Waz, I mean, it looks like Waz is going to be able to pull off a win in this group relatively even for everyone else maybe can they do it Wizzo and twinkle are still alive they get waz in a stun he's got to vanish can he get to vanish he might have to trade it he's getting low and they're still just going for it on blizzo strangulate on asgarath and it looks like blizzo will get dropped was picking up five wins here this is big for waz as well uh, i think we all expected waz to do well uh but i think this is his first time actually picking up five wins um so that's going to be huge for points. Now we'll be moving into uh, another group here. This is actually round five. So a lot of these have played out. We could see um, Joodle is a little bit ahead over next. Um, Kasu has the most wins for the DPS, uh, but this is still kind of anyone's game. I would see Trent and Oscar potentially come back in this one. Yeah, I, I really want to know like the overall leaderboards here because I feel like Tren or Kasu or Swaps here are maybe close to each other, neck and neck in terms of qualifying into the top 12 spots. Whereas for Oscar as the mage, like I feel like the mages are all at the bottom. It's going to be a miracle, if, I think, if a mage gets into the top 12 right now. Uh, but we're in round five of six, only two rounds left. Who is going to close it out? Uh, surprisingly, the Disc Priest is doing better than the Holy Priest. I feel like Judel Dump has had a really good run with the Discipline Priest right now in the Solo Shuffle tournament. Definitely a, a top performer. The only one, I think, uh, especially consistently sticking to it. I know I've been enjoying my Discipline Priest on live, and he's definitely repping it here excellently. He's fighting Swapsy Kasu as well in this round, so if they can pull off a win here, it's equally as impressive. Swapsy has to trade Astral Shift during that crowd control onto Next. Next has Boon of Ascended, though. He could turn this around. Where is he going to go with it is now the next question. Swapsy looks for a Hex. Hex is up the Mage. Silence onto Judel Dump. And they're going for a Freezing Trap out of this. Caster actually gets gripped away. 
He's not going to find crowd control. Trennis gets double stunned. Overlap, but maybe it doesn't matter. He's getting blasted outright by next boon of Ascended. Judal Dump is getting rotted down as well. Now into a freezing trap. Swap on Oscar. That gets an ice block. Trend goes for meta, but he gets mass dispelled. Oscar is likely to go down as his cauterize has been triggered. He's burning faster and faster, and Judal's going to have to spend so much mana to heal through this damage. Survival Hunter and Elemental Shaman. Nothing to shake a stick at in terms of overall damage on the scoreboard. Oscar's getting pressured once again. Judal into the stun. Next, looks like he maybe wants to get in position for a fear. Goes for a defensive fear, and that's it. Oscar gets blasted away. This means that Kasu is going up now four points, trying to be one of the only hunters, I think, to get into the top 12 at this point. It's not looking good for Tren and, and the Demon Hunter representation here because I think he's the only one in either region. I think that's um, true. So with the overall score, I definitely want to know like if there's any shot of him qualifying if he wins here. Uh, would be amazing to know because this is it. It's his last chance to get another point. Let's see if he is able to put up any points or another point here on the board. This is the, going to be the last round, I believe, of today. So I think this is actually the last game we're going to be seeing. Um, I do believe we get confirmation on that. But Cassie right now winning this heat so far. Can he pick up a fifth win? NASA for him on the Hunter, but he's got to do it with Oscar on the Mage. Trend and Swapsy. I think this is actually a pretty good overall composition. Trend can kind of push in and be more of like a bruiser in the match. Uh, where he's able to kind of soak up a lot of damage and just put out a lot of overall pressure. And you have Swapsy in the back line just kind of blasting everyone away. Stop also an opportunity for Next to kind of tie it up here against Doodle Dump. Uh, and this is a really chaotic map. I mean, Blades Edge Arena, really, really chaotic. Not too many places to actually line of sight uh, unless you pull all the way back. So it's going to be an all out kind of damage fest on this map. Oh. This is going to be really tough for Oscar, I think. There's so much damage between that Demon Hunter and Elemental Shaman. And Judal Dump, his early lead into the, in terms of score in the series, could be tied up right here and now. Unless they can turn it around and they take out Swapsy in time. Oscar just constantly below half HP, trying to pull back with Judal. Manages to get topped off. Now Kasu gets swapped away. Roar of Sacrifices. Looks like he wants to get in aggressively here, but he's getting pushed back heavily. Massive damage. Aspect of the Turtle on 1% almost going out there and giving Swapsy a chance to tie up with him on points as well as next to tie up with Judal Dump here and it's going to be quite a close race between the top qualification spots get to Championship Sunday here in the European region. Kasu half grappling hooks in. He's baiting Shadowward Death. He baits it. Now he's going for the freezing trap, but he gets pushed away. He can't stay on target. He's stunned up. They're going for the kill. That could be it. Kasu, once again, a 10%. Gets a big heal from Judal just at the last second, gripping Oscar now back, but they're stacked up, and that is not what you want to do against the Demon Hunter. If you are next to each other, you get cleaved. You get AoE'd, and there's nothing you can do. Trent's going to get so much damage if they don't spread out right now, and Oscar knows that. He's trying to pull in the center bridge and not stand on top of his allies and get cleaved. In the meantime, Kasu who just cannot find a freezing trap he's been trying for so long finally gets the first freezing trap but trend also has reversed he just reverses the freezing trap they're so far behind they drop the darkness just to be safe here oscar's getting blasted back has to ice block with an imprison on judo i think this is over judo has absolutely no mana left his teammates have neither of their primary defensive cooldowns they're all below 50 percent hp dampening's at 31 percent and basically at this point swapsy and trend just need to grab hold and never let go just keep this pressure and momentum close it out and they're so close, just a couple more points of damage. They swap back to Oscar, triggering his cauterize and immediately crushing him through it, allowing them to get to the wild seed and close it out. Swapsy and Kasu now tied four to four. And we got to see what is the result of day number one in the solo yeah. shuffle tournament. Who's going to championship Sunday? It's been a chaotic day, too. Uh, it's been so many different matchups, so, different, so many different games. It's just super fast paced. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed this and I'm really curious to see who ended up coming out ahead uh, after it's all said and done. I think it's going to be top eight DPS and the top four healers uh, that are going to be advancing to Championship Sunday. Yeah, we're, uh, we're going to be able to see as well the North American players play tomorrow on Saturday. It's going to be another day of games just like that one. But then I couldn't agree more. I mean, what an exciting day of games. You know, we got to see them swap up their compositions, swap up who they normally play with, make new, make new friends, hopefully along the way. Uh, but I think I'm definitely also really curious about how those comms went because we definitely saw, you know, obviously a little bit of a lack of synergy today because, uh, you know, that's... How could you expect anything less? They're, they're switching up their compositions. They may or may not be in comms. We, no one really knows. So uh, it was good to see things end the way they did. But anything that was super surprising for you today, Super Tease? 
I mean, there was the one game with Casu and Gallo beating the double outlaw uh, as Hunter Warlock. Uh, the, the matchup that I said would be like the hardest matchup in the game yeah. uh, a, a few times. I feel like Raikou had an upset as well with the Feral Mage. Um, just seeing seeing what players can do when they're playing the suboptimal comp, you know? Like, you know, how do you, how do you perform when you can't only play one comp or one strategy that you've practiced the whole time? Like, how well can you improvise and flex and play suboptimal situations and still win that that's what i think was really impressive about today yeah i love i love watching these sort of formats where it kind of forces them to play a little bit out of their comfort zone i feel like we had a similar energy when diabolus did those death bowl tournaments where they had that pick and ban phase uh it kind of puts them in these compositions that they don't don't normally play and then as a result i feel like you see these really fast-paced aggressive play is happening from the players so no excited way. to see things continue tomorrow but super tease uh, tell me about these standings no way blizzo is not in no way it's top eight yeah it's, it's top yep. eight it's top oh eight. my god i thought it was top 12 oh my god we cut out so many people and look how close oh they god. were between zipi and blizzo too they had 11 points one first base finish three uh, or sorry, two third place finishes. So I wonder what that ended up being the tiebreaker between those two players. I mean, that is insanely, insanely close. It the had strength two first of schedule, place finishes, I guess. Whereas Blizzo only had one, I think was the main difference between there. And then how did we decide Zipai and Blizzo? Because their their scores look the same. There's obviously another tiebreaker rule uh, that went yeah, into he, it. So some of match think... opponents score. Yeah, so they, uh, whoever won against people who had higher amount of points has a higher sum of match opponent score. And that's what the tiebreaker was. And then the next tiebreaker is head to head if they fought each other and who came out ahead. I mean, unfortunate for Blizzo, he, he was, he was close. He's about as close as you can get. Yeah, especially seeing how the other warriors did. I mean, that was insanely close, but I feel like that is still a really good <laughs> group of players and I'm excited to see them go ahead to get head Sid. How do you feel Zen. as Zipai? You're you're the only sh Yeah, but Asgrass ahead of him, I'm just saying, okay? Judo Doesn't Dump matter. was the surprise, okay? This oh, was yeah. the surprise. Disc Priest the whole way through, like nobody said that. I feel like I feel like everybody was saying Resto Druid. This priest is priest. good. Holy Pally, but yeah, Disc Priest is really good right now. I feel like this is probably one of their best patches um, at the moment. So, but what, what's most interesting to me is like, how is how are the like we have two warriors and four rogues, I think, and then there's a hunter and an Ellie. So, like, how is the hunter and the Ellie in the top eight? <laughs> how are they gonna manage to do this? Um, but here we go the shuffle solo shuffle predictions. Chaz was a big prediction. Do we have his do we see his over all score? And I just didn't notice it. Uh, we did, but yeah, I wasn't, I don't remember what it said. I wonder if we, maybe we'll go back to it. Look at that. Prediction. He came in last. <laughs> <laughs> he had the no! highest prediction to win and he came in last. Uh, so, so I voted for him like too. That. Did any of you guys? Nah, I was going to vote for him, but I voted Zenlin and Zenlin made me proud. Yeah. All of these uh, points will reset, by the way, for championship Sunday. So um, all of these, the only thing that mattered is qualifying. And yeah, look at look at Judo Dump. That's the interesting thing here. Yeah, he's at the Second, bottom, but he was at the yeah. top. And Clyde, and Clyde as well. Look at them. They're they're it's down the there. It's complete opposite. It's like they took yeah. that and flipped it. I up. love Literally that. Literally flipped it upside that's down awesome. for the most part. Yeah, really yeah, defying expectations. Awesome. I love this. I love this. And Reese continuing to hold on to that holy holy paladin uh, dream. But what a what an unexpected day of events. I love how this played out. I can't wait and. For uh, for North America, I feel like um, I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think it'll be even more kind of fast paced and uh, well, know, chaotic is the right word, but with North America, it's a different meta. There's shamans. Yeah. Yeah. True. There's no shamans here in EU, but in mm -hmm. NA, there's a lot of shamans. So, yeah. well, this is interesting. So look at the DPS, okay. like uh, the <laughs> DPS predictions. <laughs> had Waz is number one. He made it. Raikou number two. Obviously, unfortunately for the fire mages, um, they weren't able to really pull through. But yeah, just really interesting, kind of the expectations versus reality. Um, who's kind of a Joe big surprise 1%. here? I think Tay. Oh, Tay. Oh, Tay, really yeah, sure. Tay made top eight, and he was like bottom prediction, or I guess he wasn't bottom, but 
it's on the the lower side of things so yeah i i love it it's just an opportunity for players uh like tay that we haven't really seen too much from uh kind of mm -hmm. come in and make a name for themselves and show off what they got I hope this also means the players, um, you know, I know that AWC isn't isn't for everyone, but maybe we see some of these new players kind of continue on with this um, uh, in competing and we see them sign up for a team next year with AWC because I feel like we're seeing a lot of really strong players come out in this in this uh, solo shuffle. It's been cool to see these sort of new names. I don't know if that's the right term, sort of rise to the top like like Doodle Dump, just, you know, number one uh, with the only disc race in the region. So. Very awesome day of games. Things are going to be continuing on tomorrow as well in North America. And then, of course, like we've already said, we're going to be moving on to Championship Sunday um, and just continuing to narrow it down. And I do have to wonder if we're going to end up with just like only one class, one DPS class, one healing class at the end of Sunday. But here are the North American players that we do have. As we've kind of already mentioned, it's a little bit of a different meta with Europe. Absolutely no Resto Shamans with North America for resto shamans and uh, some very good resto shamans as well then oh definitely we've got absurd sidu dilbar foxy llama these guys are absolute terrors on that shaman i think more of like the veterans of course are going to be absurd and sidu but dilbar and foxy llama are very impressive uh on the restoration shaman so we'll see what they can get done and i think restoration shaman is really interesting in solo shuffle uh, because you do have that extra aggression, right? You have uh, a lot of offensive purges, you have wind shears. I feel like you have that opportunity to make the difference and be like kind of a playmaker uh, for your team. So maybe we will see some more kind of explosive uh, games tomorrow. Um, but the thing is, Wrestle Shaman also can struggle. Uh, <laughs> it could definitely struggle. <laughs> Uh, you know, if you have to overlap defensive cooldowns, um, you know, when you want a spirit link, if people aren't there for your spirit link totem, uh, you're definitely going to be in a, in a rough spot. So I think it's one of those things where it could work out really well or it could be an absolute disaster. Yeah, I think I think that's a fair way to put it. So uh, super stoked to see how these North American players do. We can take a look at the matches that we're going to be seeing some of those tomorrow. Um, luckily, I don't see any bracket, any any matches that are just BlizzCon champions. But, you know, make no mistake. These are definitely some hard rounds that we've got coming up here. A lot of really well versed players that have been in this tournament, uh, you know, been at this level of competition for quite some time. A lot of ex teammates a lot of former teammates as well um so i think you guys can bet zika that we're going to have a very high level of competition continue on tomorrow as well yeah absolutely i mean i feel like there's a pretty decent spread here uh, in yeah. north america um but i'm looking at match four there's a, there's a, some big names in there for sure you got calvish you got seralium cubs ec2 uh, you got a lot of people there um yeah but i think you know they, they spread out the champions pretty well here I mean, it's all random, the, the, the seating <laughs> here. Uh, but Randomness uh, spread it out nice. Yeah, it was, it was a nice random spread here. And uh, I see there's going to be a decent amount of uh, Rogue Mage as well here in some of these Mage games. Um, you can see in match four, Seralium is going to have at least uh, one or actually two Rogue Mage games. Peekaboo is also going to have... Uh, a couple of rogue mage games there with Abru and Wealthy Man, so it's going to be some games like that, and uh, there's also going to be some throwback comps here, like uh, Hunter DK uh, in match uh -huh. six, uh, you know, things like that, and um, also well, uh, Absurge is going to get Absurge is going to get RPS, Absurge is going to get RPS with Whiskey <laughs> and <Twice>. Aiden, <laughs> yeah, he's going to get uh, and with Trill as well, so it's uh, it's interesting to see kind of Gex you gotta, gets you, RMP. Yeah, it's gonna be R RPS versus RMP. It's, so you're gonna get to see like some of those, you know, standard comps that we've seen a lot fight each other. But you're also gonna see some kind of Very throwback comps like the Hunter DK, some random stuff. I believe Dippy is a Moonkin as well, right? Yeah, yeah, that group is really weird. Boomy Hunter, Boomy Rogue, Boomy DK. That's with no Shaman Healer either. Like Boomy has been playing pretty much exclusively with Shaman Healer, so. Seeing if what Dippy can do in a group like that uh, and manage to pull out is going to be very entertaining. Hopefully he doesn't sell out and go feral. I'm just saying. I was going to say, <laughs> like, or or yeah. we just see him not play it at all and, get, and revert to feral. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. But definitely make sure you guys are, are tuning in tomorrow. It's going to be um, just as exciting, if not more so, if you're a fan of North America. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We're going to be signing off. But make sure you guys show, show us some love in the chat for... 
uh, if you enjoyed today's games in this new format because it's certainly been exciting on our end. So we'll see you guys tomorrow, same time, same place, 10 a.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. CET, tw CEST, twitch.tv slash Warcraft. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.